I'm like, man, roll up to my shit, don't get no hoes, man. Who, like, <laughs> come on, man, like, who gave Rolo Tomasi this, this God tier status? Like, Rolo Tomasi don't get no hoes, man. Like, show me some hoes Rolo Tomasi pool. You know what I'm saying? Show, like, really, like, y'all acting like he really popping, pushing P. Like, y'all acting like he came out the womb saying P. some hoes up all. Let me show you some hoes up all. <laughs> I can think of at least eight. <laughs> Why do we go to This is the Rational Mail. I took a special flight just yesterday so I could get here just to be with you people. Just so we can have class. Class is in session. Oh boy. Are we going to get into it today? There's so much, so much to work with. You know, every now and then, God drops a story in my lap. It's not necessarily in my wheelhouse, but kind of make it in my wheelhouse. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Although, I guess I have talked about Crowder before. Okay, you asked for it. You got it. He didn't do his killing. That's what's wrong with this generation today. These young boys today, what do she bring to the table? The hell you mean, man? What do your ass bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. What else she need to slide up to the table with? What about your job? What happened to men who were supposed to be responsible? Do you know that it's our job to take care of a woman and some children to have a family? That's our damn job. But what happens to the, when the woman tell you, I don't need a man, Steve? Well, they need to, what? Okay, if you don't, how that's working? <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how, how that's working? Who don't need no man? I'm independent. I can do for myself. No, Steve, yeah, but why you do you want to? Yeah, okay, you can drop a transmission. You can sandblast your house. The hell, do you want to? No. Uh, if somebody could get out there and drop this transmission for you and sandblast your house, why don't you go get your nails done? I'm not trying to reduce a woman to nothing else. Be all you can be. But damn, who don't need a man? That's a lie. What man don't need a woman? I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. Try to live without them. Try to live your life without women. This ain't about la da da man. This some bullshit without women. Harry and don't date crazy. The number one influencing factor to a man's success or failure in life is who they choose as a spouse. And if you're one of those guys that like, I'm a captain save a hoe, don't be a motherfucking captain save a hoe because when you get married to this chick and when you try and start a life with her, she's gonna constantly be this tornado of problems each time you're trying to do something big and you're gonna realize I can't start that company, I can't make those millions, I can't transform people's lives, I can't serve humanity because each time I try, she is taking a massive shit on my life. Find someone that will back you up. Find someone that will say they believe in you. They will advocate for you. And when you do, be so fucking awesome to her that all she wants to do is support you and be her one woman pit crew. And if you can do that, I'm telling you, man, you will force multiply the impact and income that you will make in life. Is that you? Reward in being a traditional good woman anymore. If you are a traditional woman who's got no you know, pictures on Instagram, who isn't going out all day, every day, who isn't sleeping around and isn't getting lots of surgery and mm -hmm. not putting on loads and loads of makeup and you're a simple, just a traditional woman, uh, there's no reward in that. You will never find a date. Mm -hmm. You'll never find a man that says, here, let me take you out here. Let me do this. Whereas if you are the most promiscuous, provocative, dangerous woman, your DMs are endless mm -hmm. and you are booked every single day of the week and you get to choose which country you want to fly out to so humans are going to look at where's the most reward mm -hmm. and they're going to lean towards the most rewarding and prof profitable unfortunately well i'm a whore <laughs> can't believe that this would be shocking to anyone take a look at this headline 
The Daily Mail writes, is only fans ruining your love life? Half of adult content creators admit they struggle with dating or end up splitting from their partner because of their job. I like job, job, dude. Let's just uh, be real, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone knows, even if they want to lie about it, there is a big distinction between having a job and making porn on the internet. And there was this big push from the left where they were like, sex work is work. No, it isn't. It's just not. It's sex work. It's a different thing. It is a category uh, that overlaps with the idea of work, meaning you do something in exchange for money. But let's be real. It is specific to a category. Right. And again, and the fact that this is all done in the name. How do we even jump into this topic? This is a mess and a half, huh? Steven Crowder responds to the leaked footage of him seemingly berating and just being nasty to his wife. Right. And again, and the fact that this is all done in the name of being a Christian is one of the biggest. Commented on my ongoing divorce on Tuesday, requesting privacy in the best interest of the family, but also by court order agreed upon by all parties. Look, broken marriages are ugly, and in them people do ugly things. Myself, of course included, I would never claim otherwise. However, due to recent misleadingly edited leaks to the tabloid press without context and not subject to consequences of the court, well, if not privacy, the next best option is truth. So today, I have filed a motion to officially unseal all files as they relate to the matter of legal record finances, relevant medical records, including mental health history or evaluations, depositions, and any motions or sanctions from the courts of Texas. I will not be leaking private marital information to the press, but if the privacy agreements are not respected by all parties, I will address all that is a matter of irrefutable legal record in full context next week. Uh-huh. Only date a guy if he makes six figures. No, seven figures. Because of inflation? Yeah, because of inflammation? Yeah. And he has to be over six feet tall. No, seven feet tall. Because of inflation. Yeah. And he needs to be okay with me having an OnlyFans? Two OnlyFans. Yeah. Because of inflation. This stupid b- This stupid b- I am not. This stupid b- This b- is stupid. I am smarter than the hot 18 year old. We smart, they stupid. <laughs> I, I spent my most valuable years allowing my body to be used because no one ever taught me what love is or how to respect myself. And all you can do is make fun of me for it. Yo, sir, 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 stupid. Stupid. Is stupid. The stupidest of the is stupid. Is so stupid. The stupid. The stupid. The stupid. Is so stupid. Leave her alone. <laughs> I'm over seven feet tall. I make seven figures, and I do want her. <laughs> do you have a seven pack? <laughs> This stupid ma- <laughs> If you haven't seen Freedom Tunes, go get Freedom Tunes. I, I, I love how this dude is on top of like everything these days. How we doing? How we doing? Oh boy. Uh yeah. Okay. Come on. Let's give it. Give it to me. Come on. Throw it at me. Give me the. Give me the religious stuff because we're gonna get into that. Boy, let me tell you something. The uh the that Ruslan clip was great. You want to talk about cope? There's cope. <laughs> but Ruslan, this remember this is the same Ruslan who when I asked uh, if he thought that uh, Andrew Tate was a genuine, real Orthodox Christian back in oh, what, uh, July of last year? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like, we're just shocked that this is going on with Crowder. We're shocked that this is in Jesus name. We're shocked. that, Dude. <laughs> yeah, your brand your brand is uh you, you know you're all brand when you're shocked at everything that like you're supposed to be about <laughs> unbelievable i see glenn lawrence has already beat me to it though uh, i think he had a few there what was this oh yeah was i right are you sure about that wait a minute hold on here wait. <laughs> i know who my god is hallelujah 
<laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh, boy. <laughs> Why do you hate Bruce Springsteen? Oh, there's a lot of reasons to hate Bruce Springsteen, quite honestly. Um, not metal. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, well, before you start thinking Islam is the answer, uh, yeah, we got, our, we, got, we got some stats to go over, too. Uh, yeah, you think Ma- Matt Walsh is next? Uh, how are we doing? I am back from Las Vegas, Nevada. I, have, I was there for, God damn, like from what, five days. Came back on Saturday. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, everybody's going to start throwing these at me. If you're like down, if you're below, like I hate to, I hate to be this, that guy, because I try to read all of these and I still will, but um, I got it. The chat's been slowing shit down, so I'm going to try to do my best here. I expect we'll have a, a full house. So this, this flight will be a full flight, so please move next to each other and uh, make sure that you get to know your neighbor. Uh, Gallup in 2015, 2017, 51% of churchgoers believe that divorce is morally acceptable. L. Ruslan, L. Tradcons. Yeah, today, by the way, uh, this is going to, uh, if Pearl, if you're watching, this is going to be my version of wife school today. We're going to get into wife school. This is going to be awesome. Um, if you don't know what wife school is, go check out what, uh, what, 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 what Pearl's, <laughs> what, what, the, what the Pearl's been cooking. Uh, let me get, the, get rid of some of these here. We're going to come back to that Steve Harvey clip too, by the way. Sometimes I'll throw in like clips that I'm going to use like during the show. Uh, we are definitely going to be talking about Crowder today. Uh, I did sort of a warm up to this on, um, it was on my Friday decompression show uh, that I think I'm going to start doing a little bit more regularly. Um, what's this? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, by the way, thank you, Red Pill Thor. I have to uh, give a big shout out to uh, Red Pill Thor. He is responsible for one of the videos that I'm going to be using today. Uh, I was unable to get on the Roll Zero uh, show yesterday because I was flying back home uh, during that time. But uh, I am home for this Saturday, so I will probably be hosting Roll Zero on, on this Saturday. Uh, fair play to Crowder for push for pushing back steel balls. Yeah, uh, we're going to get into that, too. Crowder should have read the rational mail. I have tried, JM. I have tried my. It was my been my Christian duty to uh, to throw. Yeah, yeah, okay. The new camera's in effect. Um, to uh, to keep things going. I got. I got. Man, I got. I have a whole notebook full of stuff today. Uh, there's so much going on here. And by the way, I want to start out with a couple of things. Um, yeah, I have. Tr- I have tried. I have reached out to a lot of people like Elon Musk, by the way, Elon Musk. If you ever watch this, I have a signed copy for you of my book. I will hand deliver it to you at the Giga Factory. It Well, it's, I guess it's in Fernley, but it sparks it's Fernley, Nevada. It's not too far from where I am right now. It's only like maybe a 10, 15 minute drive from from the secret bunker here. So uh, Elon offer still good. Anytime you want to meet up, I'll be happy to hand that book to you. Sign it. Talk to you. Whatever. Marriage Kobayashi Maru. Yeah, the, the, if you don't know what Kobayashi Maru is, it's the no win situation. So when you hear that reference, it's actually a Star Trek reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Star Trek reference. It's gonna be guilty, 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 guilty. <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Wait, here. There go. I reserve those sound drops for the masculine geeks when I do their show. Anyways, okay, so Crowder's getting divorced, uh, and it's been uh, it's been in the works. I don't think that this is a, a shock to anyone's system. We've been talking about this since the midweek. I had people on uh, in the in the chat asking me if I was going to cover it on uh, on uh, <laughs> when I was talking to Gary the Numbers Guy. No, we weren't. Uh, when I was uh, on uh, Access Vegas on Thursday night, no, we didn't. Um, and then I got to my decompression show, which is uh, I'm doing a. <laughs> I'm, considering doing this regularly on uh, Fridays after I'm done with access Vegas, just to do like some live, uh, uh, some live video uh, from wherever the hell I'm at on Instagram. So people can just sort of like ask me questions. It's just a Q and a kind of thing for about an hour. Did you like that? Did you like the freedom tunes? The freedom tunes is great. I, I hope he doesn't like give me grief for that because I, um, I know I'm probably stepping on his toes, but go over to freedom tunes. You can't you can't miss it. Just put in Freedom Tunes in YouTube. You'll find it. Trust me. I, I didn't put the link in that thing, but I will. I will do it later. Yeah. OK, so uh, that was Friday. Friday, I kind of opined and did a little bit of a warm up for today's show, and I'm glad I held off. Um, Myron and Fresh did a show. I want to say it was on Wednesday. Did they do a Wednesday show or was it Friday? No, it would have been Wednesday. I think they did a show to talk. Thank you very much for that Sam Whiskey <laughs> to Ching. Ned appreciates you. Uh, and so 
I always want to wait until things happen. Now, of course, they did the show before Steven Crowder did the video that I just showed you a minute ago saying that come Monday or Tuesday of next week that he's going to, well, maybe tomorrow, right? Uh, going to clear up, clear the air here. Uh, you have to, we're going to have to go and do a little bit of background. Uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of review, a little bit of remedial stuff today. Uh, part of it is, remember, yeah, okay. I have, um, I will have, um, I will have uh, Miguel and Charlie in today, uh, later on, uh, probably within you know, half an hour, 45 minutes somewhere. Uh, we're going to talk about their Cultivate Crypto class, uh, just because I'm coming in late to the game, as I always do, because I'm flying by the seat of my pants. But uh, what do you got here? Uh, hey, Rolo, on the last AV, did you catch Rose Fishers at the 22? Yeah, guys level up so there's more men for women to choose from. It reminded me of your TradCon show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We'll talk about that. I, li I actually like Rose quite a bit, but um, yeah, there's, I, I think a lot of people started like coming at Rose because they thought that she was advocating for like sort of knuckling under and submitting to your husband and everything. And um, I, 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 I love how people just fly off the handle. And usually it's because we live in the TR TLDR generation, which is why I like to wait until certain things, um, why I like to wait until certain things sort of, play out i want to see where where all the cards are on when all the cards are on the table and i started paying attention to what was going on with stephen crowder back when he was accusing candace owens of all people of the um of extortion uh, or yeah he was yeah and i always knew that there was some bad blood between her and and steven that's that i think that's probably like probably the worst kept secret in sort of the trad cono sphere if you want to call it that and then came the uh, the the fifty million dollar uh, <laughs> major league baseball or, or basketball whatever uh, NBA contract that uh, Crowder turned down from Daily Wire, which is kind of interesting considering uh, who was offering it. And uh, then of course he went on uh, Tim Pool, and the rest is history. Uh, but basically turned down that the the contract that Daily Wire wanted to kind of it was kind of like golden handcuffs, I guess. And so that I, I thought, well, well, that's water on the bridge, right? Well, turns out that that's not that wasn't the end of it. Um, no, I will not be having Gary on as a regular guest. So there you go. That's to represent chaos undivided. Yes, you're welcome. Um, so when I was watching what was happening with um, with uh, the, the back and forth between uh, Candace Owens and and Crowder, I think it, it, it would behoove my audience to sort of get an idea of what was going on there. One thing that a lot of people don't know, and a lot of people just simply because they don't do their homework, they just want to fly off the handle and go with whatever is expedient for them, I guess. And when I was watching what's going on, I already knew that there was some, there was a, um, let's say a friendship of some sorts between Hillary Crowder and Candace Owens. And again, the reason I know this is because when, uh, way back when um, when Stephen Crowder had gone in for surgery. And by the way, it wasn't elective surgery. It was not elective surgery. He needed that surgery. And we'll find you'll you'll understand exactly what I'm about. I will clarify all of that up to this point. This is more like a rumor control show tomorrow or Tuesday when when Stephen comes out with whatever he's going to come out with. I might I, I reserve the right to be wrong in this show, but I'm just going to go with what I know up to this point. Stephen Crowder comes off as very angry. Alpha one. Uh, yeah. Okay. He, ain't nobody clean today. Ain't nobody clean. Okay. You, me, Crowder, ain't nobody clean in this show. That's the best thing about this show is we keep it real 100% all the time, but nobody's clean. Yes. Uh, Destiny blocked me, but uh, we'll talk about Destiny a little bit. Just a touch today. He did. Actually, I found myself agreeing with a lot of Destiny's take on the Crowder slash the, the ring video. I did actually, oddly enough, you know, sometimes, you know, there's, there is some crossover there and I do understand what he's saying. I understand his approach anyways, which is, can we just like wait and find out what's going on? And one thing that, yeah, uh, I don't know about that yet. We, we don't know. We don't know. Let, let's before I go and, and, and endorse Hillary Crowder equals, uh, no, I don't know. I don't think so just yet. I don't think she's that crazy. Amber Heard is like shit on the bed. Crazy. Okay, I don't know that I don't think Hillary is is that 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 nuts. So we'll keep that we'll, we'll keep that in the back pocket here for a bit, but I I don't necessarily think she's the Amber Heard. However, is she playing this tactically? It might not be her 
being vindictive or malice or whatever. It might be the fact that she, of course, what happens is when women get into the divorce machine, the nicest woman in the world turns into this evil harpy, uh, Haridan. There's your vocabulary word for the day. Um, when divorce attorneys get involved, when her friends get involved, when it's like, oh, we just want to have this amicable, you know, we're going to uh, separate, you know, we're going to um, share the split, the, the assets, yada, 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 whatever. They try to make it as amicable as possible and try to make it as easy to easy going on the kids as possible until friends get involved, until mom gets involved, until sister, until, you know, aunt, until bitter, you know, burned feminist attorney gets involved. Um, and then suddenly it's like, you go get, you go girl, you get yours. You're going to be better off by like taking him for everything he's got. And remember, Steven Crowder's got a lot. And we're going to, we're going to go back in time. We're going to, we're going to go all the way back to 2012. But before I start that, I have to tell you guys, um, nobody's clean in all this. So don't think that I am taking any one of these it, Steven Crowder. Saw, I've been critical of, of, of Crowder on a great many things. Whenever he does, he tries to dip his toes in the manosphere. I have corrected him uh, actually in my intro videos and, and others, uh, geez, probably four or five times last year at least. And, um, and so I don't think he's like really, I don't, wouldn't say Crowder is red pill. I wouldn't say he's even like really necessarily part of the manosphere, but he likes to come up with manosphere st statistics or he likes to put dip his toes in the manosphere, just like everybody else in trad cons do. But I'm wondering if this isn't going to be sort of the, uh, the, the uh, milestone or the benchmark moment for the trad cons sort of dipping their toes in the manosphere. Because what I think is going to probably happen here is um, what I think is probably going to happen is you're going to see a lot of the people who wanted to go on, like say whatever podcast, or they wanted to go on whatever is safe for them. Uh, Prager you, for example, um, they like to quote Myron and fresh, but they would never dream of going on Myron and fresh. They would never go on fresh and fit. Uh, they'll go like, for instance, Amala from, uh, from Prager U she she'll, she's been on whatever podcast, Michael Knowles has been on whatever podcast they're okay with that, but it's, it's only because it seems safer to go on Brian's show than it is to actually come to Las Vegas and sit across the table from me. And I will be happy to have you on the show and, and debate you and, and give you all kinds of grief for, for your misconceptions of the manosphere. The only person who's been able to sort of uh, answer that call has been Gary, the numbers guy of all people. So if you are better than Gary, the numbers guy, you will at least accept that challenge. That will always be on the table. If you want to come and debate me anytime you come to Vegas, you sit across the table and be a man, just like Gary, the, the numbers guy was. I don't agree with him. I think uh, I think we kind of like left it at an impasse. <laughs> But um, but he did. I will. I respect him for for coming out and doing it, which I can't say for anyone else that I have laid you know throw down the gauntlet for. So again, still out there. Respect for Gary. None for you until you pick up until you answer the call. <laughs> uh, what do you got here? No offense to Brian, but does he? But he does not read all his super chats. Yeah, of course he doesn't. Um, he's got uh, I'm his his show has really sort of um has really kind of started to snowball a little bit more, I think. So he does have quite a few, but I think it's like, it's like me saying, okay, guys, I'm not going to read any super chats unless they're a hundred dollars or above. It's like, I'm only going to read PP's uh, super chats. Cause he's the only one who goes a hundred buck, hundred and above. I try to make this show as inclusive as possible. And in the sense that like, I want your input on this because you guys help me drive the show. So that's, I'm always about that, but I do understand. Yeah. And, um, there's a possibility. I, I don't know if we're 100% confirmed, but uh, Mike and myself might be on uh, whatever podcast on the 7th of May. That is, uh, I think we're probably just about ready to confirm that. I, I think we're going to do that. So we'll see. I'll let you guys know. Don't worry. Um, so what's going on with Steven Crowder? And I think a lot of people either are too happy or too pissed off about this. But I will say that this is sort of like the watershed moment for the manosphere as far as trad cons are concerned. Because trad cons are going to come into this and they're going to they want to put their they love to go on on whatever podcast and wag a finger at the the co-eds and the feminists and the oh God. The, did you guys see the big gigantic? Uh, did you see where? Wait, I think I even have this. Hang on. Did you guys see this? <laughs> did you guys see this on um, whatever podcast? <laughs> Gorlock the Destroyer. <laughs> Brian, I, I, I love you, man. I love you like a brother. But what the fuck? <laughs> It's like it's like it's like the juggernaut. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. 
where did this come from? Holy mackerel. I was like, she's like, she's bigger than like, imagine this girl. Like, is that a girl? I don't, I can't even tell. Imagine that person getting on the plane and sitting next to you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I hate to be, I mean, that's definitely a medical condition, but like, God, you know, I, I tell you, like after every single access Vegas show that we do, it's like people would say, Rollo, why don't you get some normal girls on there? And then like <laughs> I go over and I see the I see the thumbnail for whatever podcast and Gorlock the Destroyer. Is on there. <laughs> oh, what what's normal, man? Just tell me and I'll be happy to do it. I don't know. You don't know what normal is. Nobody knows what normal is. That's just the problem. I'm just going to go with hot. Can we just go with hot? I'm all right with that. At least I can, I can identify hot. <laughs> oh it, yeah. Is she, I, is he, it, it, what he, yeah. Is he a uh, Gorlock, Gorlock to destroy? Well, I know who came up. Who was the guy that tweeted that? I that was funny as hell, but it is like a Marvel villain. I mean, it's like the blob or the thing or, or, or the juggernaut. <laughs> and I was like, Hey baby. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, un unbelievable. But uh, so when when I see that, when I'm like, what's what exactly is normal? Like, where are we going with all this? But that's the show that Michael Knowles will go on. That's the show that like uh, Amala will go on. And I don't know if this guy is the new co-host or anything. Maybe Brian can clear it up for me. But he's got a new co-host who's very much, uh, I would say, traditional conservative in the sense of very evangelical. And I think you're going to see more and more of this as the uh, culture war narrative starts to sort of uh, get a little bit more traction and pick up steam, uh, which I think is where the pivot's going to be for most trad cons. It's not going to it's not going to be in the manosphere anymore. It's going to be more about like the, the culture war, the woke. It's the beast versus the woke. Fight! Right? And it's team sports at its best. So that team sports mentality is flowing over into uh, controversies and conflicts between, like, say, Candace Owens and our, our friend uh, Stephen Crowder. Right? Now, Stephen Crowder's not cleaning all of this either. He acted like a little bitch in this in this uh, video. But let me explain to you something about those videos. They are highly edited. How do I know? I looked at the time code down at the fucking bottom of the screen that is still there on the ring video. And if you had paid attention to do that, you would figure it out too. It's not hard. Pay attention to details. You could know this. You would know that this has been edited. And even if it's just edited for like time, these are still only like one minute, one minute, 30 videos. So to do that, people say, well, you know, we wanted to crop out the boring stuff. Okay. Fine. Even if that's the case, even if that's like legit, you still edited the video. What else did you edit? If you didn't show the whole thing or you're cutting out like certain strategic parts of it, what are you cutting out? I think we're going to find out what that is. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. We're going to, I actually, I wrote down the time codes so that you guys will know where those jump cuts are. I'm, I'm sensitive to those things because I work in premiere. I work with videography. I work in video editing. I do post-production. I see that and I go, oh, God, that's a bad jump. <laughs> you know? uh, new fan. First time. Super chatter. Thank you very much. Uh, Crowder, uh, Crowder isn't perfect. No, he's not. But I can't help but see this as a railroading. Landau spills the beans. Owen Benjamin blows up the divorce. Then uh, this hit piece substack. It feels too coordinated. It is too coordinated. And I'll tell you why. Matt Walsh is, um, I don't know that he's kicked off of Daily Wire, but I know he got ratioed at the very least then you got don lemon of all people who's who who gets booted from cnn then you got tucker carlson which by the way well, i'm going to get into here a little bit because there is sort of a a, a, a dovetailing and a, a sort of a peripheral ancillary story that goes along with crowder but crowder walsh don lemon and um and now you've got uh tucker carlson now all of these guys are being ratioed or being censored or being like uh, run up the flagpole. Welcome to my world, boys. Like Matt Walsh, all you guys that I just mentioned, Matt Walsh, Tucker Carlson. Uh, who, uh, you know what? I'll even take Don Levitt. Come on over here. Come to my world. Come in. Come over here. Come in on this show. Come on Access Vegas, guys. Please. I'm begging you. Let's start our own like like pirate channel. Like, let's just like, see, you, you want to flip the bird to, to Daily Wire, Stephen Crowder, come on, come to Vegas. Matt Walsh, if they're giving you grief at Daily Wire, come to Vegas. 
seriously because when we get into the uh the election cycle proper this is what they're setting all of this up for so yeah it's co- it seems coordinated because it is coordinated and i will i will back that up with a little bit of facts here just a little bit i do have a, i want to also point out that i do have um i'm gonna have uh let's see i'm not glenn lawrence glenn I'll, I'll mod you in a bit, Glenn. I, I, I'm surprised I haven't done so already. But I will have Miguel, um, Miguel Munoz, my my Mexican friend, <laughs> my Mexican partner, my my heterosexual life partner, business partner. <laughs> uh, he and uh, Charlie from Cultivate Crypto will be coming in very very soon. Um, in a little while, we're going to talk about their their new course just for a bit, um, because I have no other time to do it. Uh, quite honestly, and I, I kind of want to just like you know let them have a let them have a, a little bit of a, a screen time. But really, come to come to my world, come to our world, come to me and Miguel and Mike Sartain's world. Come over here. Come to the dark side. We have cookies <laughs> because nobody else is doing this. Nobody else is pointing this stuff out. So, what do you got? Other creators finally getting pilled like on on like Rolo. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the party, pal. Seriously, sooner or later, you guys are going to end up here. You might as well come now. <laughs> you might as well come to the the dark underbelly <laughs> of, of the manosphere. And I'm leaning into that too. I, I know people like want to give me give me you know grief about that but i want to uh let's let's i got some some video going on here thank you for every if super chat if i if i miss one please i i i beg of you but just forgive me uh, i don't think so uh bourdain is another you know i'll tell you what's interesting um i was doing show prep this morning and i had uh robert kiyosaki call me up and he's just like hey call him whenever robert calls i usually pick it up or I, i'll call him immediately back because he's a good friend of mine and, um, you know, he was, you know, we we're talking back and forth, but, uh, one of the things that we talked about was, uh, how guys get zeroed out and how a guy like Anthony Bourdain, um, who seemingly has a lot going for him, uh, you know, he had a lot of money, uh, he had a lot of status, who was, was arguably a high value male back in 2018, except for one thing. And that is that he was unable to sort of disabuse himself of his blue pill conditioning. He was unable to sort of kill the kill the inner beta. He was unable to disabuse himself of the soulmate myth and one itis. And and of all people, he gets one itis for Asia Argento. And then, of course, she's gallivanting around the city, what Naples or someplace in Italy with a 29 year old boy toy. And she, I think she was like 43 at the time or something. And the paparazzi start taking pictures of her. And she tries to actually tell the, the cameraman, Hey, don't publish this. It'll really crush Anthony. And, and they did. And the rest is history. That's what put the noose around us. And I'm not saying she did it, but that was certainly the catalyst that sort of made him want to give up. And I don't think enough people really realize this. Cause I've been seeing a lot of, uh, let's say well-meaning trad cons who just simply don't know any better. And they're trying to appeal to a female audience. Oh, let's be the kinder, gentler, more sanitized version of the red pill. And they start mouthing off about like soulmates and they say Steve Harvey and, and all this other shit. They just don't get it and they're not going to get it. So when I hear that, I realize just how dangerous like reheating that bullshit is. And I wanted to, I wanted to sort of throw that out there because I don't think that that's what's going to happen to Crowder. I hope not. I don't think it will. But um, I, I will say this, that a lot of the stuff that's going on with Crowder and Hillary um, is very reminiscent of the, the, the essays and the, the, I would say the, the impetus behind the essays that I did for um, the soulmate myth and for there is no one. It's the, the fallacy of the one, the, fallacy, the soulmate fallacy, a soulmate myth. And I, happy life, happy life. Exactly. Right. So Happy wife, happy life is not some folksy feel good. Like, oh, here's some wisdom for you on your wedding. Tell me what I should do to have a really good, happy, healthy relationship, guys. And every dude, every beta, if you ever hear a guy say happy wife, happy life, you, they're, you just understand that they're beta. They're cucked. They're whatever you want to I don't know how, what, what's the vernacular? They're blue pill. That only those words only proceed from the mouth, unironically, that only <laughs> proceed from the mouths of people, of, of men who are blue pill. You know, he, he, how how often do you really hear women say, you know, happy wife, happy life? Not very often. It's mostly guys who are doing that. 
it's a, it's an, a, a, a concession of defeat. And more than that, it's, it's not some happy folksy wisdom. It's an ultimatum now. Happy wife, happy life. And if you don't keep this bitch happy, you're going to have a miserable life. And you know who's like realizing this now suddenly at the end of all this? That's Steven Crowder. So we're going to get into some of that. But before we do, I want to, um, let's see, I've got some screen caps here. I've got a lot of video to, to sort of dig into. But I, before we do that, I kind of have to read you a few things here just so we can sort of give a preamble here. Uh, where'd they go? So I'm going to share my screen. Which one was the good one? Oh, this was a good one. Okay, we've got to start with the extortion war here. This is really good. Um, now, this is a, 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 a spare me. I know it's the Daily Beast, but this came out on April 27th. This is Stephen Crowder's extortion war with Candace Owens blows up. So let's go and we're going to start with this one. Uh, where am I there? There I am. Okay, so let's uh, let's dig into this. Just really briefly, right wing shock jock. Why are we call, like understand like words have meanings and there's this attempt to sort of like characterize and, and color this story before we even get started. So right wing shock jock Stephen Crowder tossed a grenade into the conservative web show world this week when he accused a fellow pun, fellow pundit. I don't think they're fellows, quite honestly, of trying to extort him with the details of his divorce, the separation he blamed on his wife. Um. Yeah. Days later, Crowder is now on the back foot with Crowder's attorney reportedly rebuffing and and uh, rebuffing a cease and desist order from Owens and with Crowder's ex-wife family releasing a statement accusing Crowder of emotional abuse. Crowder, the host of the show Louder with Crowder, has been in divorce proceedings since 2021. That's important. Keep that in mind. Put that put a little bookmark in that one. He announced on his show Tuesday, Crowder claimed he made the announcement in response to veiled threats from rivals on the right, namely Candace Owens. Why Candace? Hmm. We'll find out who hosts her own show, The Daily Wire. Crowder played clips of from a January episode of Owens show in which Owens tr attributed a feud between Crowder and The Daily Wire to unspecified personal issues in Crowder's life. Now, remember, this is well before the Daily Wire offer to bring Crowder into the fold, to bring him on with his own show on Daily Wire. That's January, because remember, this that didn't take place until I was in February into March is when that, all that went down. There. Okay, so uh, Crowder suggested that those comments, plus alleged behind-the-scenes attacks, uh, amounted to extortion, and that Owens was threatening to leak information about his divorce. Wow. I wonder what that information could be. Hmm. Let's continue. If you're, if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, then you know how the, you know, the feeling. Well, Crowder told his audience going on to exclaim that some other issues or uh, inferences have been more pernicious behind the scenes with demands that uh, threats to use this information, which they believe would be so public would be so publicly embarrassing to me and my wife in a difficult time that it could be used knowingly putting my children in harm's way. So I will continue here in just a moment, but let me, let me bring myself back up here. There you go. Okay. There you have it. This is the, this is the, the shot across the bow right here. This is what, and remember this, all this takes place before the, the video is released. Okay. He's talking about this as far back as January of this year. So when you look at the video, when you look at the ring video, and we're going to go, we're going to peruse that a little bit here today, too. When you look at that ring video, remember that video is from 2021. As a matter of fact, it's dated in the time code. It is uh, uh, June 6th, 2021. It is almost two years old. How long has Candace Owens been sitting on that fucking video? That's what I want to know. And Candace, if you would like to come and discuss this anytime, I'll be happy to give you the link. Come on over here. We'll talk about it. Come to Vegas. We'll talk about it. How long have you been sitting on that video? And the reason why I'm suspicious about it, I'm not saying she was, I'm not saying she wasn't. Okay. Allegedly. I got to make sure everybody says allegedly these days. But we do know that Hillary Crowder and Candace Owens are besties or have been really close friends for a while because they're both evangelical Christians. Uh, Ruslan. There it is. Uh, you want to know why Ruslan is sort of like getting a little itchy under the collar? That's why. There's a lot more. There's a lot more coming to that too. 
But here, how long has she been sitting on this? Because that video, that ring video with the security cam over a very nice backyard, by the way, uh, central daylight time. It even says CDT on the on the actual on the video itself. June 2021. That's when she was pregnant. Not yesterday. Not she's not eight months pregnant now. She was in the video two years ago. Well, close to two years ago. That's when she was. And remember that the divorce proceedings have been going on since 2021. According to Crowder, all I'm doing is following the timeline. Nobody else is. Who else is doing this? Who else is following the timeline here? Who else is looking at the video? Who else is going into this kind of detail? You don't need confessions. You don't. All you have to do is just follow the, the chronology of the whole thing. But when and, and here's the thing, Crowder's right. Crowder was absolutely right. She was sitting on that video that could be public. If it went public, it could be damaging to him. So now he gets out ahead of it. But let's uh, let's let's keep going with this one, because this is a really good, uh, really good article here. Uh, where did I put it? There we are. So Owens has denied the extortion allegations. Well, <laughs> I wonder if she's denying them now, because now suddenly we see what was the extortion material. Uh, she sent Crowder cease and desist orders. Wow, that's going to be real interesting when uh, she gets countersued if if Crowder is is smart. And he has really, uh, let's say, aggressive attorneys who could very easily get her for defamation and libel, if not like racketeering and extortion. Who knows? I mean, I, don't, I would need to talk to uh, um, uh, Andrew Esquire about this on Legal Mindset. Uh, on Thursday, she said she received a response from his lawyer stating that she did not have grounds for a defamation lawsuit. No, but Crowder certainly does now. I sent him a cease and desist order based on or based off his claims, which made it very clear that he was accusing me of extortion, although he never mentioned her by name and heavily insinuating that something happened behind the scenes were where uh, where some where I somehow threatened him and his child. Well, perhaps, but maybe it's not you doing it personally, but if he knows or if you're like holding over his head this video that Candace herself released and was given permission to do so. By Daily Wire, and perhaps that's what he was referring to, Candace. Owens told the Daily Beast. <laughs> Owens is so Candace Owens is giving quotes to the Daily Beast. Let that sink in. <laughs> Let that sink in for you. His lawyers came back and basically said my claims were not ac actionable because he was using the term extortion as a feeling. Okay, well. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, now here, hindsight being 2020, we can see what he was talking about. Candace, the attorney's letter states that Mr. Crowder's opinions fall short of any defamation at all. He has merely opined uh, comparatively the feelings of certain misconduct to his own present state. Blah, blah, blah. OK, uh, let's see. So the family also released the home home surveillance footage of Crowder. Also, remember, that's a very this right here. That's a also. Also, okay, a Crowder spokesperson did not return the Daily Beast request for comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, so essentially, he, Crowder, knew he was lying. Mm, no, apparently he's not, because now she took it upon herself to release the video. He knew that some people would uh, discern from it, but now he's uh, would discern from it. And now he's backtracking to private uh, backtracking it privately by trying to make it seem like my video made him feel like it could be extortion. Well, imagine this. Now it certainly looks like it was extortion now that you're the one who's breaking the video, which is obviously bullshit, but his, well, bullshit. Uh, but this is what Steven Crowder does. He lies for a living. I see. Well, imagine that. Well, she gets all of these. She gets permission to talk to uh, to uh, to the Daily Beast. But uh, but but uh, intelligently, uh, Crowder does not. Or he doesn't do it anyway. He's not going to talk to them. So anyways, Crowder and Owens feud dates back to January when Crowder went public with a job offer he'd been or he'd received from Owens employer. The Daily Wire Crowder slammed the 50 million dollar deal as a slave contract that would subject him to big tech censorship, namely because the Daily Wire reserved the right to dock Crowder's pay if his channel and frequently promotes racist, sexist, blah, 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 anti LGBT. We got it. We know who he is got demonetized or suspended. And you know who else knows? The Daily Wire knows this too. 
So Crowder released the record uh, recorded phone call um, with the Daily Wire's CEO, leading to a counteroffensive from the Daily Wire personalities like Owens herself. OK, so bear all this in mind. I don't think I'm doing it. I think this is pretty much uh, uh, this, again, we're going we're following this chronologically here. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Stevens mentally, Stevens mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family while she has t- attempted to save her marriage. OK, this is the official story from uh, let's see let's say on Thursday, Crowder's ex-wife, Hillary's family released the statement <laughs> right through Candace. Uh, and video footage to writer Yashar Ali, who I don't know who this is. I will I will go and have a look at this. Oh, he's a sub stack. Accusing Crowder of emotional abuse. Got it. She was the one who was asking to work on their relationship. Of course, they always do, right? During, especially during the divorce proceeding, right? Prior to divorce, that's when that's going to happen. Yeah, he just wouldn't change. The family went on to accuse Crowder of choosing not to be present at the birth of the couple's twins in 2021. This is horseshit. The family also alleged that Crowder had effectively ended the relationship, buying a townhouse and moving out of the couple's home, cutting Hillary off financially there. And that's important. And hiring a divorce attorney without her knowledge. Or was it with her knowledge since she was the one sitting on this video? The family also released home surveillance footage of Crowder berating his ex-wife while she was heavily pregnant. In the video, Crowder forbids his wife from using their car because you refuse to do wifely things. And that is going to be the theme of today's show, children. The only way out of this is is discipline and respect. Is it? We'll see. Uh, Later in the footage, Hillary states, I love you, but uh, your abuse is sick. Watch it. Watch it. Fucking watch it. He replies. Okay, we're going to watch this this video and you're going to see just how cherry picked all of this is. My then wife decided that she did not want to be married anymore. And the state of Texas, that's completely permitted. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. So that's the end of that story right there. So that's the buildup. That's the preamble. That's the, that's not the smoking gun just yet. So let's uh, yeah. Happy wife, happy life. Right. You guys ready to get married? This is remember. If we were rewind the tape all the way back to 2012, when Steven Crowder and his then wife, Hillary, were the happy evangelical couple who waited for sex and and were virgins and waited for each other and forsaking all others. And here we are, what, almost what, nine, 10 years later. Yeah. Let's keep going. <laughs> you know, Ruslan, I, I hate to I hate to have a smoking gun, but I think I got a smoking gun right here. You skipped over my super chat like sauce cast. Damn. Well, what is it? Uh, give it to me again. Throw it back up. I'll come back and get you. Uh, Rolo. No, I didn't. I have some starred. Relax. Chill the fuck out. I got. I have it. Well, this hold women accountable BS is cringe and useless. Isn't it better, as you say, to demonstrate, not explicate, is the validation seeking. Yes, it is. Um, uh, what else? Happy wife, happy life. But it's also equal partnership when convenient. No, it's always an equal partnership until it's time to f- to fight the mugger. When uh, we don't need a, an asteroid to reset natural order, but when we lose world reserve currency status, uh, the petrodollar, great, thanks. You know what? Uh, let's save this for a later rational trucker. I'm going to hold on to that for uh, when um, when uh, my good friend Miguel shows up. And let's see what else I got here. Um, let me see if I can get through these super chats just really quickly before I move on to the next article. Uh, sorry, I, God, you guys are very, very active today. Thank you for thank you all for watching today's show. Are we certain the ring video was released by Candace? I haven't heard that yet. No, but sh- uh, OK, so the the official story is this is that um, that the, the family released the video. OK, <laughs> like to who? See, that's the whole part, though. The, the, the major news source that broke the story first is Candace Owens, whether the family put it out for like. What are they going to do? Just put it up on their on on, on Facebook? <laughs> oh, we put out. Hey, this is what's really going on. We want all of our family and friends to know just how fucked up in the head Stephen Crowder. Do you think that 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 was the intent? No, I don't. And honestly, I think that uh, probably Crowder. And I think we'll probably find this out this week. I think I think Stephen probably knew that Candace already had the video, but they can't make it seem like it was Candace who goes, "Ha, ah, I got the video." But she's the one who broke the story. So whether whether the, the the video came out from the family like ten minutes before Candace picked it up and ran with it, the effect is the same. 
It's the politics of personal destruction. And that's what they're really trying to do with, with Crowder right now. And that's what they're doing with Matt Walsh. They're doing with Tucker Carlson and they're doing with Don Lemon. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, let me get back to some of these other ones. I've always thought that Candace Owen has left tendencies. No, she's a feminist. Do you guys remember the conversation I had with Jedediah Bila? Said, so, you know, their trad con women are just simply prettier feminists. I mean, arguably. That's all they are. It's the sisterhood Uber Alice. It doesn't matter what political stripe they are. It doesn't matter what religion they are. It doesn't matter what color their skin is. It doesn't matter what their ethnicity or their background or their racial identity, whatever the hell it is. It doesn't matter. If they have a cooter, they're part of the sisterhood. That's why that's why they struggle with the, the trans thing right now, because they got they got a dick. They don't have a cooter. <laughs> You're not part of the sisterhood. Get out of here, you guttlefish. <laughs> that's what it's about. It's about the sisterhood Uber Alice. I'll, would you like me to tell you the, the, the story one more time? If Megan Kelly and uh, Rachel Maddow were both on the same TV show and they were debating, they would fight like cats and dogs. They would, they would never agree on anything politically or ideologically. But if I went on the same show and we started talking about intersexual dynamics, you would see these bitches get together and go, they would lock arms together and they would fight me like rabid cats. Because I'm I'm the misogynist male who 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 doesn't believe in women's empowerment or some shit like that. It doesn't matter that they're both ideologically on on opposite ends of the spectrum. They're still part of Team Woman. That's how this works. I keep telling you guys that here it is, black and white, right in your face. Cats and dogs living together. It's anarchy, <laughs> but it's right there. I feel like I'm Mugatu and Zoolander. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Doesn't anybody ever see this? Why am I the one that's the voice crying in the wilderness here? <laughs> Trad cards are undercover feminists. Yeah, um, no, trad cons are just progressives driving the speed limit. That's what they are. Now, you will happily use the same tools and the same weapons and everything that they complain about, about the woke mob, they will use themselves if it serves their purposes. And here it is right now, black and white. Here it is. What more do I have to like? Look at look at look at Tucker Carlson right now, too, by the way. Tucker Carlson said, cunt. See you next Tuesday. Called a woman a cunt, which, by the way, if he had been in the UK, that would have been just fine. You can't call a woman a cow in the UK. That's horrible. But you can't call her a see you next Tuesday. That's why he's out. Really, the long and short of it. If you look at I, I want to say, is it Mario Cuomo? Who's the guy that? I think he was the mayor of New York during the uh, the pandemic, and he was at least implicit or complicit in the deaths of elderly people at uh, at uh, what is it uh, assisted living the assisted living facility. Okay, whether that's true or not is ir immaterial to what I'm about to tell you. That wasn't enough to be com Im implied in the deaths of elderly people during the pandemic in assisted living facilities in what New York. That wasn't enough to get him fired. You know what it was? A sex scandal. That's what. A harassment scandal. That's what got him that got him kicked out. And look who's there now. Was it the governor? Was he the governor? Who was the governor? I forgot who he got replaced by. I want to say it was Cuomo. Maybe I'm wrong about the name. But that dude, that was what got him kicked. That's what got him booted. I need to understand pissing off your woman can be done on purpose. And it should be sometimes. It should be. You should tell your woman no just for the sake of telling no. Oh, Rollo thinks that we should just be, you know, just deliberately, you know, create friction. Mm, no, but the I'm going to quote Pook right here. I am not Pook. <laughs> but the surest way to make a woman miserable is to give her everything she wants. There, take that to the bank. The wisdom of Pook. <laughs> Who's Pook? Go look at go go to So Suave and, and look up Pook. Hell, you don't have to do that. Just like type in Pook and Google, you'll figure it out. So, yes. So, Andrew Cuomo. Sorry, that's right. You were right. I'm sorry. It was not Mario. Mario, why did I say Mario? Andrew Cuomo was governor. Got replaced. Got it. Okay. Sorry. I, I got the I, I got Cuomo right. I didn't I didn't get his first name. Anyways, um, so yeah, it was yeah, it, it might have been an easy out, but you know what? Even if it was an easy out, look what they used as an easy out. <laughs> I'm telling you, if it's this, if it's if you're a man, if you have a penis dangling between your legs and people want to be done with you, 
All they got to do is say, you call me a cunt. You did this. I remember back when we were 17 at that keg party that we were at at our, our junior year of high school. Yeah, I don't think you should be a Supreme Court justice at all, Mr. Kavanaugh. We're, we are uh, rapidly approaching a time where we're going to get into uh, another hashtag Me Too movement, but it's going to be Me Too 2.0. And that 2.0 is going to stand for this is now the TradCon uh, 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 narrative. Because that's where we're going with this. And I see, oh, man. Okay. Okay. Wait, hold on. Stop the show. There it is. Wait a minute. No, not you. <laughs> you. <laughs> there you go. I know who my God is. Hallelujah. There you go. Thank you, PP. Always a player. It always is a player. See, he always comes through. See, and I didn't stop the show. Or well, I did stop the show for him, I guess. Oh, oops. <laughs> Uh, what is love, baby? Okay, thank you. God damn it. Should I like stop reading the blue ones? Maybe I should stop reading the blue ones. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Let me go with this. Uh, track on emotionalism is the same as the woke mob. I held on to this just for this, this occasion here. Uh, uh, emotionalism are, are using. Uh, both are the same thing that push your finger in the asshole and push it out your mouth and lick your bullshit. Yeah, it's true. It's all emotionalism and they will gladly, happily use the tools that they complain about about cancel culture trust me on it take this to the fucking bank that when when it, when and if there is some sort of cultural shift where we kind of lean back more conservative you will see that these guys lean much more conservative they will lean into that woke mob mentality they will lean into that cancel culture narrative they will go with it if it serves a purpose, that's the thing that gets me is like, I have, I, I don't see even ideological, like, like solidarity in these guys whatsoever. It's all about what is going to serve the purpose. Not everyone is out to get you, but everyone is out for themselves. And if that's you, if you're basing your brand on ideological, like litmus tests, they will be, they will gladly, gladly use the same tools. Hey, Rolo, uh, maybe the Rose Fisher. Yeah. Um, let, let me, I will, I will come back to that. I, I'm going to hang on to that one for till the end. Taste religious conversion is at best a media stunt and at worst a manifestation of a guilty subconscious and the internal need to atone for his behavior and sins change my mind. I'm not going to change your mind. I'm going to try to anyways. Um, I will say this, that I have to take declarations like real, real radical declarations of moral conviction or um, even political ideology conviction, especially when it's like a 180, like when Roosh decided that he wanted to be an Orthodox Christian all of a sudden after being Roosh. A part of me, if I'm incredulous about that, and I will still remain that way because it seems more like a, a brand pivot than it does an actual, uh, you know, an actual sincere conversion. Uh, isn't the manosphere coming a bit more correct these days? Mm, yes and no. All right. All right, guys. Uh, what time is it? It is almost an hour up and I have to get to my good friends here really quickly so that they can join me. What's up, guys? What's up? Can you guys hear me? All right. All right. So here's the uh, <laughs> here's your uh, here's the um, the the financial take on all of this. <laughs> uh, what do you got going? For, what, what do you guys got going? Um, this uh, what was it in the next week or, or, or when is the when is Cultivate Crypto start? It's Q, quarter two, right? Yeah. So the basically the quarter two course starts on um, what's called May six at ten p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. and pretty much we're closing out everything on this Monday. So at this Monday, it's it's uh, finito. You can't get in anymore. So you got two days. That's it. <laughs> Use my link, please. <laughs> I've had you know what's funny is I've had the link in like all my videos for like the last like what about week week and a half i think is when you guys gave it to me and i've i've i've, I've dropped in a few uh, a, a few plugs for it here and there but i don't think i've really gotten into uh gotten into anything in depth about the, the cultivate crypto class so that's coming up that's like the, the q2 thing I, did you guys hear did you guys catch any of the earlier show because i was talking about um yeah kiyosaki a little while a little bit earlier Right. And um, just uh, sort of be, being able to protect yourself in, in, in these days. But you guys have a, you just, do you have a, a spicy take on what's going on with Crowder at all? Do you think he should, do, like, I don't think he has a prenup. Pretty sure he doesn't. Oh, I'm. Hopefully he I'm, does. I'm, I'm fairly sure he doesn't. Like, honestly. <laughs> I don't think he does. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I really don't think he does, man. I mean, especially if if you're just going off the take right there that I mean, he was like they waited until marriage to get you know to have sex and all that stuff, and it, uh, it, that doesn't seem very likely and stuff like that. And then yeah. I'm with you, I'm a hundred percent with you on that. That for sure, like the family leaked it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's just waiting two years. Just a setup video. job. <laughs> Do you think that like because I have a lot of guys that are asking I, when I was doing the um, my decompression show yesterday, I uh, I had a lot of guys asking me if they thought that this was some sort of like deliberate thing that was going on as far as um, it could be a financial thing, of course, but it's also uh, a political thing uh, just sort of rearranging the chessboard, I guess, uh, prior to a, uh, a, uh, a an election cycle or prior to an election year. And it's meant to sort of limit or to silence the players that are going to end up being like sort of loose cannons, I think, uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the coming next coming like 18 months. I mean, it's they did it to Tucker Carlson just like what this last one week, same timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, with, with Tucker Carlson, I mean, I mean, it's it's not it's not magic that all these people have disappeared. I mean, I mean, I think mm -hmm. in the last election you still had Nick Fuente. I mean, they're just looking for any little section that would be Trump positive or pro Trump and just taking them out of here, basically. I mean, like, I think they're just cleaning up shop right now is really what's going on. Yeah. Well, the thing about about uh, Tucker Carlson, though, is like Tucker Carlson's been he's been kind of openly against Trump for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that might have been that might have had something to do with it. But I, I don't know. It's hard. I, I hate to be like, I hate to get like put on my tinfoil hat or anything like right. that and go all Alex Jones. But um, one thing I, I, I did want to point out, and I think it's probably a little bit more relevant is uh, the, the markets right now. And yeah. I like this time last year, we were speaking of, of uh, Robert Kiyosaki and George Gammon and the rest of the guys. We were on Fresh and Fit not too long ago. And the advice then was watch out because we're going to head, we're heading for a recession or a global, a global recession, but yet we haven't really seen anything like that yet. Do you guys, do you guys, um, right now we have a pretty strong crypto market on top of everything else too. So is this something that's like a buildup for, um, for, for the election cycle? Is this something that we're supposed to have some sort of like boom year as a result? You know, it's just so people don't think about finances. I mean, I mean, pretty. I mean, pretty much what's going on right now is uh, we've kind of kicked the can down the road just one year. I mean, with all so the FDIC and the Federal Reserve have essentially put out this special sort of program, one year program for banks. If for uh, as the as the Federal Reserve keeps increasing interest rates, the, all, every bank on this planet is taking huge losses mm -hmm. on holding U.S. debt or some mortgage backed securities. So all the U.S. banks right now are you know are bleeding out quite a lot. So what they're doing is they're they're moving over. They're they're pretty much their underwater bonds over to the other side they're to hold for a long term so right now like a lot of the banks in the united states are pretty primed for bank runs right mm -hmm. now so they put a program in place where like hey we'll buy all your bank run bonds right now give you some cash up front and then that way you guys won't have um, runs on the banks and stuff so that's what's going on but it's, it's a one-year program only Mm -hmm. So effectively, what they've done it can is, be extended, it, though. It, it, yeah, right. It can be extended, but they've essentially just bought enough time to make sure that we get past the election cycle, or at least a good portion into it and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, honestly, we've been in a recession pretty much all of 22 anyway. I mean, I mean, the the White House recently changed because it used to take, be like two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And you would pretty much be in a recession. Now it's really just based on whenever Biden wants to say we're in a recession, which is never, especially during when he's running for a re-election. Now, I mean, I really, I mean, I mean, I mean, we all know it. Like, all of 22 was a pretty shitty year. Let's be for real. Mm. Right? I mean, I mean, with with just all the rampant inflation, the gasoline prices going up. Um, it, I mean, <laughs> one day was toilet paper being at all time highs. Now it's eggs. Or whatever and then like whatever the next trend is on what's like the thing that everyone's trying to get right now um it, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy world but all this money printing all this money printing that's going on does eventually lead into assets and crypto was like the first thing down so with the first thing up i mean pretty much the i mean our um if you had been watching us since like fresh and fit last november and stuff or last time we were on here uh crypto basically in terms of altcoins and like bitcoin itself were up like two times our students are up like two to five times on their capital right now. And like right now uh, it's full on meme coin season again, which is hilarious. <laughs> do you think, you, do you think the USD US dollar is getting bumped right now? Do you think there's going to, is that, are we going to switch out? The, they're, that, they're, I, I guess I think it was Kiyosaki was saying he was worried about a fed coin. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not wrong. I mean, he's Charlie, Charlie yeah. Mm -hmm. 
because Charlie Charlie's been one of the guys like really talking about this for a long time now, especially about like you know all these central bank digital currencies coming out. But I don't know if you want to let them know kind of what's going on with that because that stuff's coming out now. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. They've been having this in place since basically 2019, right? And um, it's not going to be in full effect probably until somewhere between 2025 to 2029. But essentially what they're doing is, yeah, they're, you know, the di dollar is already digital, um, but they're just converting it, you know, into a different form that th that is traceable um, and that they can, you know, turn on and off um, with a button basically. So it's a little dystopian 1984, but uh, if you look at, you know, the people who are, you know, pro modern monetary theory, like Elizabeth Warren and these types, um, they essentially are like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Like, Let's, um, you know, have Big Brother come into your money as well, um, even more so than it has been in the past versus uh, Republicans like Tom Emmer um, in Congress and everything. Those guys have been very adamant about, excuse me, very adamant about, um, you know, retaining privacy of money. Um, whereas like in Europe right now, um, they're starting to implement uh, via uh, the IMF, they're going to start implementing uh, a digital euro prototype, right, mm -hmm. from October of this year. Um, and yeah, they're going to start playing around with this. China has been doing it ever since 2019. And so China was essentially the first domino to fall. And then these other economies um, basically follow. So China, you know, they can be, what do you call it? Um, telling you guys that, hey, we're going to follow your cash and nobody says a thing. But in America, right, you have to do it a little bit more stealthily. So there's a push pull going on in the government right now. And that's going to, um, you know, bring a lot of heat to uh, cryptocurrency in terms of regulation over the next few years. But that's actually a, an opportunity that we're seeing because as these uh, as these people are seeing the bank runs happen, right, they're not due to cryptocurrency. The government's already admitted uh, that for Silicon Valley Bank and others. But um, essentially, when these banks are kind of giving the each other money under the table, right, people are giving, losing a lot more trust with not only the government, not only the U.S. dollar, not only, you know, these banks, but, you know, all financial institutions. And so there's been just even just in the last three months, there's been a flight a little bit more to Bitcoin in particular, because that's the one that is uh, pretty well above regulation right now. Right. Definitely. Wow. Yeah. So that's going to lead more people into crypto over the next five years, mm -hmm. essentially, because one of the things that we'll see right is well the first step to that is fed now which is coming out in july yep. and then um they're going to take a bunch of other steps but eventually right they're going to say hey do you want your stimmy check right now right in the next couple of days all you need to do is download this app and take our you know central bank digital currency or do you want that um you know next month in the mail on a paper check right most people are going to mm -hmm. take that and it's the trojan horse basically for the fed dollar but it's kind of like um, when email first came out right in the mid nineties, nobody was using it. Then by 1998, everybody had five accounts. It'll be the same thing, right? People will now all of a sudden within like a year or two, whenever that comes out, will understand how to use cryptocurrency because it'll be based on the same blockchain. Mm -hmm. So um, let me uh, also uh, throw this one out there, guys, is uh, next month, uh, you and I, Miguel, and I guess, Charlie, you're coming too. We're we'll be in Miami and we'll be out there for the Bitcoin conference uh, the, the the big the bitcoin uh let's see the, uh, bitcoin's version of what uh burning man will be <laughs> so we're gonna be out there uh i will be out there from the 15th to the 21st and i believe you guys will be too where are we going what are we gonna do we're well it's basically a three-day conference and stuff so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mingle around the the, the trolls and the uh i guess the discord mods and stuff and see what how the other side lives <laughs> for uh -huh. a bit uh, from there, we're going to have some Pulse Chain meetups and stuff, or, or Hex meetups and stuff. From there, and uh, we've been invited to a bunch of after parties and stuff like that as well. So there's mm -hmm. there's, ba there's basically like two sets of friends we're going to be hanging out with and stuff throughout the throughout the trip out there, and it's going to be pretty cool. We're, we're probably we're going to meet up a lot of people, so um, I mean, be ready be ready and stuff. I think Gary might come with us too, a uh, funny gym as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, now, um, can you guys give me the the quick pitch? I got to kind of got to get back to Crowder here, but like, uh, right. do you guys give me the give me the pitch? What's what's going on with you guys for for Cultivate Crypto? We're in, we're in Q two right now. What's the what's the course about? So yeah, so basically, what the course is about this time around is um, we're pretty much heading up for the next couple of months in crypto space, and then we are going to have a 
pretty uh, pretty nice crash. Uh, we're going to get about a 40% to 50% correction in the crypto market in the, the next two to three months. And we're just setting up and helping our students to make sure that they take profits during that time. Um, the Fed, the uh, Jerome Powell got fucking uh, prank called. Uh, basically, he got, tri- he got tr- he basically got tricked by some guys thinking that he's like the head of uh, Ukraine, and he pretty much spilled the beans. They're like, "Oh yeah, man, we're gonna increase the interest rates two more times on the money." There you go. And so that means basically um, by June, July, um, equities are probably gonna take a little dip, and the same thing with the crypto market. So. Um, just make sure setting up guys to make sure to take profits and then from there rebuy back at the bottom there and kind of off to the races, basically. Uh, real estate's still going to be kind of weak and stuff until next year, but mm-hmm. um, everything should be picking. Hopefully everything should be picking up because they're, they're going to really juice this market up for the election cycle. And um, once either it doesn't matter if Trump or Biden wins afterwards, the economy is going to be pretty wrecked for 25, I believe. And um you know, it's it's more of like a middle to late 25 when we start getting some like problems again. And this is probably when we're getting the stimulus checks again um, to try to rebalance things out and stuff. And they're going to be money printing a lot to try to keep this thing from imploding, basically. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's pretty that, that's pretty much the big thing there, as well as we teach people how to, like, control their cryptos. And as well as, you know, I'm not saying we're not saying you should do this, but, you know, if they don't know about it, they don't know about it. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. that's, what, that's one of the most important things, especially in the space and stuff, is you control your money. So it's it's money under your control and stuff. And then it versus if it was in the bank, anyone could seize it, basically. And that's the thing. Yeah. So uh, the course starts when? May May 6th. And it will end somewhere between, you know, the, I think what the 23rd to 24th of uh, of uh, May, basically. So it's about three weeks, three weeks long, as well as um, there could be a launch of something called Pulse Chain during the middle of it. So we'll end up having, if that does launch, we pause the course, teach everyone yeah. about that stuff, and then go, and then basically re- go from there, basically. So um, please, please don't tease me. Like, don't, don't, don't give me hope. Please don't give me hope. <laughs> don't you give me hope. Don't you make me hopeful. <laughs> I know we've been talking about uh, Pulse Chain since like October, I think. <laughs> it's like, when is it going to come? No, actually, I think we were talking about Pulse Chain when Richard Hart was on this show, as a matter of fact. Like, is he going to announce on Rollo's show? I'm like, God, I hope not. <laughs> but yeah. Does, you think that that's a possibility coming up pretty soon? Yeah. It's- it's, it's either going to happen in the next a week or two or I mean, personally, I really I really don't believe it's going to happen until like August or September, mm-hmm. personally, because I, th- I think the better time to launch it is just when we get the next market crash from uh, from the Fed pausing, mm-hmm. then launch it. That way, there's no there's like there's no headwind. We're, we're just like it's it's nothing but net from there. Right. Because yeah. you want you want to launch it when like the prices are low and then as the prices are going up, it just it, it makes it easier for your coin to pump basically. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. Well, if you guys want to get involved in this, if you want to uh, take the it's Q2 course, we do, I do this every quarter with you guys. Um, uh, as everybody knows, Miguel's my partner here as far as uh, working with uh, Access Vegas, and, and he's actually the one who convinced me to do it in Vegas in the first place. So um, this is uh, this I'm Miguel is my crypto analyst as it is anyways. So um, and he helps me out with a lot of the stuff that I do. All of my crypto holdings are really kind of like as a result of like your advice and like sort of helping me position things and put push things around so uh i just wanted to give you guys a, a bit of a plug here just so you guys come in and, and let us let us all know about the course so okay. let, let me let me just say one thing as well because i see some guys in the chat like oh no here we go about crypto again right here we go my crew yeah <laughs> right no no but but the reason we we, I, we we bring it up is because it's heading that way anyway there's not like literally mm-hmm. 134 freaking governments are launching a fucking digital currency in the next two years 134 countries they're basically going to force you one way or another to get in so it's better in to get in before the rest of the flock gets in mm-hmm. basically they're, they're going to they're going to force all the whatever you want to call them the plebs the blue pill men or whatever anyone anyone who's not red pill they're going to force everyone in one way or another within the next two to three years so it's better to be in first because at least at that point if even if you think it's a ponzi you're better off making money you're, you're, you're going to make money off of all the all the dumb dumbs getting in late that's mm-hmm. what, that's what it is and stuff. So it's better to learn about it. Now. I mean, as Red Pill man, we have to be proactive and stuff. We have to be, you know, we we have to see where the, where the where the trends are going. If we're seeing that, I mean, they're forcing all the dum dums into the space, and we have to like front run everybody else on top of that to put ourselves into a better position and stuff. And especially for a lot of you guys who want to start a family or or do whatever you want to live the Playboy lifestyle, you can't do without money. And that's exactly. And that's- 
It's part of the money muscles game trifecta. <laughs> and money you control, not money the government controls. Exactly. Right. Right. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for thanks for dropping in, um, uh, Miguel. I will I will talk to you right after the show because yeah. we need to discuss another project that I can't re- oh, I don't right. even want to reveal it yet because I uh, it's it, it's too good. I, I want to, but we have, we have a we got another project that Miguel and I are working on as well, and it has nothing to do with crypto. <laughs> but uh, Miguel, thanks for thanks for joining me today, yeah, and you. and Charlie, and I will see you guys in Miami uh, if not sooner, um, probably. Even uh, uh, let's see, gosh, what is uh, May 11th is the next Access Vegas. So I'll certainly yep. see you by then. Okay. So, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining today. I will see you later. Okay. Cool. All right. So there you go. Sorry about that, guys. I, had to, I just had to. I got throw that out. I got to pay the bills, man. Because I think uh, I think a lot of people who follow me, like I'm, I am in a lot of different like circles. I'm I'm in financial circles. I'm in the the Kiyosaki Gammon uh, slash what uh, Ken McElroy, Jason Hartman's kind of circle that collective circle uh i run in some uh like mike mike sartain's people so it's it's we got a lot of crossover going on but before we get started i, I gotta i want to sort of pick up where we left off here in just a minute um but before we do i have this video that i think we could probably pick up with and where to go there we go um, this video is, I'm going to, I'm just going to show this to you really quickly. This is the, this is a two parter here. Okay. This is the first part of the Crowder video, the ring, the ring video. So let's go and have a look at this. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. Okay. Now what I want you guys to pay attention to is down at the bottom right hand corner, there is the, the date and the time codes in this. And I don't, I, I don't know if anybody else has, has anybody else like figured this out, but I was looking at this and whenever I'm looking at video, particularly when it's something that's supposed to be agitating type video, I have to watch this and I have to kind of think, okay, uh, what's the jump cuts here? What do they want me to think when I watch this video? So look at the time codes here. No, no, you just, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuse. And control. You were not taking the car because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I would have to Steaks, do. wood pellets, my grill. I know it's not a reasonable request, but I'll go do it. First jump cut right there. Did you see that? Okay, let's. I'm going to back this up just a touch. It's at the. Uh, let's see. It's. I wrote it down. It's at the 35:22 mark, and then it jumps to 36:03. That's a. That's actually a kind of a big jump. So let's look at that really quick. I'm going to back it up just a touch. There. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect me? Yeah. Okay, so that was the jump. Well, let me look. I'll back it here just a little bit. I don't think I caught it. But I'll go do it. There, right there, that's the jump right there. So we already know that this video has been edited. We already know that that's the clip right there. What happened between thirty five twenty two and thirty six oh three? Are they just editing it for time? Oh, there's nothing. It was just silence. It was just birds tweeting in the background. I don't think so. And even if it was, that is undisputable proof that this video has been edited. Why did they edit it? What was edited out of it? What happened before this? What came after this? I'll let, I'll let you hear the rest of this here. All right. So this is the car side of all of this. I want to throw this one out there because what happens in all of that, I mean, he lives in a very nice house. I mean, he's got what? He's got a freaking putting green over there. This, by all, by all, you know, sensibilities here. This looks like he's got a pretty, a pretty lavish lifestyle, a good lifestyle, right? This is in 2021. This is June 6th, or excuse me, June was it? June 21st. When was? Then I will ask them to pick me up. Well, let me look. Would you like me to ask? Uh, June. Give an Uber. June 26th. There. Okay, Stephen, I can't. Okay, so let me let me back up a little bit. So June 26th, 2021. Now remember this. This is also just post COVID, or it's like it's still like, we're still wearing masks at this point. So is he feeling kind of stir crazy? Did they have to spend probably most of uh, let's see 2020 together and like you know uh, have to sort of be in lockdown together? Are they, is this marriage a casualty 
of the of the lockdowns. That could be it could because remember everybody would you know it's funny we we want to apply that to like just the average people, but how come that doesn't apply to like Stephen Crowder? How come that doesn't apply to her? I think it does. I think I might that might play a factor here, but that being what it is. One of people, one of the things, uh, the very first thing on my agenda here right, is why are people saying, well, oh, he's he's got all oh, he's got more money than God. Look at where he lives. Why do they only have one car? Do you think that he just has one fucking car? Or could it possibly be in the realm of possibility that maybe the car's at the shop, man? Maybe the other car's gone. Maybe they're down to one car while they're waiting for for Tito to finish working on the Ferrari or whatever it is. What? Why does that like not even like a consideration? So when I'm seeing people who are criticizing him, especially Candace fucking Owens talking about, oh, he's a monster. He won't let her have her own car. Maybe it's at the, the shop, man. Maybe they don't like maybe maybe this got three cars and two of them are in the shop and they only are down to one. Who knows? But the presumption is that he's a controlling, monstrous, tyrannous, you know, like demon that like keeps her in bondage and barefoot and pregnant and she can't go anywhere, or do anything because they've only got one car, rich ass Stephen Crowd. And why does that not like occur? Why does that not? Why is that not the first thing that people presume? Because the first thing people presume is that he's being abusive to a pregnant woman. And that is like, oh, my Lord. That's why he didn't want this to come out. That's why this was extortion on the part of Daily Wire and Candace Owens, or at least we're supposed. At least that's what he was you know, was alluding to, as far back as January, maybe I guess into March too, right? Certainly within the last few weeks, when he was when he made the announcement that he was going through a divorce, it's kind of rough for a guy like. Uh, for uh, Stephen Crowder to actually admit sort of defeat when it comes to his marriage, because he was very vocal about having uh, having an evangelical. We waited until we were married before we had sex kind of relationship. Very self-righteous, very not unlike Ben Shapiro in those videos where he talks about how he met his wife, which I've shown on this show, like like two or three shows back. Oh, yeah, I just met her and just things clicked and I just followed her and fought like he like if he was not Ben Shapiro doing what he did to sort of like, you know, just badger this woman until she says, OK, you wore me down. I guess I'll marry you. You know, if it had not been Ben Shapiro, he would have been in jail. That's creeper stuff like to like get the hint, pal. Get the hint. I'm not into you. But it's Ben Shapiro. He's got money. He's got at least some sort of like status as a result of, you know, uh, being in the business for a while. But had an average guy done what Ben Shapiro did with his wife, he probably would have got he probably would have had a restraining order put against him. We don't we don't consider that shit. We think it's romantic oh, or or, or we, it becomes part of that the positivity hustle that I see a lot of these guys who would love to grift off of this shit. Oh, yeah. Well, a good woman is this or the Steve Harvey thing. Well, you need to man up and, be, you know, it doesn't matter what they bring to the table. She's got a uterus. That's all that matters. Really? So she's just basically an incubus. She's just an oven for your babies. And that's why we should like do like bow down and put her on a pedestal. Harvey, Steve Harvey. Is that is that the message I'm getting from you, Steve? Because it sure sounds like that. And when we make presumptions about like, oh, Stephen Crowder must be a monster for not allowing her to leave the house. They've only got one car. My God, he must be because he's got a lot of money. So if they only have one car, then that must be a controlling like mechanism. It must be his his tactics and his methodology is to to keep the woman like barefoot and pregnant and enslaved. Like She's got like some like ball and chain she's got to wear. And now, now he's cutting her loose a little bit. Like That's the presumption. That's what we're supposed to think about the guy. And unfortunately, we're seeing this a lot. Now, is he off the hook? No, he's most definitely not off the hook because he sounds like a little bitch here. But also, remember, the opposite side of this, there's two sides to this. There's the Crowder side, and then there's the Candace Owens side. There's the Tradcon side, and then there's sort of like the, the Red Pill side. And I'll say the Red Pill side of this, he looks like he's has no frame whatsoever and probably doesn't because these are guys who become famous or start getting status when they had none. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll harp on that in a minute here. I just want uh, to point out the fact that the, the car thing is like a big nothing burger. 
It's not like it's not some control tactic. It's oh, I've and you know, I'll tell you what's great. It's like just based on this one little incident that happened in less than like 10 seconds on the um, in between the jump cuts, right? Less than 10 seconds. Maybe here's the thing. Maybe the, the jump cut, what we're missing there is the fact that the car is in the fucking shop. Maybe that's what we're, we're, we're missing. And they chopped that out of there to make it seem like he's this controlling son of a bitch. Maybe. Is that within the realm of possibility? I would say it certainly is. A control freak usually would have stood up and used physical presence uh, and raising voice, using menacing voice to control her. She does not seem to be bothered by what he says. Yeah, I would. I would definitely say that that's a that's that's a possibility. However, um, m like when when beta males want to when beta males get possessive and when beta males kind of get over the top with it, it sounds more whiny. It's almost like gamma male. Like when you have um. When you have a guy who has gone from zero to hero, it's like too much, too young, too fast. You've heard me talk about that before. When a guy goes from like zero to hero and suddenly and he's he's married or he's got, you know, he's especially if he's like sort of his brand is based on his ideological convictions. He better be solid in those like because that's part of his brand. If your brand is we waited until we got married, we waited to have sex and we got married. We had this, we, you know, we believe in God and country and children and, and, a, and a, you know, a, a good conventional gender role marriage. If that's your thing, then you better believe <laughs> Then when that thing is no longer a thing, you're going to take a hit. You're going to take a, a, a your market share is going to decline as a result of that. Now, can you rebound from that? Sure, you can. Absolutely. But when it's happening, you're not thinking that. And I think that rather than getting like sort of physically imposing or anything, because like Crowder's not going to get imposing like that. Now, he's not he's not a bad looking dude. I mean, you could tell he kind of lifts when I see him like on the last videos. He definitely has got he's got some guns. You know, he's I'm, guns is in these guns. OK, he definitely has some some bicep going there. So he probably does go to the gym. In fact, he mentions this in the in the video that I can't go to the gym. Well, OK. Stop being a whiny bitch. Get on your fucking bicycle or have, you know, get an Uber or something like that. Or why do you only have one car? Even if one is in the shop, why do you have one car? Why don't you have three cars? I mean, you got more money than, than you know what to do with, clearly. I mean, you got, <laughs> is he in the Midwest? Because it, it, it said Central Daylight Time and it said CDT on the ring thing here. But so anyways, I want to make sure that we kind of cover all our bases and uh, un understand that there's more possibilities to what's going on here other than the narrative of he's this controlling, domineering, possessive, overly possessive freak. Feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. Okay, that right there. Okay, guys. <sighs> When you like, when you raise your voice like that, when either, dude, first off, I'm going to, I'm going to hit on Crowder now. Okay. So just, just for, we're going to play a devil's advocate here. We're going to play both sides of this. Okay. Cause I have to, you sound like a whiny bitch. Sorry, but that's, that's how it is. You sound like a whiny bitch. You want to dry up a pussy? You say you 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 raise your voice and you get that vo It's kind of like male vocal fry. <laughs> you come you come up with male vocal fry like that, if, and especially if that is what defines your dominant personality character characteristics. Remember when people say like, "Rollo, how come vulnerability doesn't work with women?" It does, but it only works if your predominant character is alpha and you're more reserved with your emotions. This guy is speaking like chick speak here. This is probably like, I, I'm, I don't know for sure, but from what I can hear in all of this is that she is, she, she, she knows the buttons to push. She knows what to, she knows what to do and what not to. She's probably sick of him. This is a couple that is sick of each other. Most likely like he probably wants to get after her with her. He got to put two, put twins in her for crying out loud but probably as the result of being in lockdown for 2020 and now she's pregnant, she's eight months pregnant in this. So let's just, let's do the math. Shall we? 
So she's eight months pregnant and it is June 26th. Um, well, that would mean, or yeah, so June is what, six months? So, so you can go back to January, go back. A couple, so probably around November, October somewhere. That's when he knocked her up. So that would have been towards the end. You certainly after, certainly like almost directly after the, the election. <laughs> um, so we're looking at maybe the, the November, December is when she is pregnant. She was, she's officially pregnant. She's not even one trimester in. So most likely the kids are a result of being sort of, uh, they're lockdown kids. Those twins are lockdown babies. <laughs> if there is such a thing, they're locked. I, you know, how they say there's the baby boom. We're going to have like this wave of children. I maybe it's not a baby boom, but there's going to be a wave of children. That'll be like the lockdown kids that were created during the 2020 lockdown. There they are. He got twins. He got, he got, he got double, double bonus, right? First presumption is male anger. There's uh yes, there is an article about that. Yes. As a matter of fact, it, and I wrote it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Baker. Uh, and once a male is angry, uh, the female is always a victim. The female is always a victim to begin with. I am, that's a really good point, though. Let me let me just uh, let me riff on that just a second. I have two articles on the rational male. Uh, I don't think I use them in any book, though. Um, there's what's called the uh, the male anger bias, and the male anger bias is actually from evolutionary psychology. So in our ancestral past, it made sense if children and women just presumed that men were angry. So if, if daddy was silent and he's had his eyebrows are furrowed, it's a good, I mean, even if you're just thinking, you're playing chess and you're like, <laughs> there's a presumption. Like what the, one of the things I think that why women find uh, not a scowl so much, but like uh, they, like an expressionless male face is more attractive than a smiling face. Um, there used to be what was called like cuck face or like new male face. Like, <sighs> like that, that smile is like that. It's that, that primate fear grimace, you know? <laughs> and so people were like, I remember Royce, used to make fun of this. Um, some other people in the mass fear, in the early days of the mass fear would call it the, the new male grin or the new male fear, as a, the chimpanzee fear grimace. Like when a chimps like smile like that, it's the, they're, they're frightened. Like they got it. They're, they're, they're being like bullied by an alpha male kind of thing. Uh, and it was so prevalent in like selfies back there of guys like they would get like they get a new toy, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so there was this it was the the new male fear grim of the chimpanzee fear grimace or or forget what it was. Cuck face, I guess is what they call it. <laughs> but um, but that facial expression, um, I remember having those discussions back then. And then there was a um there was a discussion going on as to whether it was a good thing for men to smile or if it was better for men not to smile when they were well, sort of engaging or, or, or conversing with women. Now I'm kind of like 50, 50 on that, but I do understand the logic behind men not smiling because of the male anger bias. So when women, you know, want a guy who has a capacity for violence or has a capacity to be hostile in, you know, measured doses at the very least. Uh, that is not something where you're like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. You know, I mean, unless you're like psychotic, unless it's like American psycho. Um, but uh, the, the idea is, is thus, is that like women find faces like expressionless male faces or like I'm trying to, <laughs> for instance, Oh, I know what it is. Uh, it's the, uh, it's the uh, Bruce Willis smirk where you just, yeah, that one little little smirk, like you know, you you're in on a joke or something like that. But uh, and, and I know um, douche nozzle uh, Alex from Dating Psych has been talking about recently about whether it's better to smile or it's not better to smile. Uh, you, there's actually empirical proof that shows that women find a unsmiling face on a man more attractive, and I think it kind of goes back to the 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 um, looking for the dangerous guy, chicks dig jerks, right? And that part of being a jerk is you don't smile all that much. Um, and it's not because you're expressionless and you're emotionless. It's just that's just the way men are built. And so the male anger bias is when in our ancestral past, it has been better for women to err on the side that this guy is pissed off than not to. Because if they make the mistake and say, ah, he's not really pissed off. I know he's like in, in the in the throes of rage, but that's OK. Let's just, you know, let's just you know pander to daddy because he's he's not really all that. He's just a big softy. 
And then they end up getting beat down or they end up getting killed by like an invading tribe or daddy himself or whatever else. Like the, the idea that a guy is always angry is an inherent part of women's evolutionary firmware. So it's what we call the male anger bias. So there's always this presumption that men on the part of women and children, too, by the way, that um, that men are always angry. Or if they're showing like something that looks like any kind of like visual cues, like sub communications that the guy might be pissed off, that, that it's better to err on the side. OK, daddy's pissed. Stay away. Give him a wide berth. Stay away from him. We don't want to when he explodes, we don't want to be anywhere in the blast area or the blast zone. <laughs> and by the way, that is the. Um, the basis of the Duluth model of feminism. So Duluth, Duluth model, Duluth, Iowa. Yeah. Duluth. Well, anyways, the Duluth model of feminism is the basis for our, our laws really when it comes to domestic violence, the man is always the aggressor. The man is always bigger. He's always more physical. He has testosterone. He has more of a capacity for violence. When women kill, they usually use a gun. They usually use some sort of some. They're usually more successful. If a woman is resolved to kill somebody, she'll fuck. She'll do it. So just it'll be it'll be one and done. Guys are will beat the hell out of each other. And then it, whether they do or they don't. But when women kill, it's usually it's much more efficient for men. It's it could be so, it could be abusive. And so the Duluth model of feminism is uh, erroneously so based on the assumption of the male anger bias so when there's a domestic issue they remove the man from the home it's also the basis for why women get uh, custody sole custody or like at least joint custody uh, primary custody uh 86 percent of time in in child custody loss men get it what 14 percent 16 percent somewhere in there i, I believe it's 86 percent is the the latest number that i i remember seeing 86% of child custody goes to is awarded to women, whether that's sole custody or that's primary custody. And again, based on the idea that daddy might not be the best person for to be raising children. And the only thing that sort of offsets that is if mommy is a criminal or mommy is a drug act. And then maybe then they get joint custody. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So the, the anger bias is definitely in the presumption that, that um, that Steven Crowder is the aggressor in this. We don't know what led up to this. Guys who have been in this position right here where they're at their wits fucking end, they know it just doesn't, doesn't happen like that. It is a process where it's like it's building over. She's a nagging. It's passive aggressive behavior. It's, this con it's like a sexless marriage and everything else. It's like excuse after excuse or it's 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 complaint after complaint after complaint. There's zero appreciation. And he even mentions this in a few few cases here. Now, what's going to happen? And I'm just going to preempt here. What's going to happen is people are going to say this is the manosphere. This is why this happened. I'm already seeing it. I'm seeing it from Brittany Venti, who looks like she's autistic to begin, functionally autistic to begin with. But I'm seeing this from like Destiny and not some like I don't want to harp on Destiny because he actually had a good take on this. Sorry, Destiny. You actually I, I kind of agree with you on some of this. Um, but like there's a lot of people who right now want to say in on Twitter and other places that the behavior that you're seeing from Steven Crowder is because he's been listening to guys like me or he's been listening to guys like Fresh and Fit, or he's been listening to guys like An uh, Andrew Tate, that the Tate ideology, the Tate like viral meme, um, you know, reprogramming has got into his brain. And that's why he's he's saying what he's saying. And he's not deferring to her authority. He's not deferring to like, oh, I'm about to whatever you say. It's probably that is the result. Like he's at the point, he's at his wit's end right now. He sounds to me like guys I know who either want counseling from me or I see them, um, I see them in videos from, from, you know, gosh, whatever, uh, TikTok, you know, short form videos where the guy is just getting down on it. He's, he's pedestalizing the woman. After a while, that pedestalization becomes something of a, of a, I don't know, an enslavement for that guy, like a mental psychological enslavement for that guy. It's like codependency. He can't get away from her because he's married to her and God forbid he should ever get divorced from her. And now remember, this is pre-divorce. So, cause this is 2021. So all this is pre-divorce and his brand is based on having the perfect little marriage, having the perfect little blonde girlfriend who became his wife. They went to church together. They waited for it for marriage. They got married. We got married early by today's standards. They got married very early, 24 years old. I don't know. I think she might've been 22. That's very early for now. 
And remember, they got married in 2012. I'm going to show you. In fact, he was very self-righteous about this. I'm going to read you an article where he's getting very self-righteous about this. But I do agree with you, Baker. I, it is definitely the male uh, anger bias. Uh, he, uh, What he just said is very important. If you sound whiny, then you're going to do something. You're doing something wrong. Yes. The very fact that he, he's even having this conversation is he's already doing something wrong. He's already out of frame. Like, how can I say this? I'll try to put this in like without like being so inflammatory that people are going to. Here's the part where you're going to clip this out of context and turn me into an asshole. But when your silence says it speaks more volume, when your silence inspires more fear or more urgency or more concern, when your silence inspires more concern than your words, that's when you know you're getting towards more towards alpha. Like, why is he talking? Why doesn't he say anything? Oh, when there's that like wonderment about what's going on with that, that when that inspires more concern, then you know you're like when your silence is is is, is deafening, I guess. And that's nowhere near where he is right now. Most guys will raise their voice and they'll get that whiny kind of ah, that. You're done. You're over. It's over. It's already over. <laughs> uh, I was talking about how we need to open up the schools. She mentioned how one aspect of school that isn't talked about, it's child care function, which basically came uh, down to open up the schools. Okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever. Is that something Hillary was talking about or Candace was talking about? Um, did he just say uh, ether or Ethereum? I don't know. I don't think so. Um, regarding the whole car conversation between Stephen and his wife, if we have a clue, they, uh, they had... More than one car. Steven release release a change of uh, change my mind where he bought a Tesla in September of 2020. So does that mean they have more than one car? Seems like it may maybe it is. He has a Tesla as of 2020 of all two. It's September of 2020, uh, which would have been like probably two months before he knocked her up. Like, yeah, I'll put that in your pipe and smoke it. Paul Butala Butaya. At a time, what should he try? If she checked out already, there was probably nothing he could have said or done. Exactly, exactly. That's why I said at some points you just gotta you gotta know when to shut up and just do what you're gonna do. That's okay. We'll, we'll come to this. She felt nothing towards him. It's not the car, of course not. This is a, it, it. Also, could be a buildup of passive aggressive behavior not on his part and hers too. I'm not gonna say that they're both clean in any of this. But you get into that habit, like I, I see old married couples do this. And it's, you know, it's one thing when you're 24 to 35 or however old they are right now. It's another thing when you get to be like 65 and you're still doing this shit for you, you've been, and you, that you've been doing for like almost 40 some odd years. Dude, you're not going to make it. <laughs> and, and you wonder, like, see, guys wonder when I talk about like how, um, like, Robert Kiyosaki is an exception to this rule. Let's just want to put that out there. But when guys get to be about like late sixties, early seventies, and they come across the red pill and they listen to my stuff or they see Ryan or they see whatever, you know, and they look back on their lives and they go, damn, I wouldn't have made that decision had I known this stuff then, or my, maybe even your success is based on something that you had to sort of work through because you had sort of these blue pill misgivings about how women are, how the world works. And it's really, I, th I think the older you get, the harder it is to sort of like accept and swallow the red pill, which is why I'm very impressed with Robert Kiyosaki, by the way. Um, but when you get to the point where you're kind of reminiscing and looking back on your life and, and looking at the decisions that you made, and then you realize that those decisions were, um, were the uh, product of what you thought was for re what you thought was true back then and you didn't realize it was just blue pill conditioning that can be that's really tough most guys go into denial so, uh what should he try okay um nothing this is like you guys have heard me say this a thousand times demonstrate do not explicate and yes i pulled that from 48 laws of power demonstrate do not explicate what that means is do don't talk about it. Don't give ultimatums. Don't go, well, hey, you let me tell you something. Let me tell you about what wifely duties are. If she's not, if she hasn't figured that out in 10 years of marriage, which is well, nine years of marriage at this time, they got married in 2012. So they would have been nine years in at this point. And with two kids, with two kids on the way, if she hasn't figured that out, you're you're already, it's already over. You're already done. 
Like the, you, you are absolutely 100% Paul. This should not have, the conversation should never have happened because you have, should have changed your behavior or you should have a uh, course corrected long before this took place. And I could tell just by the, the words he's using and the attitude he has and the, 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 just the atmosphere between the two of them, this, this con, by the way, this conversation has happened before. I can tell you that with a, like, I'm 98% sure that like something very similar to this has happened before because he's using terminology that he presumes she's familiar with. Keep in mind, she sent this. It skips. Yeah, I, did. I already saw it. Dude, I just, what did I just say, dude? I just said this. This video doesn't show what she said to set him off. No, it doesn't. It also doesn't have, show what happened before or what happened after. I've got the second part of this as well. And there is another jump cut in that. I just said that, dude. Um, what else I got here? Hmm. Yo, Rolo, you should make that a sound drop. <laughs> Either. Okay, thanks. Somebody can make a sound drop. I can't make, I'm only one, I'm only one man. So we can have a place to leave our kids while we live our best lives. Our entire society is geared towards enabling women. Yeah, it is. That's the problem that I have with most of this is that there's the presumption that he should be just like on his hands and knees begging her, like pleading with her. I, I find it very interesting when I hear uh, here's your wife school moment. Ladies, if you're in the, if you're in the chat, here's wife school. Okay. I find it very interesting that the same women who will say, we need men to step up and be leaders. If he'd have stepped up and been the leader in all of this, you would have called him a monster. You would have called him an asshole. No, you're not going to go take that car. I'm going to go do this. I'll go take care of this myself. You see, you're the, you're the pregnant eight months pregnant one. I'll go to the store. I'll go do this. I'll go take care of this. That conversation and that back and forth, that passive aggressive fight that they're having right there has nothing to do with a car. It has nothing to do. It has everything to do with everything that's built up to the point where they're at they're, where they're at at that moment. It's not, not one thing that set them off. It's like a whole series of events, probably from the time they got married. Uh, let's see. Uh, isn't male face expression universally unattractive? Really? Mm, sometimes it just depends. Depends. Uh, like concentration in a man's face tends to be more attractive. I've seen the facials, the facial research that was done before women all got into so social psychology. <laughs> uh, even from a male perspective, you'd give more respect uh, to a stoic man than a clown. True. True. And I have a real problem with stoicism. I'll tell you that right now, just the way that we're taught, the way we do it now, the way we talk about it now. Cause I don't stoicism today is more like LARPing than really stoic, like real, real stoicism. I know that sounds like no true Scotsman, but it is true. I can assure you that. Uh, Rolo, sorry, my super chat. Uh, we're a three parter. Okay. I got to it. Thank you. I, now it's a four parter. Thanks. <laughs> uh, sorry. I, Okay, I get rolling and then you guys like go out. All right, uh, let me throw this back up and we can watch the rest. Yeah. I, I, Do you understand I, the difference between running like being set to the setting and you're going from the back from back? Student. Okay, so she's exasperated right here. The only way out of this is discipline and respect. Okay, does that mean he's got gonna spank her? Because I think a lot of people think that he's like talking about like disciplining her in some way. Like she's a child. And I don't necessarily like if you what's one, what's funny to me is like when you talk about like discipline, if you talk, for instance, if I'm referring like you're a gentleman, right? I'm referring to you as like you need more discipline, self-discipline. You need to to dis because you, you no one can respect you. Like if I if I present those two words and I'm, I'm telling a man this. It's, it's almost like I'm trying to, it's like motivational speech, right? I'm trying to help you out. If I say discipline and respect to a woman, it's abuse. She's a victim. She's the vulnerable, especially in, in her condition. When she's pregnant, she's more vulnerable with twins than she would be at any other time. He can't not come off looking like a monster. He cannot not look like he is the aggressor in all of this. Because she is in the most vulnerable position. Eight months pregnant with twins, she is in the most vulnerable position any woman has ever been in over the course of like 200,000 years. Vulnerable. You have, women are the vulnerable sex. That's why victimology always works for women. But if I say the words discipline and respect to a woman, that means something way, way different. You need discipline and you need respect. How dare you? If 
I tell a guy that you need more discipline and respect, it, it sounds like military. It sounds like something you hear from your sergeant. It's discipline and respect. It's the only way out of it. He already did pass. Good. Because you can't have any discipline and respect. Yeah. Can't have any discipline and respect, right? What what is like what's the discipline here? Because when when we when we start talking about discipline with women, we presume punishment is included in the discipline. Yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. You said then we're at an impact. Steven, no, we are at an impact. Okay. That right there is passive aggressive on Steven Crowder's part. This is a guy who hasn't had frame in quite some time. So this is a guy who's going to be talking about um, talking about discipline and respect. He's at an impasse. All the stuff that like the, the vernacular he's using, it's like, where are they coming? Like more people like really do they, do they talk like this unless they've been to like psychotherapy, unless they've been seeing like a counselor or something like that. Or maybe he's been reading, I don't know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Who knows? But this is, it almost feels like this is a, a script or this is not a script, but it's like a, they have come up with these words that they're using with each other that maybe they have picked up from, I don't know, maybe a count, it could be a Christian counselor for all I know. But you got, uh, what do they mean in impasse? Is that divorce term? No, it means, yeah, it is actually. It means we won't, we can't see eye to eye. An impasse, like when, when you're, when you're in a, a debate situation, you say, well, I guess we're at an impasse. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree. Because we're at an impasse, meaning we can't get past this point. Look up the dictionary definition of impasse. It means we can't go past this. We can't get, get, get around this. So I guess we're just going to have to give up. That's why he's saying give up. Well, I guess we're at an impasse. Well, I don't know what he's like. What I don't know the pretext to any of this. And I think if we did know, then... And maybe we have to take his word because it might that conversation might have happened inside the house and there's no ring video evidence of it. But we do know that there's some gaps in this. We do know that it has been edited. But when you talk about an impasse, it just it, it is a divorce term. And you will hear that from like marriage councils, marriage counselors, especially when they're trying to negotiate between the two. Um, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm just going to make a, a, I don't say a prognostication. I'm going to make a. a presumption here and i think that perhaps they have been through counseling of some sort before they had this conversation okay i love you but steven steven your abuse is sick okay now your abuse is sick there's a reason why this is in this video it's a re there there could be like how many discussions have they had on the patio here with the dog sitting right there, how much more is left of this? But the part we get is your abuse is sick. And now we presume that there's an abusive relationship because she wouldn't be, she wouldn't be, she's literally barefoot and pregnant saying this. <laughs> Look at her. Her belly sticking out. Those She's got bare feet right there and she's in the most vulnerable position she can be in. Again, he might be, they might have an abusive situation, but this is the message. This is the take home message that we're supposed to get from this entire thing. Watch it. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm going to let go. I'll get what you need to do with it. Got it? Okay, that's part one. That's the fucking let it go. Like, when you start using, like, <laughs> I'll tell you what's funny. Is I would never, like, I, I don't think it would ever occur to me to, like, to use the F word with my wife in a serious way. But I, dude, I, I drop the F bomb all the time. You know, to spice up things. Thank you. Sorry, very. You know, that, that's the habanero pepper. Remember, um, so I might use that. And if there was like a, a a ring video of me like talking to my wife and saying, "Oh fuck this!" Like if I put that out there, then suddenly I sound like an asshole. But you don't know what I was talking about. I could have been saying, you know, "Hey, fuck!" Uh, you know, I, I just bang my knee on the desk or something. <laughs> it wouldn't matter because you could take it out of context and just use it however you'd like to do it. So. All right. Uh, what did you say, Alberto? Uh, isn't it weird that a conservative couple, a traditional couple, uh, they had their first pregnancy eight years after they got married? Yeah. Is that their first pregnancy? Do they have other kids before that? I don't know. Maybe. It could also be this is that remember that crowd, like she does her own kind of thing and Crowder does his own kind of thing too. I think there might be a reason for that. And I'm going to explain to you why. Um, 
I got a friend of mine into the red pill, your book, uh, as he was struggling with his wife, but his inner beta made him sound like Crowder here. Yeah. Crowder has no frame, period. And he's not going to get it back. Uh, here he parades with uh, chest pumping sentences to make himself look alpha, but it always falls flat. Thank you. Thank you. You just actually got to one one section of what I had here. When your wife, actually, let me, let me, actually, let me, I got to backtrack. She's not even your wife. In the, one of my, my first iron rule of Tomasi, frame is everything, right? Frame is everything. The frame that you enter into that relationship with is the frame you will carry over into your marriage or carry over into the long term, assuming that's the way you go. Frame is everything. Now, people always lose their minds when the world starts talking about frame or they have done. I go go Google frame. Go go on YouTube after this show. Look up frame. Just type in frame into the search engine. There's a million guys who want to tell you what frame is. They know nothing about frame. Frame is a psychological term. I didn't create this. This is a psycho, excuse me, it's a socio psychological terminology. So it's not something I came up with. In the case of intersexual dynamics, though, frame is the world into which you're going to enter. So when you go and you work for your employer for eight hours that day or your supervisor, you're in the company's frame. You do what you're told. That's that you're going to, your, your focus, their their um, their priorities become your priorities. That, that's a good way to put it. In your family, whoever's the dominant personality in your family is, if it's mom, if it's dad or whatever, uh, they tend to be the ones who set the frame for the entire family dynamic at that point. So if dad is kind of like a blue pill beta and you have a domineering mother, she's setting the frame for the family. So that same dynamic also follows over into personal relationships. So it could be with your brother. It could be with your friends. It could, it could be in the military, right? When you're in the military and you're taking orders, you're there for you. You're in the military's frame for uh, whatever you're signed up for, for your, <laughs> you're there. You're in their frame. You uh, welcome to my world, right? That's why I say when, when you are, um, when you have a rock solid frame and you have a world into which women want to enter, don't lose that frame. Don't give up on that. Don't don't uh, don't convince that woman that it's fake. Don't convince like don't try to like self deprecate your frame. That's why it's uh, was it the ninth, yeah, the ninth rule, the ninth iron rule, which is never never self deprecate, right? Never uh, in in a serious way. The apologizing for a lack of game is not game. That goes back all the way to the first rule, first iron rule, which is frame is everything. Because when you establish this frame and then you self-deprecate after that, all you're doing is putting the, the seed, planting the seeds of doubt in that woman about your, like your legitimacy, your authenticity. Is he really like this? Well, I set this rock solid frame, but now I'm going to self-deprecate and, oh, she's my sun and my moon and my stars. And I just, oh, I'm just so lucky to have her, right? Or you start pedestalizing and now she's the one who's like directing the frame. Women want to submit to a worthy worthy man's direction and you have to have solid frame for that crowder has no frame. he probably had no concept of frame when he got married he probably had no idea it was probably oh we're gonna that you want to know why egalitarian relationships are such bullshit it's because of the concept of frame there's always a dom and there's always a sub in every human relationship and i don't care if it's a per if you're fucking that person i don't care if you're having a personal relationship in the sense of like you're going to be intimate and have sex with them there is always a dominant personality and a submissive personality in, in every relationship. And that could be something as simple as like the military or it could be your family, it could be your work situation. It could be like homosexuals. There's a dom and there's a sub. There's always some iteration of a dominant personality and a submissive personality. And I use submissive interchangeably, a deferential personality. There's a, there's a masculine and a feminine, and we usually associate the masculine with the dominant and the feminine with the deferential or the submissive, if you'd like. Ladies, here's your wife school. It's not the egalitarianism in, in human beings, especially when it comes to like intimate relationships, is an anomaly. We don't do it very well. And you show me an egalitarian marriage, and I will show you a woman who runs that marriage because the guy has no frame. Women cannot look up to a man who is her equal. 
And that's what she wants. She wants to submit to a worthy man's direction. And when she can't, she will feel insecure. And when she feels insecure, she has two choices. Abandon this loser or create that security myself. And unfortunately, most women are creating that security for themselves or they go through a divorce proceeding and they ensure that security and that long term security. I got a friend of mine into your Red Pill book. Okay, I got that. Okay, we already got to you. I've seen a few of these others come up. Uh, what do you got here? Someone in the chat said beta language. It is beta language, but it's more like, yeah, trained by the blue pill. So, um, what do we got here? Mm -mm -mm. Elena. Hi, Elena. Hi, Rollo. Hi. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'll be, I have to do this because Elena is kind of like the newest... Elena. Elena. Hi, Rolla. You think she loved this abuse? Mm. Relationship since she said, I love you. Wow. And then she mentioned abuse is sick. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe it's a love hate relationship. <laughs> it's a it's a Christian Grey relationship. Uh, so prior to July 2022, Ring Cloud Storage would only store video for 30 days. Really? That's very interesting. Thank you, Leon. What? A, what? A, I'm going to have to write this down. Everybody, Leon, go to the front of the class before deleting, unless you downloaded the video prior to the 30 days. <laughs> so, who downloaded the video, and with that, with what intention this was planned by her? Thank you. But you know what? See, basic deductive reasoning will save the day. Rolla, why are you so rational? Why are you, what's this reason stuff? Shouldn't we just lead with our heart? No, we should think about shit like this. Because if you don't, you get rolled. <laughs> I'm in Miami. You want me to come look at some retirement homes there for you? No, you can go fuck yourself, Aaron. And I know that's not Aaron because Aaron would have a different icon on there. <laughs> yes, let's go to the villages. Want to go to the villages? I'll go to the villages with you. I'll leave you there. Mm, and trust me, I know when Aaron Clary is fucking with me and that ain't fucking with me <laughs> because Aaron Clary is way more brutal than that. <laughs> Ban that guy, Sam Bata. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, that's take number one. And let me remove this and I'm going to bring in this is take number two. So we have to put this video file in here. Now I have some other stuff that I've got to get to too, because uh, there's a, a, a better breakdown for all of this, but let's go with this. Okay. It's part two. I love, I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And the fact is when I... Did you get that? I've never received love from you. Okay. Okay. I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's... The pro that's the big problem. Uh, I don't love you. That's the problem. I've never received love from you. This is a guy who's talking to his wife after eight years. And you've never, like, that's, uh, I'll, 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 I'll opine on I've that. I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need to do A, B, C, and D. Just be disciplined about it. You go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair. And it's disingenuous. Okay, what is he talking about there? Put on some gloves. Is that, like, what do you think, chat? What do you think he's talking about? Because I can guarantee you with 100% accuracy, you don't know what he's talking about. What he's talking about is not put on some boxing gloves or some figurative analogy or some metaphor. He said, in fact, he says it twice. Let me keep going here. Hillary, you're right. right in the Become someone. Okay, hold on. Before we do that, let's uh, let's look at the time code here. Day in and day out, worthy of a life worth no. Okay, that was a clip, right? There. That was a jump clip. It goes from thirty-eight oh seven to thirty-eight thir or thirty-eight fifteen. So let me back that one up. That was a jump clip, right there. That was a jump. Hang on. That was the jump right there. So we got to we got to back it up. Sorry, let me let me back this up so you can see what I'm talking about. I want to say it was probably about here. Watch the time code. The time code down there, there's a, a, a good time slot. It's a time warp, man. It's like Rocky War Picture Show. 3807 to 3815. Watch this. Worthy of 
a wife worth? No, not as a wife. I didn't right. say her that's the jump. That's the jump. So what's cut out between these words right here? Day in and day out, worthy of a wife worth? No, not as a wife. I didn't say Got it. See that? That's the you were expected to believe that this is a continuation of the conversation. Something happened here that is incriminating. And again, yes, you're right. She would have had to have saved this video for a very long time. Plenty, two years, all close to two years is plenty of time to chop out the parts that, that sound incriminating and in all this, especially if now that he's almost worth or he was going to be worth about $50 million to the network that Candace Owens is on that Hillary Crowder is besties with, or at least friends enough with that, that, that she does. She prays for her and she is willing to break these stories. What happened between, I'll do it one more time. What happened in this jump clip? A wife? Worth? No, not as a wife. I didn't say as a wife. Hillary, Hillary, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get text me what you need. Okay. We don't hear it. We don't know what's going on in this. This right here should be the smoking gun. When when Crowder said, when Crowder did his uh, his build up or when he was uh, he did his announcement before the weekend about how it's a uh, it's a it's a carved up ca carved up uh, uh, stitched together video or there's definitely video editing. There it is. That's it. I just showed you. And in fact, they're too stupid to understand to not crop out the time codes in this. They're too stupid. To and I don't know, like I don't know if maybe it's Daily Wire, whoever's doing the cuts on this, whoever's doing the video editing on this, bad job, F plus, F minus. If I'm like I'm, I'm sensitive to it, and there's other people that probably picked up on this as well. It has definitely been edited. He's not lying. He's not bullshitting you, and he's probably going to come back with something that's going to really be a punch in the a literal punch in the face. There's going to be something because he's like, you know what? You're going to take the gloves off, whatever. Then here we go. No, nope, it's not. Could it be gloves for COVID-19? No, it's not. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what it's about. It could be she refused to take protection for the pregnancy. No, it's not. But that's a good guess, though. I, I can't. I'm not going to run you up the flagpole. That's why Crowder talked about not going anywhere. No, it's not. Would you like me to tell you what it's about? Let me let, let's finish the video and then I'll get I'll, I'll tell you. I love you. I See how it sounds like if you look at the editing here, it sounds like she's the one that was trying to put all the energy and effort and, and, and love and, and commitment and everything into it. And he's being a dick. But yet we have we know it's been edited. It to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do those Are you committed enough to do those things? That. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you. I'm committed to that. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Walk the dog's front and gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dog's Did you get that? Catch that? That's a hint. That's your cue. Are you committed enough to get the medication? Got it? Because that's what the gloves are about. The medication is not Okay, he gets angrier and angrier. We can only take Hillary's or well, Hillary's, but uh, we can only take. By the way, all these uh, the uh, uh, texts that are thrown in here. This is all courtesy of the Daily Wire, by the way. Angry and angry, and by his own admission, screams, "I will fuck you up!" At his pregnant wife, Hillary, who then flees their flees their home. Does she look like she's fleeing in panic? We don't get any more after that. That's it. We're left to presume that whatever the fuck is on the screen is the God's on is the gospel truth. Now, later, somebody's I don't know. I haven't seen this, but somebody's saying that he admitted to saying that somebody can show me that 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 video. I, I'll, 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 I'll recant. The fact of the matter still is this is that we're still meant to presume that an edited video that this is what this is what he said when they went into the into the, the house after that. Remember. This is two years ago, two years ago. So let me pull this out here. Okay. So what's the gloves all about? Hmm. Glad you asked. Um, where is that one? 
That's not it. Hang on. I'm looking. This might be it. Um, I think it is because, wait, where to go? Okay. There is, uh, where did I put that? Sorry. I'm looking for the, oh, okay. Here it is. I got the, uh, this is from national world and I'm going to read the, actually, I'll just share this with you. Hang on. And I thought this was really interesting because I don't think people are really, really considering this. Well, you got to do a little bit of detective work. I get, I get it. People to TLDR generation doesn't have the patience to do their shit. Uh, where does the, um, the national something or other? Uh, let's see. Which one is it? Sorry, guys. Let me pull this out here. Okay, Stephen Crowder. Now, okay. Where'd it go? Is it this one? I think this might be it. Is this it here? Yeah, thank you. Okay, whatever. Which one is it? No, it's not that. Um, sorry, let me get the rest of them here. Sorry, I apologize for not having this already ready to go. Well, actually, I do have it ready to go. Um, no, not that one. I uh, think that's it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here we go. This is the, here's the, I don't want to say this is a smoking gun. It's not really a smoking gun. But this is an interesting thing here okay now okay uh crowder crowder is an american canadian youtuber you guys already know that from 2009 to 2012 crowder worked for fox news producing political videos on youtube appearing regularly on fox news and writing frequently for the fox news website okay he's also a stand-up comedian too in 2011 he served as the mc for the conservative political action conference okay so let's see those is bona fides uh let's see He's been demonetized twice. Here we go. He married his wife, Hillary Crowder, nay Cor Corzon, I don't, I guess maybe that's her maiden name, in August of 2012. After his wedding, Crowder published a piece, which I'll read to you later, about the benefits of practicing abstinence before marriage as a Christian couple. He wrote, as anyone who's read my abstinence column here on at Fox News opinion could guess, my wedding is something that I've looked forward to for quite some time. After having tied the knot at the end of August, I can now say beyond all shadow of a doubt that it was everything I'd hoped and prayed that it would be since childhood. OK, this is a guy who's bought into like the girls side of the narrative here. This is the gloves part. Hillary is an interior designer and former sales manager who studied political science at Calvin College in Michigan. In 2021, Crowder shared that Hillary suffers from Julian, Julian Barre, Barre syndrome. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, which the NHHS describes as a very rare and serious condition, which mainly affects the nerves in the feet, hands and limbs causing problems such as numbness, weakness, and pain. Is it possible that that's the reference to the gloves? Together, the couple shares twins, Magnus and Charlotte, who welcome, who they welcomed in August of 2021. Are they getting divorced? Yes, they are. The Tuesday, uh, the April 25th, Crowder posted a video uh, announcing that he has been going through a horrendous divorce since 2021 in the video. Uh, well, yeah, in the video, Crowder repeatedly referenced his issues with the Texas law, which is kind of stupid. Th that, this makes me think he's kind of gamma uh, with uh, allowing his wife to divorce him without his consent. Interesting. He said, I have been living with the proverbial boot on my neck for going on years now since 2021. This right here, I the whole thing about uh, uh, it's uh, divorce is allowable and legal in the state of Texas. Dude, it's allowable everywhere. But it's like it's shocking to him or it's in some way like surprising to him that the state of Texas would allow divorce. What? This is a guy who who is living in a different time zone. <laughs> and no, this has not been my choice. Then my then wife decided she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. She simply wanted out. And the law says that's how it works. Okay. 
So, which of course is no fault of wars, which is something we've been talking about on this show for God knows how long. Uh, so the rest of this is pretty much, you already know, we, we catch up here. What I wanted to talk about was the Julian Barre syndrome or Barr syndrome. So I'm going to uh, also, I happen to have, where we go. So I happen to have the NHS uh, article here that will let you know what the Julian Barr syndrome is. So where did that go? Is right there. There we go. Okay. So this is Julian Barr syndrome. Okay. Symptoms, causes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, Gian Barre. Gian, Gian Barre. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Syndrome is a very rare and serious condition that affects the nerves. It mainly affects the feet, hands, and limbs, causing problems such as numbness, weakness, and pain. Could that be what he was talking about and not actually putting on the proverbial boxing gloves? Hmm. Could that be the medication he was referring to at that time? Is there side effects of this that makes her not want to have sex with a guy who is clearly not in his own frame? Maybe that too. It can be treated and most people will eventually make a full recovery, although it can occasionally be life threatening and some people are left with long term problems. Remember, he revealed this in August of 2021 or sometime around there. Julian Bar <laughs> Yelan Bar syndrome affects people of all ages but is more common in adults and males oddly enough symptoms of the syndrome uh symptoms start in your feet and hands before spreading to your arms at first you may have numbness pins and needles muscle weakness pain problems with balance and coordination remember take the medicine put on the gloves and walk the dogs these symptoms may continue to get worse over the time. So it's possible. I mean, maybe he is a dick. Maybe he is being an asshole about this. Take the money or take the, take the money. Take the, take the medicine. Maybe she's not doing that because she's pregnant. I don't know. But I think that this is what the reference of putting on the gloves is about. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. So anyways. Took me two seconds to figure that shit out. In fact, I just followed their link. But nobody else did, apparently, because I'm the, as far as I know, I'm the first one who has said anything about this. But he seems like a monster. He'll put on the gloves. What are they going to do? Get in the boxing ring? <laughs> what a monster. Fuck you, Candace Owens. Like, like you like do better for fuck's sake. I mean, I got my problems with Candace Owens, like for a lot of a different a red pill black. I've got a lot of problems with her already. But this is like this is like this is the 21st century version of yellow journalism. That's what this is. All this is, it's an attack piece. And most likely it was approved by Daily Wire because Daily Wire still pissed off that he brought that because Steven Crowder brought to brought to light their bullshit contracts because he went on. It was a second most watched show on Tim Pool when he went on there to talk about it. The first was Kanye West. <laughs> second was him. They probably didn't like that exposure. They probably didn't like that bad press. I can't imagine. They, they have not had any love for this man for a long time. And most likely, there is some sort of, I'm going to say collusion, but there's certainly like, you know, Candace and Hillary are besties. Now, don't believe me? Well, how about this? Let's have a look here. Who is this? Do you guys know who this dude is? That's Jared Monroe. To Hillary Crowder, who was like a sister to me. I love you and I'm here for you. Oh, really? This guy is also, he's like one of the up and ups for, uh, where did I go? Where did I put him? Damn it. I didn't have my Twitter up when I was doing this. Let's put Jared Monroe back on the screen here. Here we go. Jared Monroe. Jared Monroe. Is, heck, I'll just show you this, uh, this stream right here. Have a look at this. Jared Monroe is the uh, he's the founder for Honest Fox Media LLC. Jared at HonestFoxMedia.com. He's got eighty eight point six thousand followers. Like a sister to me. Of course, I, I hope she sees this, bro. Um, I, I, there's people are sort of taking him to task here. They say, I want to hear about your thoughts on Dave. OK, whatever. I, that's not that's neither here nor there. Anyway, Hillary Crowder is no Amber Heard. I can assure you. I see. So we got the white knights riding in on their horses here to to defend good, good little Hillary, which we know nothing about once again. And then, of course, we can go with this here. 
Destiny, of course, is uh, is responding to Sneeko, who is also kind of talking about this too, right? Weak men need to limit women's freedom because they're more interested in owning a slave than having a partner. Oh, really? Hmm. That's uh, that's a that's an interesting take there. How about this? Where'd he go? Is this you, man? Well, wait, wait, wait. I'm not okay with it. Ew! You licked it. Who licked somebody's face? She just licked his face. You're getting cut. That you? Is she destiny? Sounds like you're limiting your wife's freedom there to lick other dudes' faces. <laughs> Call me crazy, man. I just work here. <laughs> Lawrence Southern. Oh, my goodness. My favorite Lawrence Southern. My heart goes out to Hillary Crowder. I didn't want to comment on this situation. Get the fuck out of here at first. But I think it's important people know where you stand on this. Oh, really? You mean like the divorce proceedings you're going through right now? You lying bitch. <laughs> my heart goes out to all those involved for healing. Really, the conversation sparked here should be a reminder for all of us to take a break from the power machine, recalibrate what our what truly matters in life and where our souls are at. <laughs> I got to do, do this the right way. Oh. I've seen a constant degradation of mental health amongst many of my peers. I've had it happen to myself. <laughs> yeah. You mean before or after you were dating Andrew Tate? <laughs> It's vicious that uh, what people, uh, what the uh, the pressures of public politics can do to people's minds, even on such small levels. Mental health is no joke. Take a break if you need it. Step away from corrupting influence of the public eye. Slowing down and introspecting will be will be something you regret. Uh, you something you regret in your life will never be something you regret. In your life. Okay, thank you. Uh, this you. <laughs> by the way this is a deleted tweet she probably i i, I screen capped this lauren southern on twitter you cannot promote the ideas of traditional stay-at-home women while still considering women who live off their husbands leeches looking for a free ride <laughs> you post them up i knock them down what can i tell you <laughs> And I'll tell you, that is really rich coming from a Lauren Southern, who is most definitely uh, getting divorced herself and still wears a ring to let you guys think that she's still this good Christian traditionalist, by the way. Another another one. Another one. Oh, boy. Uh, trust me. Don't come at me, Lauren, because I know things that you don't think I know, but I know. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, so let's see. Where did I go with that? Uh, oh, I got. Is that you? Oh, that was sorry. I was fucking with. I was fucking with with uh, with Aaron Clary there. Uh, what do we got here? All right, yeah, I can't stand Lawrence Southern either. So Lawrence Southern is, is you, grifter extraordinaire. Uh, what do you got here? Uh, time to jump. Uh, the time jumps are because of the ring camera. It's what happens when the Wi-Fi are just outside of range. It happens with my outdoor Nest camera. Yeah, except for the fact that it's going for longer. I have I have a I have a um I have a blink system so I understand like the the mechanics involved in all that they will probably will rely on that as like sort of like the defense against well it wasn't really edited it was just these these clips well the problem is is they're going for the 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 video of that that ring video is going and going and going there's art there's still motion going on there's still stuff happening in that video and the jump clips he's still talking when he when the jump clip comes back in again so you could i mean i guess you could probably say that but again you still have to save the video and then second of all the idea that uh that it, there's not it's not rec a constantly recording it's already picking up like several minutes of of a, a video before it does the clip so it, it could be that I, i'll give you that it could be that let's see what else we got Blink blink systems will do that, but I know my my blink system that is that I have here at the at the studio, and then I have um, unfortunately on my daughter's uh, condo in Vegas for reasons I will not bring up. Uh, I have it set; it will only record a certain amount of time, so it just sets it to a certain amount of time. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was two minutes, three minutes. It seems like it was very long for a, a if that's a security camera. 
usually when you're setting up a ring system, it's there because you're worried that like, because that's a point of entry, like the back, like the sliding glass door in the back there, that's a point of entry. Because that's what they tell you in the manual. That's where you should put it, right? Uh, someone said it cut because she didn't move. I don't know. The dog's still moving. There's still motion. It doesn't matter if she's moving. It matters if he's moving. He shifts positions in this thing all the time. We could go back and look at that. That's a possibility. But that's, but again, so, so it doesn't, it, 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 it on the first video, it was 3522 to 3603. And then in the second video, it was from 3807 to 30, 3815. That's a long time to be sitting there doing nothing. I don't know. Could be. They'll probably use that as the defense. Bro, when are you going to work? When are, when you are working all day long in and out, yet when you come home, no, the home duties are taken care of. Yeah, not clean enough. Okay, yeah, I get that. But you know what's going to happen, Leon, is people are going to look at that and they're going to go, well, she's eight months pregnant. And Destiny, of, of all people, and I know I just gave him shit, but like the Destiny of all people was we're bringing up this fact that and my wife was the same way when she was pregnant. She was still doing stuff right up until like, I would say probably like a week before she went into labor or two weeks before she went into labor. She wanted to do that stuff. So, I mean, yeah, but I don't, I mean, does, does this generation know how maybe they don't, but does this generation know how like women get pregnant and what they do when they're pregnant? I had experienced it firsthand. I'm sure other people have too. change. My mind is a very gamma thing to say to do, honestly. Okay. Well, yeah, but you know what? It paid the bills. That's what he's no, he's best known for. It's kind of like Matt Walsh. What is a woman? Oh, the what is a woman guy? That's what that's how that's sorry that that's what you're going to be known for. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I love it. I love it when like and, and I, I don't want to give like because I don't I don't hate Destiny, but because I, I really kind of agree with some of the stuff he talks about. I just think he's. He's right for the wrong reasons. That makes sense. But uh, when he got when he goes off about like, oh god, these those red pill guys are all just want to be possessive and everything, and they're just they want to keep the women barefoot and pregnant and the thing. I'm like, yeah, well, when you go into mate guarding mode at Comic Con or wherever the fuck you were, when your girlfriend, wife, whatever she was, licks another dude's face, yeah, that's it. That's it. Default to animal animal mode. Your mate guarding. If you were really that, if you were really that secure in your masculinity, that wouldn't have been any problem for you, right? Should I tell you right now? I would. I, that'd be it. I'd be like, okay, you're looking at these face. <laughs> Thanks. Been real. Bye. Bye. Here's what I would have said. I would have said. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> I would use that one in a while. Uh, let's keep going here. I got some other stuff for you too. There's a little. There's more to this. So I want you guys to see. Um, quite a bit more actually. <laughs> that destiny that deserves a drink. There you go. You're welcome. Uh, cheese tax. Viva la Ned. Cheese tax. Hey y'all. There you go. I see. Yes. Only people who own dogs, especially greyhounds, know what a cheese tax is. You have to pay the cheese tax every time you eat. <laughs> the real problem everyone has with Crowder is that. It's a man enforcing a boundary. That's why everyone's so indignant. Yeah, it is, but he's enforcing. Okay. Yes, you're right, but there's more to it than that. You're you're almost there. You're 85% there. The other 15% is that he has no frame, and it's a guy, it's a weak male trying to enforce a boundary. That's why. Guys who are like, for instance, you've heard me say this. When a, when a woman comes up to you or your, your girlfriend or your wife says, honey, I want to go have a girl's night out or I want to go have a girl's weekend with the girls in Las Vegas. I want to have a girl's night out, blah, 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 blah. Now man, once. Okay. But when it becomes a habit and everything else or, or you, or the conversation goes something like this. Uh, are you okay with that? Is that all right? Can I have permission to go? She, the, she's going to go. She's already, she's gone in her head. She's already there. She's asking permission because she wants you to be okay with it. She's going to do what she's going to do. And the problem isn't the asking of permission. The problem isn't the boundary she's not seeing. The problem is she's asking. It's desirable for her to do that in the first place. So 
when you have that conversation, when your when your girlfriend or whatever says, hey, can I go lick another dude's face? <laughs> can I go do X, Y, and Z? Can I go with my girlfriends? Can I, can I go to Vegas? Can I go, you know, can I, can I, can I? It's not the act. It's not the behavior. It's that she's, it seems desirable to her in the first place. That's why. On Access Vegas on Thursday, I was, uh, we were asked, what's our ideal woman? Of course, Mike, <laughs> Mike basically describes Kylie. Okay. <laughs> okay no, 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 hey, but okay, got it. Whenever I'm asked that, I know, I already know what I'm going to say, which is I want genuine desire. I don't want a woman to submit to me. I want her to defer to my authority, of course, but I don't want a woman's submission. I don't want her to feel obligated to do things. I want her to want to do those things. That's the difference. I want genuine desire. I want a woman. I don't, I don't want a woman to have sex with me because I paid her or it's an obligation or it's wifely duties or it's owed. Oh, you did this. You did. Uh, it's like, what are those charts? Like me and me and a uh, uh, Pat Campbell used to show these on the show. Some, it'd be like, literally, it was like a, a piece of poster board and it would say, you know, wash the dishes X amount of time. You get a blow job, um, do laundry, change the baby, uh, whatever. Like there's this list of chores, like honey do list. And if you do all these chores and then at the bottom of it, it's like, you know, one of them is like, get your, get a six pack of your favorite beer that's what your marriage has been reduced to is like this children's like gold star moment where you like put these little gold stars on there to say, Oh, daddy did this. Now you get a Hummer. But if that's you, you're not going to make it. <laughs> but that, like that chore play kind of stuff. But the, the fact that the very, that, that poster board is a visual, a visual representation of your wife's complete lack of desire to fuck you. Period. End of story. And a lot of guys get into that position, especially when you're talking about a young couple who never had any sexual experience with each other beyond that. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of dig into something that's going to be a little uncomfortable for guys, particularly if they are like sort of evangelical Christian guys who follow this life path. And yes, I'm looking at you, Ruslan. I'm looking at all these, the rest of these guys who sort of, who, who pick me apart and say, oh, I can't believe Rollo and his iron rule of Tomasi number three. I, what, he's, he's promoting promiscuity. I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm promoting the, I'm promoting the, let's say the, the desire. I'm, I'm promoting the idea that it is not about so much the sex as it is about genuine desire. You can't make a woman want to fuck you. You can buy it. You can be a high value guy by having status and a good job and, 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 and make six figure income and everything, but you can't make that woman want to have sex with you. you guys who lead with their bank accounts, guys who lead with their even game. Like if you're leading with anything, like to the exception of anything else, like money, muscles and game, if you're leading with, the, with that, to the exception of anything else, you're imbalanced. And most of these guys who like have these religious convictions where it's like, okay, I'm saving myself for marriage or like Lolo Jones, for crying out loud, they're saving themselves from marriage. They end up sort of with a, let's just say an, uh, an adolescent social skill set. And when I see what happened to the com the exchange between Hillary and, and Crowder in the backyard there, that's like, I would expect that from like, I don't know, maybe like seniors in high school. I'll give them a little bit of credit, but they're not having an adult conversation. They're having a conversation of buzz terms versus buzz terms, wherever they picked up, pick the shit up, right? Respect, discipline, da, 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 da. When a guy says discipline and respect is something different, right? He's having one, he's taught, they're talking past each other. Like she knows what he's saying. And she knows uh, the reason why it's, this is coming out right now, two years later is because she knew how damning this was and it, how it would be. It would, it's like the sort of Damocles, right? It's like, she's, ex, it's, it's blackmail. It's extortion. And that's where that's where Crowder came up with this when when Candace was started, like sort of alluding to it. But what gets me is like you got like these like Candace was like, oh, we prayed for him on, on the Daily Wire when he had to go get surgery or whatever. And it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, can you be more sanctimonious? The guy hates you. You hate him. Everyone on planet Earth knows this. Don't try to don't try to sweeten it up or sugarcoat anything there at Candace. Oh, we pray that he will come around. <laughs> we pr we forgive him. <laughs> we forgive the fact that he's just this abusive monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
who was beating his wife. When did you stop beating your wife? We'll forgive you of that. What? Keep going here. Oh, Pat Stebbins, Polish passport. One of my favorite counts. Lauren is so heartbroken. She chucked, she chucked a bottle of wine. Yeah. Lauren is, Lauren is a disaster waiting to happen. And I, and I have heard, this is allegedly, I've heard this, that Lauren and Tim Pool are a thing right now. Didn't hear it from someone who's not me told me that or told you that. <laughs> Go look it up. Yeah, that's uh, that's ugly. Iron Frame, uh, Destiny doesn't understand the concept of genuine desire. No, nor does he understand the concept of mate guarding, which, of course, he succumbs to, but still thinks it's like insecurity. What I would like to do, you know, it's like funny. If, if I had if I had Destiny on the show on, on like Access Vegas, if I had him in Vegas, I think I would ask him, I say, for a guy who wants to talk about how these red pill guys are all possessive and they want to control, they're controlling. Was that not controlling? Oh, hey, I'm not comfortable. I, you can really take her away. Well, I'm not, you were, I thought you were cool with that. Maybe that was like back before he became cool with that. So now he's, he's matured. He's evolved past that jealousy instinct. You still have it. There's a reason for that. There's a, there's a good, it's a feature, not a bug. Jealousy, especially when it comes to mate guarding and guys, that's a feature. That's an evolutionary adaptation. That's a feature, not a bug of male nature. <laughs> I don't know if you have been in many single women's homes, but I have been in a lot, dude. And easily 90% are pigsty despite living there by themselves or maybe uh, a cat or a dog. Even women in the 30s, definitely a big problem nowadays. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. Like when you see like women doing TikTok videos in their bathrooms, and they're worried about you leaving the toilet seat down. Gloves would be required to self-administer an injectable medication for a chronic illness. Yeah, but could it be also that like maybe your hands hurt because of that what, Julian Barr disease? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about those diseases. Uh, Giuseppe, thank you, Giuseppe. Giuseppe has decided to grace us with his presence. Father Giuseppe. Father Junipero Giuseppe has decided to join us on today's broadcast of the Rational Myth. Uh, about Frame, after becoming rock solid, is there any possibility? And by the way, thank you for that. After becoming rock solid, is there any possibility of getting the respect back from a woman in my environment? Uh, yeah, um, but you don't want to do, you don't want, you won't put the work in to do it. If there's, because there's more pragmatic, easier ways right now. I can see all those subconscious cues belittling me. Woman who didn't know me don't, who didn't know me, treat me with more respect. And that's exactly what I was going to say, agent. So, uh, because you gave me a pretty handsome, uh, super chat there. I will explain to you. If you go and you look at the first book and the iron rule Tomasi, um, number seven, when you, uh, never, uh, never go rooting through garbage. Once you've taken the can out to the curb, and I realize this, maybe that's an American reference now, <laughs> but when you reject, when, when you have gotten to the point where that woman has already created this sort of mental model of you and by the way that happens pretty quickly too but when a woman creates a mental model of you she knows what to expect of you when guys like act out of character it seems like they're pouting it seems like they're pandering so if a guy his character is predominantly beta or is predominantly submissive or he has that you know that kind of thing or he deals with with men and women in a particular way Women's subconscious picks up on whether this guy is like a dominant personality or he's a submissive personality. It's very, very difficult to change a woman's mind about that. In fact, the only way that I, the only reliable way that I've ever seen this happen is if a guy who has a beta personality leaves the situation for a while. In fact, Steve Harvey even talks about this in that video, by the way. Um, he leaves the situation for a while and he goes, he ghosts, he goes dark. Uh, in some cases, it might be a kid who has sort of a, a beta personality. He joins the military. He sees some pretty gnarly shit in the military and he comes back and he's a different person. That will all that will seem more legit. Like if you go if you go off to war 
Well, it's figuratively speaking, you go off to war. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be actual war, war, but it could, you know, you go off to some something where you have a really life changing experience, like a near death experience. Usually that seems more legitimate in a character change than you actually working on it and changing yourself. It's almost like it's it's more legitimate for a man's personality to be changed by circumstances than it is for the guy to actually change it himself. Because if a guy changes it himself, it's usually because who hurt you? Oh, you're only you only got in the gym and put on uh, oh 20 pounds of muscle and you're all ripped and shredded because that girl broke your heart at homecoming dance. Like that, it, it's always something that goes back to a personality fault. But if that guy goes off to war, he goes to deployment and he comes back and his personality's changed or maybe he's got PTSD, that is acceptable. They're okay with that. But if you actually try to change your own personality or you're and decide who you want to be, I want to be a rock star. You're not a rock star. I know you're really a nerd, right? It's like that. I know who you really are. No, I get to say who I really am and you do too. So don't fucking tell me who I am. You're a poser. The only reason they try to do that is crabs in a barrel men mentality. They don't want you to get out of the barrel. They want you to stay predictable. They want your, that's the whole thing. It's like, whip. <laughs> I talked about this a little bit in, um, in, uh, in the, the interview with Gary, the numbers guy, and then again on Access Vegas, but human beings, we have a very, let's see, evolutionarily adapted uh, nature for finding patterns in the chaos. And I mentioned this, I said, you know, when you're looking at clouds, and you know, oh, look, it's a Tyrannosaurus. There's an elephant, right? You're looking at, you know, images that you think what, what looks like something. Or if you look at like, because I have acoustic walls in here. If you look at the acoustic walls and if you look at them long enough, you'll start to see like images or shit. Like it, it, the, the, it's just completely random acoustic bullshit, right? But you say, oh, that looks like an ape. That looks like a pig. That looks like a, well, you should use the animals, right? But it, we, we try to find icons or we try within the chaos. And I, I think that's probably one of the best part that I would almost want to explain human intelligence through our ability to sort of have pattern recognition. And so we're always looking for, that's why numerology and astrology are so popular because we think we can see a pattern there that whether it exists or not, I mean, this, you know, they didn't intend for that little piece of acoustic to look like, you know, a, a monkey or something like that. It's just that that's how it ended up looking. It's how your, your mind wants to sort of sort out reality for itself. And so when we don't, when, when we can't figure things out, we'll make up shit like numerology or astrology or this other shit, right? We'll make up stuff because we can't explain it until we can. And then we can explain it. Then we go, okay, well, this is how my mind works. Well, we do something similar when we're, um, when we're trying to explain, um, why are why our lives aren't, aren't aren't the way they want them we want them to be or explaining personality for that for that matter and so when we see a, a consistent pattern in someone's behavior we want to keep seeing it we want them to be predictable we don't want chaos we want there to be like i want to know what i get every time i see rollo i want to know what i get every time i see mike i want to know what i get every time i see my friends because i know what their personality is and i want them to to be that way so that i'm not there's no surprises and i know what i'm getting into and it, they could be like the most outgoing you know boisterous person in the world but you know you're going to get that well that's what he's really about well the only reason you say that is because you've experienced him being that way for a long time if you if you knew me i'm actually not all that Ex extroverted. I know a lot of people will find that shocking, right? I'm kind of like an extroverted introvert. A lot of my hobbies, a lot of my stuff is really cerebral. I'm a writer, right? So I kind of have to spend a lot of time alone. And when I'm drawing, people don't even know I still draw, right? People don't know that I, I, I paint. People don't know that I, I'll go fishing or something like that. I do a lot of kind of solo stuff. It's not that I don't like people. I do. I would love them to come, but come hang out. But sometimes I don't share interests the same with, with people. Sometimes I do. Even being a musician, sometimes you know, to, people think being in a band is like very extroverted and very um, like, uh, I guess, tribal because you're in a band. Right. Which is true. But I spend a lot of time alone learning songs. <laughs> I spend a, more time alone practicing my instrument and becoming a better musician than I do actually like creating music with my band. <laughs> so I, I think the the predictability factor, the pattern recognition is something that human beings like have a natural affinity for. So to decide you're going to be a, a different person that it seems disingenuous because people think that you're trying to put one past them. <laughs> uh, so for example, uh, the women you're uh, a agent 47, 47. Yeah. 
the women who treat you differently, who don't know you, it's because they don't know, they haven't established a, a pattern with you. They don't know what your personality is like. That's why I always tell guys, you know, like when, 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 um, when you go on a date and you give away everything you talk, like most guys, especially, I don't know, maybe not today, but certainly back in, in the mid two thousands, one of the, one of the things we always told guys was like, you have to be somewhat mysterious or a challenge and you have to reward women with little bits and pieces of information of yourself, because that's what keeps women wanting to know more. That's what keeps conversation going. And it's like, it's peeling away the layers of the onion, right? It's the flow. It's the, uh, the, uh, the challenge aspect of a mystery because women love to try to figure out whether you're real or not. Don't, don't, you know, destroy that fantasy for them. Go with it. It, it works to your advantage. If you can just sort of like reward them with little personal tidbits of yourself, instead of vomiting out your entire life story on the restaurant table, when you're on your first date and then wonder why you're not getting a second date because she's figured it out. You say, okay, here's, here's the book. She has to read the book. She has to open the book and read the book of you. Instead of like looking on the back cover and going, okay, here, here's the summation of the whole plot. That's why women get interested. That's why women stay on the line. That's why they, they get wrap, wrapped up in your, you want women to enter your frame? You can't just say, here it is. Guys are always like, oh, well, Rolo, it's direct game and you need to be over and say what you mean to me, what you're saying. Real men do this. And yeah, they do. But like if the, once they figure out what you're about, because you're just so blunt and everything, if a woman doesn't want to get with you, she's not going to get with you. But maybe she did want to get with you, but you had to at least like sort of draw her into your frame. Unless you have some sort of super rock solid frame, you got some war, you're, you're famous and rich and, and women go, okay, I guess I want to get with them. Uh, Inquisitor Tomasi, the Oro Turbo Horicus. Oh God, here we go. Thank you very much. Can I be in charge for a while? Continue the faithful stand against this heresy the emperor protects. Thank you very much. I should have worn my, uh, my Imperial Aquila, although it's dirty now t-shirt people were all shocked that i had that on when i was doing the um the uh the decompression stream like dude how many times have i said i play warhammer well i recommend your cooks my cooks my cocks my cock to friends oh please don't do that no your books to friends but they s rollo i recommend your cock uh, book uh, co uh books to friends but they seem to misinterpret what you're saying do you recommend them to join your book club, your club meetings? I don't have a club. Do I have a club? Um, I would recommend you join the MOA, the Men of Action. Uh, if you're, When I talk here and when I'm writing books, that's the theory. People always ask, well, how do I put this into practice? Well, you join MOA. That's the only group that I endorse. And the reason why I do is because it's not a top down. We're not trying to save the freaking world. It's a bottom up group. It's about practice. It's about going out and doing stuff. It's not, no, is it not cold? Is it cold approach? No, it's not cold approach. It has nothing to do with it. This guy's getting together. The guys in the MOA, you were there. I saw you guys. I'm not going to say where, because I'm not allowed. I don't think I should. But um, I was I was with the MOA group uh, just this last weekend and uh, also at uh, Access Vegas. So do it. Do it now. Join MOA and use my link. Only use my link. <laughs> Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Great. Okay. Thank you, Bible guy. Wait. There you go. All right. Thank you, Bible guy. I'll just say, men and women uh, have antagonistic uh, sexual strategies. No, they have adversarial strategies. They have different, there's different motives. I guess antagonistic, you could say that. They're adversarial. People hate it when I say that. What do you mean they're adversarial? Shouldn't we all just go along? We should all be partners. No, that's not how it works, dumbass. Especially when you're single, which is another reason why I will never buy into this horseshit idea of uh, of uh, what's well, Dr. David Buss leaning into the mate switching hypothesis. It's like you've got to be mated first to switch. <laughs> so something comes before the switching part. Something comes before the mating part. <laughs> maybe that's hypergamy right no no Rolo doesn't know what he's talking about <laughs> Rolo Tomasi don't get no hoes man yeah, yeah, put that, I, I need that sound drop we gotta do it just a regular like, man, Rolo Tomasi don't get no hoes man <laughs> can I suggest a way to get back the frame is getting a few points upscale yes it is while genuinely making yourself your mental point of origin that should be number one priority by the way this mental point of origin 
Nothing changes until you become your, you, you become the first thought that comes into your head when you're faced with a decision. And there's more to it than that, but that's the, the, the meat of it. That's the crux. C-R-U-X. Is that a vocabulary word? The crawl, the, the meeting. It's the, it's the core, core thought, the core principle. Um, mental point of origin. I hear everybody bastardize this and rip me off wholesale. Nobody ever wants to know. What does it mean? Oh, put yourself first. No, that's not what it means. It means it literally means you have to be the first thought that comes into your head when you're faced with the decision. You have to be, everything has to be about you. It is, it is intimately related to enlightened self-interest. I cannot help others until I can help myself. It doesn't mean you're a prick. It doesn't mean you're selfish. It doesn't mean you're self-centered. It doesn't mean you're, you don't fuck off and die. It doesn't mean anything like that. It means that you are literally the first thing that comes into your mind when you like, okay, what am I going to do? Oh, what's my wife going to say if I do this? No, that's that you, your wife is now your mental point of origin. It could be anything, by the way. It doesn't have to be, even be your wife. It could be your mom. It could be your employer. It could be your religious leader. It could be anybody like cult guys who are like part of a cult. Their mental point of origin is whoever is at the center of that cult. Just ask Rose. She knows. Okay. So. I was asked this question. I think maybe this is because Crowder is in this position and Crowder uh, and wife school again. Here's the deal. When your predominant personality is already established and you have no frame and you're in her frame, but you think you're in yours or you're trying to have this frame grab. When a woman, when you're already in a woman's frame, trying to trying to take that back seems like a change in personality. You're not who you really are. You're trying to be someone you're not. So to go from beta to alpha is like it, it, that why I say it is easier to, uh, to, uh, was it? Uh, no, it's in uh, Iron Rules of Tomasi number seven. It is easier and time better spent developing new prospective women than it is to try to repair or rescue or rebuild, recondition an old relationship. It always will be, as we've just seen here, like the women, the new women that I know, they don't know who I am. And so therefore I get more respect from them by default. Yeah, because they don't know what your default personality is. They don't know who you are. Or you take a leave of absence for like a year, you go off to deployment, you come back, you got PA, your, your personality is completely changed because you see some really heavy shit. Then you they're way more willing to believe that you've had a personality shift than than if you go, I'm going to be someone different. You're going to treat me with respect. You owe me an apology. Like if you if that's you, if you're like you want or your your idea of becoming more alpha is I'm going to get to the gym and then people will really like me. People would will make up their own narratives about you. They'll just say you're a poser. They'll just say that's not the real you. So when you're like predominant personality character characteristics are more beta and you try to become more alpha, it seems like you're, you're, you're pouting. It seems like you're a petulant little child. Like yeah, you're being somebody that you're not, it's not believable. So to say, you know what? I'm actually alpha when that woman has already decided in the back of her, in her, like in her, you know, lizard brain, that you're beta. It's almost like it's, you want to know why gamma males piss off, women so much like guys who are like the they're like the bean counters right they're the, the overly analytical guy i think it was uh, vox day said that they inspire in women an un uncontrollable urge or an un, they don't even know why but the, to punch these guys in the face and the reason why women experience that with guys who are trying to convince them that they should be with them by logic and everything. No, no guy has ever logic or reasoned a woman into bed. It's always been about, emo it's always emotion and it's arousal. That's what gets you sex, emotion and arousal, not, well, let's go over the spreadsheet and I'm going to tell you why I'm the best person you should be fucking right now. I'm a good provider. I really want children. I come from a good family. I've got a pretty decent job. I went to college and da, da, da. You can go down this laundry list of stuff and you know what? Women will still want to punch you in the face because what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell her or reason why you ought to be the guy that she's fucking. And what, what happens is that triggers the existential fear in women, which is he is trying to clearly he's a, he's not an alpha male because alpha males don't behave like this, but he's trying to convince me that he is with facts and stats and reason and job and, and logic. 
and they want to punch you in the face. They don't know why. The reason, the reason why is because you're trying to convince them openly that you're their best choice. Women don't, they don't want to be logic into bed. Hell, they, they would much rather have like just a quick fling and not be able and, and then like reverse engineer why they did it than they would to be talked into, uh, you know, reasoned into having sex with you. So when you change your personality or when you become somebody different, you go like, you know what? I need to alpha up. I've been watching all these red pill videos. I need to be somebody different. What it is, is it's effectively the same way as explaining things to that woman. You're overt about it. Why'd you go to the gym? Well, you know, time for me to alpha up. I really got a man up and it kills me because it's this paradox. You hear these women go, well, men need to man up. They need to be more masculine and conventional. And then when they do, you'll hear women go, you're not really like that. <laughs> what the fuck do I get to be masculine because I decide to, or do, if I do, then you don't think I'm genuine. So what uh, I think it was agent 47 was saying is like, yeah, you will seem more masculine. You'll seem more alpha to women who have have never heard your name before than women who've known you for like 10 years. So that's another reason why I say it is better and time better spent on developing new relationships with new prospective women who don't know what your personality is like. And you're starting off with a fresh, you know, canvas <laughs> to paint that picture for them than it is for people who know everything about you. That's why reconstructing, you know, old rela dead relationships or bad relationships, just let it die. Rip the bandaid off. Don't pull it off slowly and don't think you're going to keep it on. The reason why you broke up with that girl, she broke up with you. There's reasons. And when, even if you got back together and it was all perfect and ideal, there's still that one time when, remember when we broke up? Remember when you fucked that other guy? That's okay. I forgive you because I'm a bigger man. No, the bigger man wouldn't have done that. The alpha guy does not forgive infidelity, period. Only a beta would do that. Only betas forgive women's infidelity. And women know that on some level of consciousness. So the, they're with a guy who would forgive infidelity with her. So if that's the case, why wouldn't she be with the other guy? Why wouldn't she be with somebody else? Who has a, a whose personality maybe she's still discovering? He's fun. He's sexy. He's, he he gives what uh, what Royce would call the the, the vagina tingles. <laughs> so, can you suggest a way to get back to that? No. The best way is to start over with somebody new, but learn from that relationship. I'm not saying don't build up money, muscles, and game. You have to, but be ready for the next one. Don't try to re rekindle something old. And that's something Crowder's going to have to figure out, especially now considering like his, his personality is now being set by this. Thank you very much for that. Woo! Michael Atkins. So if men are 100% in control of a woman through frame, I didn't say they were 100% in control. Uh, what kind of woman would you get? It's like people assume that women have no agency. Um, no, they have. <laughs> I'm telling you that they do have agency. It's all sexual. Uh, if women are that, Moldable, we need to have an honest conversation about that. Frame talk seems incomplete to me. It is incomplete because most people don't understand what frame is. They think that it is, uh, well, you got to have your money on point, and your muscles on point, your game on point. And once you do that, the women will just naturally flock to you. No, they won't because you don't know what to do with them because you've been so too busy, like focusing on other shit. You're not like personable. Nobody likes you. You can have you can have your game on point. You can have all this shit. You can you can memorize every every game aspect. You can have you can body can be like perfect. Your 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 money. You could be a six figure earner if you don't know how to interrelate. If you don't know how the nature of women, it's not gonna make any difference. You're still gonna be like dick in hand. There's plenty of guys that are just like that. They just don't know what they think that women should come to them because they can't get out of their own heads. That's why. So, but. Okay, so uh, if men are 100% in control of a woman, they're never in 100% control. Certainly not today, and certainly not if you're married. You lose control. Frame is the world into which that woman wants to enter. It's not about control. It's about desire. Not control, desire. As I said, I don't want to control a woman. I don't want to be possessive of a woman. If my wife wants to leave right now, she's welcome. Here's the door. I'm married for 27 years. There you go. I'm not going to try to stop you because I'm not going to be, I don't want to be in a relationship with a woman who doesn't want to be in that relationship, period. 
I don't want to fuck a woman who doesn't want to have like has genuine just lust like in her eyes. I would much rather not like <laughs> there's guys I know who like have like quotas. Well, if we're not having sex two to three times a week, then it means she doesn't really love me. I would rather have sex once a week. And the woman's like, fuck my wife's like, fuck the shit out of me. Like once a week, I'd rather have it once a week where she's just like, mm, let's go. Then like have it four times a week. And she's like, okay, I got laundry to do. Get it over with. It's my wifely duty. Let's get this all. Okay. You know, I got to pick up the kids from you know soccer practice. Are you done yet? <laughs> I would much rather have it once a week with a woman who's just like, just rips my clothes off and just like wants to, you know, do sexual gymnastics because she wants to be there. That's the diff. That's, that's what guys who talk about frame, they completely lose the narrative on. They don't know. They don't understand. It's not about control. It's not about possessiveness. It's not even about mate guarding really, although that does play in once in a while. It's about genuine desire. She wants to be in my frame. If she, it's like, you've heard, probably heard Andrew Tate say this comply or goodbye. That's, it sounds like controlling. It's not controlling. It's like, I don't want you to do anything you don't want to do. I don't want you to have to be drunk to fuck me. I don't want you, I don't have to be like super, the most of some of the best sex I've had in my life have been when I've been at my poorest because it was just, it was about desire. It wasn't about like, it wasn't about the money. God knows it wasn't about the money, <laughs> but you know, it was about looks and it was about game at that time. You know, maybe a little bit of status. But it was about certainly about desire. It certainly wasn't any obligation. They didn't have to fuck me. They wanted to. That's what I want. I want desire. I don't. Why is this like like fucking rocket science for people? That's why Crowder is out of frame. She doesn't want to be there. She doesn't want anything to do with him. Listen to him. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on on Crowder here. Like right now, actually, I just do it right now. Crowder is out of frame. The do, and re, and remember, Crowder makes a shit ton of money. He's not a bad looking dude. He's in good shape. His game is bleh. He's out of frame for sure. He sounds like a whiny bitch, but he has the things that all that looks maxers say you should have. He has the things that like entrepreneurs say he should have. He's got over a set. I don't know. He's how much is he worth? Maybe eight figures. And his wife still doesn't want to fuck him. Why? No frame. She knows what he's about. Why would you want to? There was a time, and I don't think I'm giving up any secrets here. There was a time when Robert Kiyosaki told me that Kim Kiyosaki just said, I don't need you anymore. That's fucking rough, man. That's rough, especially from your wife of like 30, 40 some odd years. That's rough. I don't need you anymore. I don't need man. I want a man. <laughs> you know, th thanks for all the memories. Thanks for all the money. Got, got a lot of money. Good looking dude. You can get an older, sure, but you know. For 76, he's not a bad looking dude. He got better in shape, I guess. He was kind of fat for a while. But she didn't want to fuck him. Didn't have anything to do with the money. Had to do with this. Being in the right place mentally. It's not about control. So men are not 100% in control of a woman ever, really. And they shouldn't want to be. I don't want to control my wife. I want her to control herself. I want her to be in this marriage and this relationship. And she has for 27 years because that's, she can't think of anything else. I can't stop looking at it. If you go and you talk to like Sterling, I don't, she, they got me on this because Sterling Cooper has met my wife. Um, and um, Justin Walsh met my wife. Miguel has met my wife. Um, there's a few other guys who are in this sphere, who, like I run the circles I run with, who met my wife. And one thing they'll always tell you is like, she's always looking at you. She's always like, you know, she's very like, you know, attentive to me. And she is because she loves me and she is, has respect for me and she has a desire for me to the point where she's like, I'm going to say she's hanging on every one of my words, but like she's still kind of maybe even 27 years, years later kind of moons, I guess, but. It's not it's I mean I got my shit together I'm in pretty good shape I think most people are saying um you know I got I'm not, I'm not I don't make the kind of money Crowder does but I'm doing all right for myself and I help people out I'm a I'm a good fucking guy man why wouldn't she why wouldn't you want to be with me there's, there's women that yeah, access Vegas it's like I like you thanks you're you can be a sister wife how's that but I want I want a woman who I want you to want me with that cheap trick song. <laughs> That's that's really what it's about. It's the, that's what frame ought to be about. I want you here because I want you in my frame because you want to be in this frame, not because you have to be in this frame. 
I don't want a slave. Showing support. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for your support, Matthew. 1926. Now I'm going to have to go look that scripture up. Okay. You're one of the founding fathers. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate the compliment for that. You guys are here. But where are we at? 303. You're here because you want to be here. You have genuine desire to watch this whole show. Theatrically, theatricality and deception are powerful agents of the initiative. Thank you. And a small mind is easily filled by faith. Becoming purpose focused can easily turn the frame in your favor. If you become unwilling to compromise it for anything else. The problem with that is, yeah, you can, but you got to do that with new people who are unfamiliar with your personality. Otherwise it seems like you're, you're pouting. But will those girls tell other girls that he was a former beta? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. How can you, how do you gain frame right from the start? Uh, you're on that, that's when you need to be uncompromised. That's when it's like, okay, here's what I'm about. If you want to be part of this, great. Remember when they tell you, no, don't, don't chase women, chase excellence. Okay. The guys who actually are chain, chasing, chasing women, you're, you're already out of your frame. We only chase what runs away from us. So if you're chasing your, you want to know why I, I sort of pick apart uh, Shapiro, Ben Shapiro, that's because if you listen to his sort of come up story with his wife or even Jordan Peterson for that matter, these are guys who are necessitous men when it comes to women. So when guys go, oh, I, I wore her down. I was persistent. I came back to her. These guys who have been married like two and three times and they'd wonder why they're on their fourth marriage because they're constantly changing or ch uh, chasing. So to establish frame in the beginning, you ha they have there has to be a want on her her part to be involved with you. For, for when I listened to uh, was it ben, ben Shapiro talking about how he met met his wife, he didn't he badgered her like in any other context he's a creep. In any other context, she calls the cops on him. But because he's Ben Shapiro, he's got money. He's uh, you know he's not he's not abusive. He's not like scary creepy, but. If he was anybody else, he would be. And he did, though. That's like stalker mentality is what that is. He's definitely not in his frame. He's in her frame. And I would I would argue that if you, I don't, and I don't know this for a fact, but I would argue that if you weren't, if I were to talk to Ben Shapiro and his wife and talk to them about their marriage or Hafiz and his wife, for that matter, they would probably try to characterize it as sort of being this equal partnership or this egalitarian thing rather than he's the one that makes the rules. He's the one that like makes the decision. I defer to his authority. I want to be with him. I want to have his babies. That's the fucking difference. That's how you see. You want to establish frame from the get go. You got to be the guy who that woman says, I want to have that guy's babies. Not, I know it's time for me. Oh, my biological clock is ticking. Time to have kids. I want babies. No, I don't. I don't want to get, don't get anywhere near a chick like that. Because you'll, you'll do, come over here. We're going to get married. You're going to fuck me. We're going to have babies together, right? No, you're just an accessory at that time. Like, well, I always use this. Uh, I don't have it loaded. Sorry. But there, I think it's, I uh, was it uh, Eva Mendez and is it Jake Gyllenhaal? I think. It's either that or Ryan Gosling. I can't remember. One of those guys. Until she's back. That, that guy, she was like, oh, I, I didn't want to have kids until I met him. And I wanted his babies. That's what you want. That's frame. He is so high quality. He is such, he's the guy for me. I will change my religion. I will move across the planet, I'll move halfway across the planet to be with this guy. I will do anything for this. I will break him out of prison. If he, if he asked me at 2 a.m. to help him bury a body, I'm right there. I'll do, <laughs> ride or die, right? I want his fucking babies. That, if you, that's what you need to establish at the get-go. That's what has to be, that's what has to be. Very few guys can start like as like they're completely frameless and then establish that for themselves. It is far is much more. It's so easy to go from being the alpha to backsliding into more beta behavior than it will ever be to be like beta and, and, and prove yourself as being an alpha. Because that's not believable. It's much more believable. In fact, it's it's disappointing for women who get with guys who are like alphas. And then later on, they kind of puss out and they kind of show their true colors. That's actually probably one of the worst fears women have, especially if they had kids with that guy. 
oh my God, I invested my life in this. I gave him my sexual agency. I gave him my sexual capital. And now he was, he, I thought he was alpha. And now he's really beta. That's, that's rough. But if you're already beta and she's already with you because she sees that as your, your dominant personality characteristic and you try to alpha up, it is, it, I, have a, I have a whole essay. It's in, it's in my second book. It's called Up the Alpha. You, you don't seem real when you do that. You seem like you're out of character. You're breaking character. <laughs> Kudos for spreading uncommon sense. Oh, thank you for that. 99 go, 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 go. British pounds in today's zeitgeist. Uh, interesting to hear terminology for these things. I saw my dad do in the night in the in 40 years and counting. Stoic never argued, pursued his own interests and led by action. His advice, if she declares her love, add right now in your head. Yeah, that's uh, that's classic Tom Likas. Uh, uh, mentality is what that is it's not stoicism though like guys like we, we i think we do because we, th we seem to be like less like stoicism means an absence of emotion no 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 it doesn't it just means you're in control of it but men are more controlled with emotion as it is anyways because we don't have the same i think it's breaking yourself out of the correctness or the the uh, standardization that men should emote like women that's not stoicism Stoicism is something much different uh, by all means, like stop like emoting like women, but don't call it stoicism. Uh, it, it's classic stoicism, like, like old school stoic Marcus. Aurelius. It's not, uh, to, I, I really have a problem with stoicism because it's like LARPing today. Live action role. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait, I said LARPing. Hold on. FBI, open up. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of those words. <laughs> one of those words. All right, what do we got? Uh, Anwar, hey Anwar, what's up? Hey, I got your, I got your message. I got your message. Um, and I talked to IC. Don't worry, I'll be getting back with you. What's going on, Anwar? Anwar's part of uh, the Fresh and Fit crew. If Anwar's here, that can only mean that Big Mo's got to be somewhere around here. Um, oh, by the way, I'll be doing something with Fresh tomorrow. He hit me up. He wanted to do a, I think he wanted to do a panel show, of some kind. I'm supposed to do something with Fresh tomorrow. Just uh, putting that out there. He hit me up right before showtime. And I agreed to it, so it'll probably be tomorrow. I would have done it today, but I'm with you. I'm with you today, Michael Adkins. The way that you're describing it uh, makes sense. By the way, thank you. Uh, it's just that I haven't heard frame described very well. Yeah, unfortunately. Go read my first book. I think I described it pretty well in that. Or you can go to therationalmail.com and in the search engine. Just type in frame and just look at everything I've written on frame because I've written quite a bit about it. The first thing I wrote was, of course, the first iron rule of Tomasi is frame is everything. Um, so building, I think frame is probably the most relatable concept uh, from my book, but also like in the iron rules. You know, it's funny is like I never have even my worst haters. They never like hate on me for the first iron rule. Like they're, they can agree with that. Yeah, they'll give me shit for like certainly uh, the third iron rule and a few others, but or to the sixth iron rule. Um, but the first iron rule, nobody ever has a problem with that. They're oh well, he got off to a good start. Yeah, because they think that it sort of aligns with their own personal ideologies and beliefs. It really doesn't. <laughs> no, frame is frame is a psychological uh, concept. It's term, I didn't again, like I said, I didn't invent the term. It was actually a sociological uh, psychological terminology. Frame is like whoever's reality we kind of work. Like, for instance, let me see if I can. Here's, here's another way to, to describe frame. When Steve Jobs was still alive, he used, his friends used to say he has a reality distortion bubble. Okay. Which means he knows like he wants an iPad or he wants an iPhone or he wants something. He sees it in his head, but he doesn't know how it gets done. So he defers, uh, or de delegates all of that. The, the brain work and everything else to these guys. And he says, this is how I want it to work. You're supposed to use like, you don't use the stylus, use your finger, that kind of stuff. And very like particular about how he, the, the, the fonts and the display and the, the packaging and everything. I mean, to the point where it's like, it's almost like anal retentive, but it's like very pathological, but everyone who knew Steve jobs described him as having a quote unquote reality distortion bubble. Now I have in the past described this as a pathological personality. But don't take that in the negative sense. There are good ways to be pathological, to have a pathological personality and destructive bad ways as well, which is what we usually associate path pathological personalities with. But when you're an Elon Musk, when you're a Bill Gates, 
like I don't, maybe Bill Gates is a bad example. When you're an Elon Musk, when you're like this eccentric kind of like inventor, when you're a, a Nikolai Tesla, when you're a, a Steve Jobs, that pathology can be a positive, can be a, a force for good because you get we, we got we got this computer, we got this stuff, we got the, the the iPad which I have right here, I got a phone right here, and I'm on a Mac, right? So that pathology benefited me and benefited humanity in ways. And people can argue whether it's the net good or net bad. But the fact of the matter is, is he lived in his own world. And if you wanted to work at Apple and if you wanted to work with Steve Jobs, you had to enter into his frame, his pathological world. You come and again, you're not fucking Steve Jobs. You're just working for the guy and you're living in his frame. And no, if you didn't, you weren't there. You didn't work for him. You just simply didn't, you weren't in that world. And I know that seems like kind of psychotic and in ways it is, but, but that's, if, if I can describe frame, it's in a healthy way. Women entering into your world willingly of their own volition, not because they have a gun to their head, not because they're obligated, not because they're destitute and, 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 you know, necessitous because they really want to be there. The best teams and the best sports teams in the world, the biggest cults in the world, the, uh, the best relationships, the most romantic, loving, fantastic marriages in the world are there because the woman and the man want to be there. They're not obligated to be there. I think ideally that's what we want in a, in a relationship. And here we go back to wife school one more time. What's a, what's a good, re what's, what's good relationship. I don't give prescriptions. I can tell you what works and what doesn't. But I think that if you look at like the most romantic um, stories in the world, you look at the best marriages, like from the greatest generation, and we want to believe, we desperately want to believe, we, could, we would love to experience that. We would love to have this, especially women. They would love to be swept off their feet by the guy who was just totally into them. You want to know why like the narratives of like Twilight and, and even like uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, why is it that a guy like a uh, Tinder Swindler can get the genuine desire of a woman who wants to enter into his world, even though it's a scam, it's a complete scam, it's complete bullshit. It's bad pathology, right? Bad patholo pathological world. Women want, they didn't, they weren't forced to fall in love with Simon Laviv. They, they were there because they wanted to be there. Not because they were forced. They would take that one girl took out what nine bank loans because she loved the guy. She believed it. She was so about it. I know it's tough for women to do that, but it's like the, the worst like deceptions and betrayals and the greatest love stories in human history are all out of one thing, genuine desire, solid frame. She wants to be there. I want a woman who's going to fly, who's going to learn how to fly a fucking helicopter over a federal prison and be there with a rope so I can climb up and get away and we can fly off to Aruba or wherever. <laughs> Some non-extradition country. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm looking for. Now, I'm exaggerating because I have to so get that through people's head. But by order of degree, that's what I think most guys ought to be thinking of when they think of the term in terms of frame. I want you to hear because you want to be here, not because you have to be here. If you don't want to be here, then get the fuck out. Why is genuine desire the hardest thing to explain to guys that don't know it? Because they've never experienced it. Very few guys will ever experience like what I've just described to you. Very few guys. For most guys, that's why it's it's like uh, speaking a foreign language. What I just said, like about frame and all that other stuff. It, people don't believe it's possible, especially today. And women don't even believe it's possible, especially today. Because we have, we're like women are are victims of choice paradox. There's always somebody better. Like, is he really the best I can do? Well, I've got this nice little device here that I can go and look and see if I'm doing good, if I'm doing okay. I uh, I try to bring this up on um, Access Vegas. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get in a word edgewise, but I brought this up on Access Vegas, and I said, look, um, first of all, I I want women who want me. That's my ideal lover is somebody who is like so into me that she can't keep her hands off of me, that she can't stop thinking about me. And you say, well, that's unsustainable. It can be, yeah, yeah. but I want, it's one thing, like you've heard me say this, that women want a man who other men want to be and other women want to fuck. Awesome. The problem is, is that when you get into a relationship, that woman still has to appreciate you as being 
the guy that other men want to be and the guy that other women want to fuck. The problem is because you're in a relationship, you're not supposed to want to fuck those other girls. You're not supposed to like, you're supposed to be about all of that. You're supposed to defer and, and, and moon over and, and grant frame to your wife. And most guys will still do that because they think that that's the way it ought to be because they're necessitous. Most guys, they're like the average number of the average notch count for guys is what? Seven. Not, you know, maybe not even that like five, four. So yeah, it behooves most men to believe that they have to defer authority to women because if they don't, they don't know when the next chance they're going to get to get laid for Ned's college fund. Thank you very much. Woof, woof. Let me get that. Iron frame. Myron made that point on yesterday's show. Oh, really? That Steven might have been trying to alpha up. Doesn't sound like it. He might, he might have been trying to. He might have. Remember, this is post-COVID or just a little bit past the, because the, we're talking about, what, June of 2021. We have to take into account the the chronological order here. Uh, the relationship, and by that time, it's too late. Yes, it is. And you know where he's pulling that from? Uh, the Rational Male Preventive Medicine because uh, up the alpha is in that book. Hi, Rolo. What, uh, you know, what is worse than leading with your wallet and notch count leading with vulnerability or commitment? Yes. Uh, yeah. Vulnerability is not game. Now, I'm so vulnerable. Love me. Would that be sexy ladies? Would that be uh, it's wife school? Would you, would you love your husband to say, I'm so vulnerable. Now suck me off. <laughs> No. Hi, Rolo. What? Oh, man. Holy crap. Thank you. There you go. We get one of those. Don De Monco. Hi, Rolo. <laughs> he's funny. He's like, I think they reserve, like, I think Fresh and Fit reserved the Don DeMarco. Don DeMarco. For like 500, 300, $500 super chats. Uh, you get them for like a song on this show. <laughs> Hi, Rolo. What would you say to a guy that likes women but is more committed to his work? Okay. I am at the point in my life where business is growing and I don't want to waste my time or energy chasing women. Stop thinking of it as fucking chasing. Stop, stop, stop. Do not use that word. Don't use that word in my presence, my frame. When I, when people say, oh, stop chasing women, you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like you're like a kid in grammar school and you're on the playground. You're chasing them. Girl, they don't pull their ponytails. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Nobody's chasing. In fact, they use that so you'll think that way. So it seems juvenile. So it seems infantile. You're chasing women. That's infantile. Yeah, but, but talking and engaging with women and being personable with women, having some sort of form of game doesn't just magically come to you because you have a big fat bank account. It doesn't come to you just because you got, you know, jacked in the gym. You still have to be able to interrelate with, well, you still have to have the fucking social skills that you're never going to develop if all you're doing is focusing on one thing. Why do you have to focus? Can you not multitask? I'm multitasking right now. I've got this fucking board right here. I've got the mic right here. They got to be aware of. I've got one, one chat. Or I got the, the YouTube chat right here and the opposite thing. I've got the camera. I've got this camera. I've got that. I'm focusing on a, sh a ton of stuff right now. And you're going to say that you can't focus on three things, money, muscles, and game all at the same time. Get the fuck out of here. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but just don't think of it as chasing Money, muscles, and game are synergistic. And I know that's a kind of a new age buzzword, right? But it's true. Get yourself in shape. It's going to affect your money. Get yourself in shape. It's going to affect your game. Learn game. It's going to affect your money. It's probably maybe, maybe the mentality of learning game is going to get you in the gym. You're like, oh, well, I got a good game. I probably could have got that chick if I looked a little better. That's why we always tell guys to like get in the gym first. Because you'll get a dopamine hit, you'll get the endorphins going, you'll feel better about yourself. And there's benefits to money and game if you're in better shape. I had people t tell me all weekend, they go, man, Rolo, you're really looking jacked and everything. You must, the, the TRT must be really, oh man, I go to the gym. I do it because I have a, I, I do it because I actually, I like to lift weights. I've always liked to lift weights since I was like in high school. I've always liked to do that. I've enjoy, I enjoy lifting heavy things. I'm not a meathead. I'm, I'm in fairly good shape. I'm 55 years old and I'm in better shape than 95% of the people that I see in the Las Vegas airport every time I walk through that place. I'm in better shape than guys that I meet who are like in their 20s. 
So what's your excuse when 75% of the U.S. population is overweight and like, well, 35% of guys are morbidly obese? I'm 55. I run every day with my dogs because I have to, but I do things. I'm active. I like to do things. You know what I'm going to do when I go on fresh and fit? I'll have, I'll be in a tank top and you know what they're going to go? They go, oh, Swallow Tomasi looks like the trend's working. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I can't fucking own this. I cannot own, I cannot own this. No, <laughs> this doesn't like it just happen because you like shoot up something, right? You actually have to go and put the effort out. You have to, have to go and do something, but it doesn't mean that I do it to the exception of other things. I'm good with women. I'm good with people in general because I, I practice it. I do it. I'm good at playing guitar because I practice. <laughs> I, I think I was describing it over the last weekend. Like people hit me up and they go, Rolly, you're a great guitarist. You're a great, you're a great, you're a great musician. Yada yada. Wow, it must be you have such God given talent and everything. I'm, yeah, but I practice. Well, you make it look so easy. The songs are so great. Da, 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 da. I go, because I practice. Uh, well, well, Rolo, uh, you know what a gift. Uh, you so you're certainly blessed. Blah blah. It's great you have support and all this. this and, I, and I practice a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of work that goes into a lot of the things that I do. I'm a one man show. I got. Aaron Clary will back me up on this. He's like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you know. he's worried that I'm going to get a stroke. <laughs> I remember when, um, I remember when, uh, Kevin Samuels died and everybody's like, Rollo, how are you feeling? <laughs> Just fucking fine. <laughs> I don't have hypertension. I go work out. I feel pretty damn good for how old is I? 53 then something like that. Yeah. So when I'm sitting next to some fat fuck who wants to give me shit for being red pill just know that i'm the one that's in the gym while this guy is like jerking off playing video games on twitch sancho bohemian finally something above average thank you you're welcome i got a 99 cent sticker from this guy and i got another one from this guy who i can't see i can i see those in the blue chat or maybe i can't how do you do that? I don't understand. All right. So good. I caught up. Guess what? Guess what time it is, children? It is time for another video. Should we look at this? This is actually pretty good. Yeah. I got to show you. Should we get, are we done with Crowder? I don't think we're done. Quite done with Crowder. I got one more thing I got to show you about Crowder. Is it this one? No, that well, those are the two. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> this is pretty good. This will give you sort of a breakdown. Hey, we'll be on with your regular programming and Nick DiPaolo in third chair in a little bit, uh, but needed to take a moment here to address some issues out there uh, that are circulating. Uh, it's never fun, but um, well, I guess let me be clear here. Uh, I have been living with a proverbial boot on my neck for going on years now. Uh, since 2021, I've been living through what has increasingly been a horrendous divorce. Now, let me say on the outset to be clear, there is no infidelity, any kind of physical abuse at all on either side. And no, this was not uh, my choice. My then wife decided that she didn't want to be married anymore. And in the state of Texas, that is completely permitted. It's been the most heartbreaking experience of my life. What I consider to be my deepest personal failure. And just so you know, my opinions on parenting and families have not changed. Um, I've always believed that Children need a mom and a dad, that divorce is horrible. And I still believe that children need a mom and a dad and that divorce is horrible. But in today's legal system, my beliefs don't matter. In Texas, divorce is permitted when one party wants it, period. So for well over a year, uh, well over a year, in the best interest, as well as physical safety of my children, we've decided to keep this issue private and to resolve it uh, privately with the appropriate attorneys what have you, legal jargon. And on all this, one thing I want to be really clear about is certain. True North here is that my children are blameless, completely without fault. And so we decided to resolve these issues privately. Okay. Does this guy sound like the same dude that's in those videos? Because remember when I've, you guys have heard me say this before. Just because a guy is quote unquote alpha and he, he's got like six figure income, he's not, he's in pretty good shape. I mean, look at him. You could see a little bit of definition. He's got some biceps, he's got some guns going there. He already said he goes to the gym, 
does this guy sound like the same dude that's in that video? As it's in their best interests, uh, both emotionally and physically, to do so. Now, the other issue is, and this is something that I've kept private for likely far too long, um, many other people knew about this behind the scenes. Some, not all, but some of them in positions of power, influence, leverage, knew of this. They also knew that the safety of my children included keeping it private. So Okay, he's referring to Candace Owens and the people, at the powers that be at the Daily Wire. So if you're familiar with the idea of extortion, mm. then you know the feeling well. Uh, now, some of these threats were so thinly veiled that I'm frankly surprised you didn't all guess immediately. Stephen has a lot going on. I guess it's the best way to say he has a lot going on and that should be clear because people don't do stuff like this if there's not a lot going on in their lives. I How do you know he has a lot going on, Candace? Remember, this is January, January 24th, 2023. And, uh, and a shout out to Red Pill Thor for uh, doing this compilation. I would like to implore my audience and everybody that isn't paying attention to this situation not to condemn him, but to pray for him. Sometimes people need a prayer. Sometimes people need a scripture. This is the sanctimonious bullshit that I expect from this mentality right here. Oh, we'll pray for you. You're in the wrong, but we'll forgive you and pray for you. you know, wow. Stephen purports to be a Christian. I am unsure at this moment if, if it is my place to say more than that. You know, maybe if I feel in further defense, Merch. some things should be said. Or maybe if I feel that the public has a Merch. right to understand certain circumstances. The public has a right. Remember, that's tw that's January 24th of this year. She had this in her possession. She knew about this. She certainly knew about the divorce. She certainly knew about that stuff. And according to my sources, anyways, she's, I don't think she's besties, but she's pretty good friends with Hillary Crowder. I, I got to throw one more thing out here before I continue with this video. The other, uh, there's, a, there's another possibility. The other possibility is this, and, and I'm, again, this is me spitballing here. I'm not saying this is the way it is. This is alle allegedly, okay? Crowder turns down a $50 million contract with the Daily Wire, and that contract or that offer comes up when he's in the midst of a really bad divorce, according to him, boot on the neck divorce. And Candace Owens, who is a very prominent uh, content creator at Daily Wire, knows this. Is this is his turning it down? Is there something that has to be is he uh, a factor in that rejection? Is it because he's going through a divorce? Is it because he's like, you know what? If I take this, then I'm worth 50 million bucks. And she, when we, when the, the divorce is finally finalized, then she's entitled to half of that $50 million, $25 million. Uh, assu uh, assuming, I mean, it's probably not exactly that, but just like, is she entitled to any of that? Even if it's like five or $10 million. Did he re reject that offer because he was in, or did Daily Wire make that offer hoping he would take the bait because remember we're talking about the politics of personal destruction right here. Candace Owens knows this and this is well before the, the, the official offer. So I, I don't know. I have to, I have to kind of consider that though. There's a possibility that the knowledge of the divorce that Candace has who works for daily wire influences his decision to turn down Daily Wire. He has responded by giving video and I want to prep you. I want you to know this is horrific video. It is very difficult to watch. It's especially difficult to watch because in this footage, she is eight months pregnant. Um, and the video essentially reveals just how emotionally abusive he has been. And she is alleging that he has been emotionally abusive to her. And this is the recent one. And this video all but confirms it. So let's first get to the footage. I'm just going to allow you to. Okay, so this is the rest of the video for this right here. I'll, I'll scrub through this little part here because this is just what we were talking about a little while ago. Um, 
And again, thanks, Thor, for doing this compilation, because now you see the background when the extortion charges are the allegations anyways, suspicions. He wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. She's the one that breaks the fucking story. And she knows she had better do it because she knows that it's going to get broke. Even if even if she's not the one who actually had the video, she knows Hillary well enough that she Hillary goes, hey, I'm about to drop this. You want the video? Here you go. Even if she didn't have it before, which I think she had it before, but I don't know. I can't prove that. I am just, again, uh, al allegation, suspicious that perhaps she was sitting on this for a while. She was certainly sitting on it or she certainly knew about this as far back as January because you got Stephen Crowder talking about extortion. Oh, who could that be? Uh, your be your wife's best friend, uh, uh, yeah, Candace Owens? Maybe. I know it's he said, she said. I, I get that. I know this, the, this is the gossipy bullshit part right here. Oh, the red pill is all about gossip. No, the red pill is about protecting your ass from shit like this. That's what this is about. The red pill is about hating women. No, it's about not hating women for what they can never be to you. You want to know why he's in this situation? Because he believes the bullshit. Because he got, because his, his faith in the blue pill brought him to where he's at right now. There's no red pill like what Steven Crowder is going through right now. And Steve, if you're watching this video, I don't expect you're going to get this far into the fucking video. But if you are, I, I would love to talk with you. I mean, we don't have to do it on a podcast or anything else like that. I've been doing this for ages. I, hell, I consult with Robert Kiyosaki for, for crying out loud. I'm, I'm my worst haters. If destiny came to me, I am see he's a hater. If, if the guys who hate my guts the most came to me and said, Oh, really? You're right. You know, sorry about that. You know, I didn't, didn't mean to like sort of running up the flagpole, but now I'm going through this vicious divorce right now. And you're right about a lot of things. Can you help me out? I won't go. Fuck you. Go pound salt. I'll tell you. Okay. Where, where are we going? Can you fill me in? Cause I know that people re are resistant to this. They're very resistant to understanding female nature. That's why, they, that's why they will fight tooth and nail against the shit that I talk about. But you know what? Once they get into positions like Crowder is right now, I don't know. I've been doing this long enough not to sort of get my ego involved in that. You were not taking the car. Because I've seen this. I'll push this up a little bit further. Pick me up. Got it. Got it. Got it. I want to scrub through a little bit further just so we can get to the end of this because it's important to see the, the the tail end of this shit here. Here we go. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm going to just walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs take? Don't you take that in. Are So that is both heartbreaking and infuriating for me to watch. I can. And you've been probably watching it for the last two years. Not even comprehend how any man can speak to a woman like that, uh, least of all when she is eight months pregnant. And sadly, that isn't the worst part of that correspondence. There we go. This was the other part. Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system. Okay, I already read that part. Let's keep going. Here, I'll put this up. There you go. All right. So that's her official statement on all this. I know exactly what surgery she's referring to because during my first battle. Okay, so this is the elective surgery part right here. And this is where things get like, this is where she said, this is where. Candace really kind of sorry, Candace, you fucked up. You really fucked up. Um, and it's it was easy for for Thor to find this as Stephen left their home to pursue elective surgery because I know exactly what surgery she's referring to. How does she know that? How does she know exactly what surgery he sh she's referring to? Because she's good friends with Hillary. Where did that where does she come into that knowledge? We prayed for him for that. But they're saying it's elective. Because during my first backstage here at Daily Wire, we actually prayed for Stephen and this surgery. So before we, I show you a clip from us on backstage, here is Stephen describing that surgery, and it certainly doesn't sound like it's elective. Take a listen. 
I, I explained to you a little bit what it is. You know, a lot of people say, why are you smoking? My heart is actually great, but my heart doesn't work great. And the reason my heart doesn't work great is long story short, because of a connective tissue disorder I have, and uh, my chest is, is caving in on my heart. So I've got about, I, I, I'm at a little more than half of the blood flow that you guys have been tricking. Sound like uh, elective? Your output from my heart. So it's a mechanical fix. Um, and I don't know. I hope I'm not preempting him here because I, I got a I got a pretty good guess he's going to talk about this on Monday. But uh, this was another thing that wasn't too hard to find. Maybe I'll feel like Lance Armstrong, you know, like I'm on EPO after this. And yet, according to his wife, this was an elective surgery, a really a cosmetic surgery because Stephen didn't like the way that his chest looked because he had a sunken chest. It was not something that was actually required to save his life. And yet, we see that same pattern of behavior. Stephen garnering a ton of affection and prayers from his followers purporting to be the victim. When so he's doing it so his chest will look better. Not because he actually has a medical condition, whether he's explaining in the other video here. But we're going to it's his vanity. Like you notice what's happening here, by the way, this is setting a narrative. By, uh, he's a very well known public figure for sure. But when you are about to get into a divorce hearing or proceedings, usually there is a buildup to this. There's there's this want to create a character out of a guy who like is completely different. And uh, most of the guys who I have talked to who go through really bad divorces, their wives get in with uh, with the, the marriage therapist or they get in with the, the attorney who tells them to, oh, you guys need to go to counseling because it's not because – they, she has any, you know, hope that they're going to save the marriage. It's so that she can say, well, we tried your honor. Give me some more money. Now, if you have Candace Owens, who is on your team to destroy your character and to paint you as this monster, which is literally the title of her fucking video. <laughs> your honor exhibit a Candace Owens, well-respected, Republican conservative Christian who prayed for him the whole fucking time. She even confirmed that he is a monster. Imagine that. But in fact, the facts don't line up with his narrative. The second portion that I'd like to point to is where it says Hillary was not aware that Stephen hired a divorce attorney. This stands in stark contrast to what he told his followers when he said how hard divorce was and how difficult and horrific it had been and how he really didn't want it. And just, you know, Texas is a no fault divorce state. What is the truth here? I don't know. Obviously, isn't like every single state a no fault state? Right now, we have his wife's word versus Stephen's word. But given my personal experience with Stephen, I am very much inclined to believe his wife. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Crowder underwent a surgical operation in which titanium bars were inserted into his chest in order to counteract his congenital conditions of pectus excavatum, sunken chest. The surgery caused fluid to accumulate in his lungs, which he called excruciatingly painful. So is it a van? Is it a Brazilian butt lift? Is it a, I don't know, boob job? Is it just to look better? Or is it because he has actually a medical condition? Now, maybe it might be elective. I don't know. May, here's a, the funny thing. You know what else is elective? LASIK surgery. You know what else is elective? There's a lot of things that are you know, that would make you a, a whole lot better off if you uh, if you could pay to have them done, which of course you can. But they're you know life improving. So, you know, getting a boob job is an elective surgery. You don't nobody needs a boob job. But what does uh, what insurance covers and what insurance doesn't cover makes it elective or unelective? Just so you know. Thank you, uh, Thor, for coming up with this good stuff. Oh, wait, there it is. Oh, that was the last bit. Uh, in the matter of marriage of Hillary Crowder and Stephen Crowder and in the interest of Magnus Crowder and Charlotte Crowder children. Here we go. Uh, was filed as family as a family marriage dissolution divorce lawsuit. This case was filed in Denton County District Court. Denton County District Court located in Denton, Texas. The judge overseeing the case is Sherry Shipman. 
case is pending. Uh, is, the status is pending. Other, uh, other pending. Yep. So he's got a chick who is the judge. You tell me, man. I just work here. I just work here. Think there's gonna get think think Sherry Shipment's gonna give us give him a good a good shake. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so, anyways, that's that video. Um, do I, what else do I got? I think I might have one more here, real quick. Um, I do want to get to uh, a couple of other things. Oh, that was was that it? I think that was it. Oh, hot damn! I got through that video. All right. Um, I do want to get back to the uh, to good old. Um, <laughs> now that we've gone, we've come this far in today's pod class. The cherry, the icing on top is going to be uh, good old Steve Harvey here. I want to backtrack a little bit into the uh, interview that he had. But before I do that, we I, I would be remiss if I did not talk about Tucker Carlson here as well. Uh, let's see. Where did it go? Tucker Carlson. I did, a, uh, I did a Google search before I did this. I usually do a little bit of a background. I had uh, Mike Sartain hit me up and uh, asked me what I thought about the Tucker Carlson uh, see you next Tuesday comment. I'm like, really? Is that what this is about? So I went and looked at uh, some of these. I, I just put in Tucker Carlson, C-U-N-T, <laughs> in, uh, in Google. And there's lots and lots of stuff here. It's like, uh, let's see, New York Magazine, Tucker Carlson fired after calling Fox News executive the C-word. Uh, American Independent, uh, which I have been quoted in, actually. Uh, Tucker Carlson's rampant misogyny led to his ouster at Fox. Tucker Carlson, history of alleged workplace sexism, daily show, guest host, Desi Lytic takes on Tucker Carlson's sexism. Um, Tucker Carlson was always a misogynist on Fox. That's Media Matters, which, of course, is liberal. Uh, the Nation, that time, Tucker Carlson called me the C word. And that's, by the way, from 2019. So this is not anything that anyone should think of as new. I don't know. I don't know. Has he? Is there... Is there actually audio of him saying such things? I don't know. Tucker Carlson. Okay, this is the one. Here we go. I got it. Tucker Carlson. Oh, not the video. I need to share the screen. There we go. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Much better. All right. Tucker Carlson was fired after calling a Fox executive the C word. They can't even say it. It's like there's the N word and there's the C word. You know what the C word is in the UK? It's cow. It's not the see you next Tuesday word. Calling. Oh, what is this? Here we go. Yes, I, 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 I look at a lot of guitars. Carlson did not want the damning. Oh, here it is. Um, calling your boss. Your boss's really bad words is a big no for even the most famous employees at Tucker Carlson and Tucker as Tucker Carlson has learned. Wall Street Journal reported report found that the recent fire recently fired Fox News host called a senior executive a cunt in quote unquote in private in a private message that was turned up during a discovery in the defamation case filed by the Dominion voting system which was settled for $787 million last week. Wow. The report does not uh, state which executive Carlson was referring to, although we know now. And the, exec uh, the message was redacted in the ocean of correspondence that was released through court filings. Carlson did not want the damning message redacted. <laughs> At least he's got the balls to not apologize for it from the lawsuit. He told his colleagues that he wanted the word to he wanted the word the world to know that he had what he had said about the executive in a private message. Quote unquote. The report states he compared it to his I hate him passionately comment about Trump. While that was said amid a short burst of anger, his resentment towards the executive was deep and enduring, quote unquote, per the journal, which has uh, which is owned by News Corp the sister company of Fox's parent since Carlson's surprise departure on surprise <laughs> departure on Monday. Reporters have been piecing together why the network's top prime host or primetime host was let go. 
Carlson was reportedly informed by the decision uh, of the uh, informed of the decision just 10 minutes before he was it was made public. <laughs> they sit on these things, people. They really do. <laughs> According to uh, multiple accounts confirmed by the journal, the decision to cut him was made directly by the Murdoch family and Fox News CEO Susan Scott. Susan Scott. Carlson had reportedly grown disdainful of his bosses at Fox News, believing that his star outshone the network itself. And he's not too far from the mark. The New York Times report that uh, one of his one of the reasons the matter came to the head was that Fox's board of directors and top executives only learned about the contents of the redacted messages the day before the Dominion trial was supposed to begin. <laughs> The lawsuit had gone to trial. If the lawsuit had gone to trial, Dominion lawyers were apparently going to push to be able to use the content of the redacted messages during their questioning of Carlson. And they planned to pin him down on the ones that were most demeaning towards women. So still don't believe me that we live in a gynocentric social order. Like, where are these guys, man? I mean, like Matt Walsh, Tucker, I've only been talking about this shit for well, well, 20 some odd years. And now, now you're feeling a squeeze. Oh, they don't know you from Adam Rolo. Fuck you. Okay, fine. But you know what? I'm still here. I'm still talking about this stuff. Been doing this for a long time. People always say, oh, Rolo, there's no evidence that there's a gynocentric social order. Um, there's <laughs> just breathe. <laughs> just go online. Look around you. It's everywhere. The Matrix ever. <laughs> uh, I, I let a couple of these go. Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Uh, videos released to support her potential domestic abuse claim. She was, she will make against him because she filed before the 10 year mark. Ah, is that how it works in Texas? She needs a uh, domestic violence allegation to petition for alimony. Mm, yeah, but he was emotionally abusive. Uh, it's, it is elective surgery, but it is an illness of which patients are very self-conscious. They live it very badly, or they, they live it very badly. I have seldom met patients uh, with pectus who are able to hold frame before having an operation. Pectus. I don't know. I didn't even know what pectus was. I know the sunken chest. I don't know how to, a, a medical name. Hernia surgery is elective if you aren't immediately dying from it. That is true. That includes the really bad ones where they can barely move my, when I go in for hernia surgery, just know I, I'm doing it because I have to. Uh, <laughs> my source is my dad getting delayed over the, the delayed over and over during COVID. The excuse was it is elective. Yeah. Whatever the, whatever insurance doesn't want to pay for is elective. But you can get free birth control at, at, at Planned Parenthood. You got colitis, but you but it's elective surgery. You're gonna have to go take care of that somehow, Mr. Tomasi. All right, so that's uh let's see, that's Crowder. By the way, so I'm looking at this. You know what? Let's let's look at this really quick because this is really kind of enlightening. I won't now now we're gonna shift gears to the media circus around this. Okay. And I'm which of which I'm participating in right now. So I'm gonna share this screen with you. Here we go. See this? Let's have a look here. This was just me searching for Steven Crowder. I just put Steven Crowder in the in the in the search. Okay. Plot thickens. Tucker Carlson finally speaks out louder with Crowder. Got it. With DeSantis. Okay. These are the these are the the latest from Steven Crowder. Okay. So these are this is what everybody's saying about Steven Crowder. Uh, who is this guy? The majority report. Okay. Candace Owens bear buries Steven Crowder after video exposes his deranged treatment. How's that for a title for you? Oh, our good friend, Ethan Klein, dead fat fuck. Shocking video leaked by Steven Crowder. Wife proves everything. Does it? But see how, see how we've already, we've already passed judgment. He's already been damned. By, by H3H3, of course, right? Wait, like this is not, like the story isn't even like a week old. Barry proves everything. We knew it all along. <laughs> and you know what? When they, when he comes out, when, when Crowder comes out, 
on like what Monday or two tomorrow or Tuesday or whatever, when he comes out and he starts like to like fucking cracking skulls. Do you think that Ethan Klein's going to like per, uh, put, put some video that's like a retraction? Do you think he's going to apologize for being wrong, which he probably will be? No, he won't. And if you even if he did, it won't be as popular as, oh, let's see. Uh, 48 was he at 48,000 right there. I'm surprised. Oh, this is 22 hours ago. Um, oh, and this is just one of his videos. This is a H3 podcast. Oh, this is the highlights. I would love to see what the actual live stream is about. And this is no way to to wear a beanie, by the way, Ethan. God, he looks like Borat, a fatter Borat. Um, Steven Crowder, surveillance video, controversy analysis, dangers of immaturity. Okay, then we got this dude. Ta- I've used this goofball as a as a uh, an example before. 135,000 views. Uh, let's see. Behavior analyst. <laughs> Who? Uh, reacts to Steven Crowder's gaslighting his wife. 47,000. I don't know who this dude is. The body language guy. Got it. Uh, oh boy, uh, the New York Post. I didn't. Did they? Have, I didn't even know they had a YouTube. Okay, one one minute and ten seconds. Right? Now, you know what that means. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> One hundred fifty six thousand views because it's all of a minute and ten. Influencer. He's much more than influencer. Stephen Crowder caught berating pregnant wife for not doing wifely duties. Hmm. What are wifely duties? Disgusting. Oh, this is, uh, wait, oh, this is, well, of course, the Young Turks. TYT is the Young Turks. And I, this is about what I expect from them anyways, but it's a disgusting Steven Crowder video reveals his true character. 293,000 views. Uh, Steven Crowder reveals why he accused Candace Owens of extortion. <laughs> I think we know now this is the hill. 84,000. Nobody cares about that. Uh, let's see. Who's this? Deaf Noodles? Who? Stephen Crowder threatens to destroy ex-wife. Crazy response to leaked video. Stephen Crowder, uh, once again, the majority report, Stephen Crowder's humiliation at the hands of Amy Schumer is worth a rewatch. That shows up now. Oh, look, here's here's our good friend, Destiny. Stephen Crowder fight with his wife gets leaked. <laughs> leaked, leaked, to, leaked two years ago. <laughs> Steven Crowder's ex-employee and sister-in-law exposes his embarrassing, vicious sweat. Vicious something. I can't even see that. I didn't want to go look at that. That's a, the humanist report. Bro, really? So this is the kind of stuff. This is the background I have to do here. Oh, there's our good friend, Russell. Hey, that's what I was getting to. Steven Crowder accuses Candace Owens of extortion. Um, yeah, with good with good reason. Candace Owens is wrong on say, okay, here we go. Fresh and fit. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're what? Like 12 down, but still. Oh, here we go. Uh, Ruslan Crowder responds to his, to this claim from messy divorce. Hmm, what's he at? 47,000 for that? Not bad. Not bad for a, a, a Bush league channel. Like, like Ruslan's. Oh, look, our good friends, Alba and uh, Timon and Pumbaa. What did they get? Wow. 654,000 views. Steven Crowder fights with pregnant ex-wife leaks, exposes a as a POS, uh, meaning piece of shit. Really? Do you think these gonna do you think these guys are gonna post a redaction? Do you think that they're gonna oh you know what? We're sorry. Um, my bad. Sorry, we didn't know, Steve. Sorry. Do you think there's gonna be any like any kind of any back any backtracking there? Yeah, we're missing Hafiz. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We are kind of missing Hafiz. <laughs> I haven't seen anything from Hafiz in a long time. Is he still even around? I've, I have yet, maybe just, I don't pay attention, but I haven't seen anything from Hafiz, but I'll tell you right now, man, I've been preach, man. You guys are walking on thin ice again. <laughs> not that, not that they'll get like C and D's or anything from, from, from Crowder. He could give two shits, but look at that. Look at the reach on that though. Look at that reach. 654,000. All they had to do was a, like a 15, not even 15 minutes, just under a 15 minute video. Oh, uh, yeah, they're at what? 1.95 million. They're almost at 2 million subs. Congratulations. This ought to put you over the 2 million sub mark, Timon. Uh, Steven Crowder wears dress on International Women's Day. Did he? Uh, that was two years ago. Uh, let's see. Those are old ones. Two days ago, influencer Crowder caught berating pregnant wife for not doing wifely duties. We saw that. I think these are just like makeups there, but I wanted to show you the uh, the Timon and Pumbaa show. This is what panic looks like. 
Oh, that's right. I remember that he was. Uh, that's that's the whole reason Ethan Klein has a has a problem with him because he's the one who like set up the Sam Cedar gotcha debate. Stephen Crowder versus Candace Owens gets ugly lawsuits threatened. That's a pretty good one. Who was that? Secular talk. Look at that. This is, by the way, this one right here is great. Oh, man, you guys out here. I got to blow this one up. There you go. Look at that one right there. <laughs> look at this. This is what's no. Okay, so this is the majority report. If you look at this, this, uh, this thumbnail, by the way, this is like a total like Mr. Beast thumbnail. It's stupid face thumbnail. Huh? What? Like, look, look at the, look at the expressions right there. By the way, that's this, this, that's, that's tactical. That's, that's calculated. It's what's called stupid face uh, thumbnails. Angry man was all about this too. How, what did he get? 66,000. Hmm. Steven Crowder, narcissist part three monster with a question mark. Who's that? Uh, the lead attorney of all people. Yeah. Another grifter who, uh, who you wouldn't know his name if it weren't for, uh, let's see, Myron and fresh uh, circa August of 2021. I'm actually surprised he still has a channel. 37,000 views. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, Steven Crowder is a fraud. Change my mind. Jose, who has no fault. Oh, wow. Who is this guy? Jose. Is a fraud. Okay, well. <laughs> this was great. It's time for Steven Crowder and all men to face reality. I picked wrong. Okay, you know what? Before I, I didn't, I didn't even see. I haven't even watched this from 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 TLA. The lead attorney, the lead grifter. Oh, he picked wrong. Do you think so? Really? That's funny because uh, your good friend Hafiz would probably say something different here. Um, let's see. Where is that one? Ah, ah. Okay, that's that's that. Oh boy, here we go. Candace Owens Barry Stephen Crowder. Candace unloads on Crowder. Stephen Crowder, who is who is wife Hillary, is getting divorced. Um, again, if you go and you do searches, every, it's one. It's just this litany of wifely duties. Buried this. Oh, he destroyed him. It's it's all it's it's professional wrestling is what it is. Seems like investors, Murdoch and such, are done with Fox being semi-pro Trump. They are. Uh, looks like they are cleaning house before the elections and moving Tucker shows. No one is above their narrative. Yes, and you know who else? Daily Wire. Daily Wire is big con. So is I think Fox realizes that Daily Wire is going to just completely like own the narrative during the next during this election cycle. Fox News is dead. Commercial TV in general is dead. It is put it this way. It's not the same as it was in the 2020 election cycle. And it sure shit ain't what it was in the 2016 election cycle. They know that this, the discussion and the narrative will be distributed through daily wire. That's why they're doing this right now. They're cleaning house. You're right. They are cleaning house. Matt Walsh. And I don't think that I, I'm maybe, maybe Matt's just not a team player, but remember he got banned from YouTube and apparently according to contract, I guess at the daily wire, if you get banned from, from YouTube, then you're done. I think, I don't know if he's back. I don't know what he's doing right now. If he's going to go solo, I, you know, I would love to, I would love to start a network with Matt Walsh, Steven Crowder, um, <laughs> Don Lemon. <laughs> you think Don Lemon would join my network, my network of outlaw masculinists? <laughs> we can be that. We can be the outrage, outrage network. How's that? Come to Vegas, guys. Guys, come to Vegas. Come to come to the dark side. Come to the dark lord of Las Vegas. Me and Mike. Mike Sartain is the dark lord of Las Vegas. We have chicks. We have hotter chicks than you'll ever get in Nashville, Tennessee. I can tell you that right there with a hundred percent surety. <laughs> all right here's what i wanted to show you because good old lead attorney thinks that it's because oh he just picked the wrong girl are you sure about that i'll show you why he wasn't why well, he was absolutely very sure she was the right girl in 2012 why because here's the article he wrote right before he got married oh ruslan pay attention boy here we go Waiting, waiting till the wedding night, getting married the right way. Here we go. What is this? May 7th. Gosh, almost it, almost to the day. 2015. Now remember, he got married in 2012, but he's writing this afterwards. Okay. 
the author and his wife on the wedding day in August of 2012, courtesy of the author. Um, you mean Stephen Crowder. As anyone who's read my abstinence column here at Fox News Opinion could guess, my wedding is something that I've looked forward to for quite some time. After having tied the knot at the end of August, I can now say beyond all shadow of a doubt that I was, or that it was everything I'd hoped for and prayed that it would be since childhood. I'd also prayed to be bitten by a radioactive spider and develop sticky hands, but I was an idiot. Nyuck, 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 nyuck. <laughs> Uh, let's let me preface this column by saying this. My wife, I have to get used to saying that. <laughs> and I not only waited for sex, uh, waited sexually in every way. No, we didn't pull the Bill Clinton and technically avoid sex sex. Insert goofy goofball uh, sex joke, uh, conservative sex joke here. Uh, we did it the right way, right? Uh, oh, but we didn't shack up as live-ins, and most importantly, we courted. We courted. Oh, there's that word, courted. We courted each other in a way that was consistent with our public, our publicly professed values. We did it right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> uh. We did it the right way. Well, good for you. Okay. Feeling judged? I couldn't care less. You know why? Because my wife and I were judged all throughout our relationship. People laughed. They scoffed and poked fun at the young, celibate, naive Christian couple. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out that people couldn't have been more wrong. Oh, really? Looking back, I think that, I think that the women saying those things felt like the floozies they ultimately were. Remember, this is 2015. This is like before OnlyFans. And the men with their fickle manhood tied to their pathetic sexual conquests felt threatened. Um, no, maybe they just knew something. I think it's important to write this column not to gloat, though I'll be glad to, but to speak up for all the young couples that have also done things the right way. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, was it uh, was it this year that uh, Lolo Jones was like freezing her eggs? <laughs> when people do marriage right, they don't complain so much, and so their voices are silenced by the rabble of promiscuous charlatans peddling their pathetic worldview as progressive. Our wedding was perfect. Our wedding night was nothing short of amazing. I write this on a plane heading to uh, a tropical paradise. <laughs> Oh God! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just it. it it's I, I can't help this. Um, prop, tropical paradise with the most beautiful woman that I have walked the planet. Oh, that have to have walked the planet Earth. God. Uh, Stop the cap. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, they're wrong. I win. <laughs> Okay, so I have to, we have to, we're going to put this all in context, but I have to, I, I'm sorry, try to resist the, uh, the urge to projectile vomit here. Uh, there's a point to this, I promise you. I'd like to tell you a story of our morning after. <laughs> However, one that was, that transpired into one of the most glaring epiphanies I'd ever had. As my wife, still, again, still not used to that. <laughs> um, and I ate breakfast at a local inn. We discussed how excited we were to start the rest of our lives together. How scary it was that everyone was now so different. Everything now was so different. At the same time, we overheard the table next to us discussing their very own wedding from the night prior. What a coincidence. The thing is, nothing really changed, the bride said. Puzzled quizzical <laughs> my wife asked did you get married last night too so did we congratulations the other dame the other dame said <laughs> yeah we did just last night where's the groom my wife innocently scratch my wife innocently scratched that naively asked oh she's so cute what a dumpling <laughs> she's sleeping oh he's sleeping 
There was no way he was coming out with me this morning. She paused and smirked. Let's just say he's got a lingering headache from a really good time last night. My heart sank. <sighs> really? Firstly, that poor schmuck's good time was simply getting schnockered or snookered. Not enjoying the company of close family and long lost friends with a long lost friend with a clear head and clean conscience, not saying in awe, not staring in awe of his beautiful new wife, wanting to soak in every glimmer of her eyes as she shot him heart racing looks from across the dance floor, not taking all the thresh or not taking all of the cheesy pictures as they cut the cake, not even carrying her across the sweet threshold as they nervously anticipated their nightcap. He probably won't remember any of it. Instead, he got smashed. He was that guy. Flawless oh. <laughs> victory. At his own freaking wedding. <gasps> then I realized something. Our wedding was truly a once-in-a-lifetime event. It was a God's honest celebration of two completely separate lives. Now becoming one. Physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually, everything that made us who we were individually was becoming what bonded us together. Our family traveled far and wide to celebrate the decision of two young people truly committed themselves, truly commit themselves to each other and selflessly give themselves to one another in a way that they had never before that very night. <laughs> The people next to us that morning, well, theirs was just one big party. And the morning after, just another hangover. Our weddings were the same event in name only. They now, or they know it, and we know it. Do, your, do yours the right way. If you're, the young and one, if you're young and wondering whether you should wait, whether you should just give in, become a live-in harlot. Ha what? Well, I'm a whore. Yeah. A mimbo. What the fuck is a mimbo? And do it the world's way. If you're wondering whether all that mocking and ridicule, whether all the mocking, the ridicule, the incredible, the incredible difficulty of saving yourself for a spouse is worth it. Let me tell you without a doubt. It is. Your wedding can be the most memorable day and night of your life or just another party. Oops, did I just make judgment? You're damn right I did. That's nasty. It is nasty, right? Isn't it nasty? Oh. <laughs> You're goddamn right. <laughs> I just work here, man. I just work here. I don't write the news. I just report the news. I report... You decide. <laughs> oh, that's that's you. Sorry, let me catch up here. See if I can catch up with the rest of you guys. What do you think about that? Hmm. Sorry, I'm not like you know. I hate to shit. I, I'm not shitting on anybody's wedding. I mean, my daughter's getting getting married. I hope you know. I, I hope it's the most memorable day of their lives. I hope people don't get schnockered, right? Um. Trust me, I remember every minute of my wedding, okay? I did not get hammered. I, I didn't have any time to get hammered. In fact, all the booze that we had at our wedding, like, got drank up before I, because I had, like, friends who were, like, uh, local microbrewers, and they had, like, specialty uh, beer there. By the time I was ready to go have a, like, because I was, that's back when I was drinking. Uh, by the time I had a chance to go have a beer, it was all gone. Like, the keg was dry. I'm like, God damn it, you sons of bitches. Um but uh, it was still a very much a, a very memorable wedding. I'm not saying it should be. I'm not even saying like the, the desire for that is a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just like when you put it into perspective, like where's Hafiz and all this? Somebody go page Hafiz. You know, when you know, when you hear from Hafiz, probably like a month or two after all this, all, all the dust is settled, then then we'll hear from Hafiz. He picked the wrong girl, man. He just picked the wrong bitch. Right. Right. Lead attorney. Does that does that glowing essay? Who knew Stephen Crowder was such a poet? <laughs> does that poet did he he just picked the wrong girl? <laughs> well, 
I wonder what you would have said back in 2015 after reading that lead attorney. <laughs> I'm not taking a victory lap. People think I'm taking a victory. I'm not taking a victory lap. I'm just, I just, rep I report you decide, man. Candace recently came out as questioning if women should have the right to vote because of emotionalism. Then she attacks Crowder through emotionalism. I just work here, man. What can I say? I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> uh, Rollo, Steven picked the wrong girl in this video. Mm-hmm. Looks like uh, funny how that works out. I, I've got it. I, I have some final thoughts on the wrong girl whole thing here in just a minute. But I mean, how does that play out with? Uh, oh, I don't know this video right here. One for women. What would you? Aristotle Onassis said it best. He said, if women did not exist, all the money in the world would have no meaning. <laughs> Dude, who is listening to this motherfucker? Who? <laughs> this guy, this guy's going to lead the, the, like the black man of to the promised land. Come on, man. Dog, women is everything. They the catch me out. They the lick, man. But the <laughs> I need that as a sound drop. Somebody give me that as a, they the catch me out, man. They the lick. <laughs> These young boys done forgot it because these women out here, they trying to be, they've had to be independent because right. they ain't got the right man. Okay. Um, do you like, like this? Does, like, does has he walked out his front door in any time? But this system of marriage is still good. Okay. This system of a man taking care of a woman, that's really how it's supposed to be. All the rest of us bullshit, man. And y'all need to quit tricking yourself with this new way of thinking. Earlier in this video, he's like, he, I don't know what the hell they have on, on there. Is that Hennessy? I don't know what the hell that is. But there's they, they've been drinking. Like, the, the, that booze right there. <sighs> Steve Harvey, man, you put like a couple of drinks in that dude, and this is what you get. There's no way to think. This new way of thinking ain't getting y'all no damn way. I'm sorry. I got in trouble on, the, on one time. This group came after me because I said Marjorie belonged to me. And they say she's not a possession. She's a person. She's a human. She is. <laughs> well, I don't know. Are you cool with her licking somebody's face? <laughs> she mine. What is you talking about? <laughs> she belonged to me. But I got news for you. I'm hers. I belong to her. See, if you, if you don't like that. I need this. Oh, uh, 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 hell. Uh, I need the belong to the streets uh, clip. Uh, Big Mo, can you send me that sound drop? That system, carry your punk ass on. Go do something else and let me know how they work out for you. I want to belong to somebody. Right. I want somebody to belong to me. I take care of my wife and my family. You're supposed to. <laughs> In the inimitable words of Chris Rock, you supposed to. Because <laughs> that's feel my like job. You belong to somebody? In your previous relationship, did you feel like they belong to you or you belong to them? Yeah, I did. My first marriage, yeah. I felt that way. I just didn't have the equipment. I just wasn't the man I needed to be. Did the best I could. I just... <laughs> what is your major malfunction, not Oh, Jesus. I, you know, God. you know what? Chris Williamson, you're right. I'm gleeful. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can't. Yeah, there's no other way to look at that. There's just no other way. Like, come on, man. After everything we've done in this show this thus far, this is like the icing on the cake. You guys wanted that. You want you wanted the, the 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 cherry on top of today's like Sunday, some ice cream Sunday on Sunday. It came up short. You know, I've apologized to her because right. it really was my fault. I got married too young. Right. Wait a minute. <laughs> Too young? How old do you think he was when he got married? Was he 24? Did he pick the wrong person? TLA? <laughs> you know, How's your relationship with her now? I mean, we cool. We cordial. Right. You know, we cordial. Okay. You know, she gave me three beautiful kids. I right. got twins. My oldest son sitting over there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, how you got three kids. Marjorie had kids. How was the blended family? How did, how did, how did that work? I will right, we'll come back to that here in a second. Thank you for this. Uh, Rolo, uh, well, thank you very much. Thanks to your books, I've overcome a dark place and applied Iron Rule number seven to a relationship with infidelity. Good. She wanted to fix it. No. Nope. Your play Exploding Kittens. 
the card game. I'm going to show you my inner nerd playing, exploding kid, the, the, the nope card. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she wanted to fix it. I didn't. I didn't. Cheating ends genuine desire. You are correct, sir. Wow. Bravo. Everybody, let's give a here. You go to the front of the class today. Hello there, children. How's it going? Kefalo, you are you win today's super chat of the show. Super chat of the weekend. Well done, sir. Well done. Fear repeat in t- 10 years. Fear repeat in 10 years. Must kill beta now. Love your rule seven. Uh, love your rule seven talks. Thank you, sir. You are the super chat of the day, my friend. Very well played, sir. It shows that you've learned something. Thank you. Remember when I tasked you guys, I said, like, I don't care about getting props. I don't care about getting pat on the back. I don't care if you glossing. I mean, thank, please do if you want to. But uh, I am more concerned with, 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 with shit like this, with, with, with this. This is a testimonial. That's what I want to see. That means more to me than any trophy or any, like, kudos or any props, man. Show me what you did. Hafiz would say they didn't, they didn't pastoral, they didn't do a pastoral marriage. Pastor, what they have to do it in a field with cows? <laughs> uh, no, pastoral, pastoral uh, marriage counseling on time. Pearl would say we need to ask Fuentes, the modern Australian painter, for advice. Dude, you're probably right. If this is wife school. Yep, I don't get no hoes either. Man, well, I don't get no hoes, man. Maybe, maybe I chose well. Maybe I married well. I would say in hindsight I did. The last time I wrote like that was nine years old. I had my heart broken less than a year later. I actually found the stupid journal I had written that in years later and wanted to slap my nine-year-old self. I burned that thing. Yeah. There's something cathartic about like like destroying that old stuff, like finding some old journal, finding some note you wrote to yourself back then. And it was like, God, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Works deep. Oh, that shit hard. <laughs> that shit, that shit. That, that I thought no you were going to give me cool by y'all. Like, oh, no. Gonna- no, that shit hard, though. They wasn't in agreement. They, they- you know what kills me about this stuff is like, if you go like, so Steve Harvey in, I think Steve Harvey's trying to like, trying to harden up a little bit. Like like uh, uh, Dr. Phil, when Dr. Phil went on Joe Rogan, one of the honestly, like if, if Dr. Phil had not gone on Joe Rogan, I probably would have turned down Joe Rogan, or uh, turned down Dr. Phil show because maybe it tricked me into doing it. But like when he did that show with Joe Rogan and I'm, I'm listening to Dr. Phil and he's like, he was like real. He was like, you know, fuck this and fuck that and da, da, da. Like, was this the same Dr. Phil? Maybe he's maybe he's like he doesn't care anymore so he can say whatever he wants to. And then now we've got Steve Harvey and Steve Harvey has been knocking him back. I, I should, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll scrub back through here so you can see how like, he's, he's, he took a few drinks on this one. They went bowling one night in Memphis when me and Margie first got together, we brought all the kids together, all seven of them. And all the girls went bowling and came back and decided to, they didn't want us to get married and said, they don't think it's the right thing to do. And they need more time to get to know us. And I'm sitting up here looking at some people that ain't got shit. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, y'all ain't got a relationship, a good ass job, a career. I'm paying for colleges and shit. I don't know how I'm listening to y'all making some damn decisions. Don't forget Steve Harvey for all of his like little folksy wisdom. Dude's on like marriage number three. So I'm, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have to color me a little bit skeptical, a little bit incredulous. When I listen to Steve Harvey giving advice or trying to tell guys to man the fuck up. I think one of the problems that we have right now, um, especially with this kind of stuff, like Steve Harvey desperately wants to get it, wants to throw his hat in the ring with the manosphere type stuff. I'm sure Steve would probably jump at it. Well, maybe a jump, but he probably would, would not turn down an opportunity to go on, like say whatever podcast or okay, maybe fresh and fit. Right. I would love to see fresh and fit interview Steve Harvey. God, what a show that would be. At a concert this week, I failed to close a nine who was pretty much naked. That's okay, man. We all take an L. We all fail on our first jump. Nobody makes their first jump, K-Dog. My game was flowing, but I didn't ask her to leave with me or sexualize her. Yeah, well, but did you learn something? There is no failure if you learn something. The only time, the only failure is when you don't learn from your experiences. That's true failure. Then you get an F. You get an F-minus. 
if you learned something from this, and clearly you did, because you wouldn't be taking what you gave me five bucks to tell me this. <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated. There is no there's no failure if you learned something from it and you can apply it to the next time. Remember, what I sometimes like, man, I'll tell you, people think this is stupidly, so stupidly simple, like you're like, duh moment. But sometimes you're like in such a position where it's like you can get with this girl. All you have to do is not fuck it up. Sometimes it's not about getting the chick. It's about not fucking up the sure thing. I think more guys lose the sure thing and like they agonize really over the sure thing that they messed up. than the guy who's like, I really want to get with her. I got to ask this girl out, this cute girl at Starbucks. She's a barista. What do I do? Rolo? How do I, how do I open? Like that's less common than the guy who's like, God damn it. I, you know, I had a perfect shot and I didn't take it. <laughs> Men tend, uh, and this is uh, proven through research, by the way, this is statistically a, uh, a statistical fact here is women regret the choices that they did make. Men regret the choices or they regret the things that they didn't do. The funny thing about regret is this. It's better to regret things that you have done than to regret things that you haven't done. And by the way, if you see your mom this weekend, be sure to tell her, Satan, Satan. You guys don't know where that's from. <laughs> you, get, you get one. You, I will give you a Don DeMarco if you can tell me where that quote's from. Somebody knows it. Somebody knows it. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Where's that from? Somebody knows. Just name the band. Name the band and I'll give it, I'll give it to you. Funny thing about regret is it's better to regret something you have done than to regret something you haven't done. Somebody knows that. Somebody knows that. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, there it is. Oh, man. yep. You got it. You got it. You got it. You get one. <laughs> Wow, I got somebody who knew that reference. Fucking A. That's awesome. <laughs> Y'all ain't got one boyfriend that didn't work thus far. <laughs> so I don't know how the hell you finna tell me how to live my sons was over. Weren't you just saying you're on marriage number three? Well, they're cool with it. Roger, Jason, and Wynn, they sitting over there. They're cool. This is so good. I, you know, let me let me back the hell back this up a little bit because this is too good not to 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, I had that one right there, dog. That's just, that's just. <laughs> need another drink. Ah! <laughs> I just, I just said I don't do two, but you know, you got me in here now. You got me in here deep, Shannon. Oh, so okay, here. the second one. Obviously, that was the worst one. Normally, after a really, really bad traumatic experience, you're like, I'm done. I'm done with this. It ain't, it ain't for me. I was. Let me tell you something, man. When I got divorced in 2005, I was living in Trump Towers in New York. Right. <laughs> on 48th and 1st. Yep. I said, after that, this is what I'm finna do. I had learned about private jet travel and yeah. stuff by the end. Even though I ain't had no money, I had just signed this other contract trying to get back from that 1700 I said, I'm gonna put bus schedules on my walls. I'm gonna have arrival and departure times. Right. I, that's how many women I'm finna roll up in here in 60B. Bus. <laughs> and look where you are now. And yet here we are. <laughs> Don't forget this conversation. Next time you see him, like I saw him doing a Q&A thing with uh, Dr. Phil. And, they're out, and of course, the entire audience is just like nothing but women. They're all like 40 something divorcees or they're spinsters of some of the how Lord, I can't believe we can't find a man that, that crowd. I've done those shows before with Steve Harvey's man. Well, not on his show, but like I have actually uh, done reaction videos to, to those shows. And he wonders, Oh, it's all, it must be the guy's fault. They're just not living up. <laughs> what? What do you bring to the table? We really don't bring anything to the table. All they have to do is bring a uterus, apparently. Now, that might be the Hennessy talk, whatever. What is he drinking? I don't think that's Hennessy. It's something else. It looked look pretty expensive. <laughs> might be it's brandy of some kind. When did brother start drinking brandy? <laughs> Schedules. Rival and departure times. I'm finna roll them up in here on a continuous basis. I'm finna live my best life. God said, no, you ain't. He, oh, I was going to say, you about to be Nick Cannon before Nick Cannon did, huh? Nick is different. Nick is. You like that? Nick is different. It's funny how like Nick gets a pat. Nick Cannon, who by the way, how many baby mamas you got now? Seven. 
<laughs> I do gets a pass, but like the other, the regular guys who would say, what do you bring to the table? They don't get a pass. <laughs> I know where the drugs do it. All this is just like it's staggering. So, so you you like okay? I'm sorry, I don't want to say. I'm sorry, Nick. You saying okay? I'm Nick, I don't know where that came from, Nick. I swear to God, it's it's a Kevin Hart prank. I didn't mean to say that. I don't even know. Did I just say I know where the drugs do it? You just said that. I don't even know where that came from, man. See, that's that gift that just found. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, I that was the plan. This is a pretty funny conversation. I will give him Man, that. How did you how did you and Marjorie reconnect? God said, no, you not. No. <laughs> Gotta play the God card, man. Like, how many drinks this guy in? You gonna play the God card? Really? I thought that was fascinating, by the way. When I was on when I was on Access Vegas, we got like uh what was it? Uh Rose. I know we had a question about this earlier about uh Ro Rose Fisher. Uh who I'm gonna see if she wants to come on this show. Maybe I'll do a, an interview or if I can get her like on Access Vegas on like a, a solo interview, I will. Cause she's she was actually a very fascinating girl. I really wanted to like sort of dig in a little bit deeper in that. But um and she's a big fan of mine too. She really wanted <laughs> Rose, if you come on my show or whatever, I'll I'll sign your book this time. <laughs> Sorry. Um but uh we were talking about that and I mean, you got to remember these girls are like probably like two drinks in, three drinks in by the time we're even we're, we're getting to this part in the conversation and it's all about Jesus and God and, and, and religion and, and everything. I'm like, okay, fine. I mean, even when you're, we're hammered, you default to that. I, I get it, but you're going to be oblivious of like sort of the cognitive dissonance of this coming out of the mouths of women who have like only fans and uh, Instagram accounts in the millions measured in the millions of followers you know the, and, and and god bless her I, samantha was a smoke show the, the girl the blonde that was sitting next to me she's there in like this very sheer outfit with a thong you could see the thong I mean, she was she was really a good looking girl but like she had well god this and god that oh who is it <laughs> excuse me <laughs> like, man, well, it's nice you don't get in the holes man <laughs> yeah <laughs> But, uh, and that was the funniest part. I, I, you know, kind of, you gotta have to sometimes I have to bite my tongue on Access Vegas. No, you're not. You're not finna do that. you finna get yourself together. Now, I done, you done lost everything twice. Twice. You, you twice. wanna do it again? You wanna do it again or you wanna see what I got for you? You like a cat, Steve. The de you know, it's interesting. You know, one topic, one subject that doesn't come, a question that doesn't come out of Shan's mouth here is, how much money are you paying these chicks? How much, what was the divorce settlements for each one of your, your ex wives? And you still thought it was worthwhile. You said, Oh God told me to get, God told me to just jump off that cliff one more time. And just let me see what I got for you at the bottom of that pit. That, that was okay. And now it's going to work. The third time's a charm, right? I covered this in, uh, in my fourth book in religion. And this is the uh, it's, it's the orthodox paradox. So that's one. But there's the other one, which is uh, you can't argue with God. And I brought this up with Glenn Lawrence. And I brought this up a, just a briefly with uh, the talk that I did with Iron Disciples and Glenn Lawrence. You can't argue with God. Said so, uh, the true believer, I should say. You can't argue with the true believer. So if I go, I can tell, I can talk to her. I, I tried, you know, I could talk to people who are like, maybe Ruslan's a bad example of this because he's all brand. But if I can, I talk to a guy who's like really invested in his convictions. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but I can't convince that. I couldn't convince a Steve Harvey, for example. I wouldn't be able to say, Steve, how much are you paying for your first divorce? Still, how much are you paying for your second divorce? Talking about how you how you are um, what paying for colleges of all your kids from God knows how many different marriages. And he, he, even he was joking about, oh, you're going to be the next Nick Cannon, right? He's only got three baby mamas or two, maybe three, I don't know, two, at least two, right? We don't talk about the nuts. We don't. Talk, Aaron Clary would ask this question. I know goddamn well he would ask this question, but you're goddamn right. Aaron would ask this. How much are you paying? Let's, let's get down to brass tacks here. What's the, what's the, what's the actual numbers involved in all this? And how much harder have you had to bust your ass to afford college for all them kids, for all that alimony, for those divorce settlements, for everything? How much are you still paying for all that stuff? And yet he's going to say, you guys, you guys are afraid of marriage. You guys are worried about losing half your stuff. Well, that's 
it, it was it Chris Rock was saying, you know, if you're making, you know, $10 million and you're losing, you know, what a third of that, you maybe you're all right. I mean, you might be pissed off, but if you're making $30,000 a year, you might have to, you know what, right? You might, you might do something else. And he's like, I ain't saying you should do that, but I understand. Right. So it's one thing to take it out of the context of like a, the, the life experience of like a Steve Harvey or whoever. And we've got the money where you can afford, you have a buffer for that. When you look at uh, the divorce between uh, what is it? Uh, Mackenzie Bezos and, and Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos could be with a way hotter chick than, you know, Na- uh, Lauren Dirty Sanchez could be he could have a new chick every fucking night if he wanted to and he is not married to Lauren Sanchez who is a career predatory woman I should add that put put that into the mix here but Steve Harvey like dude this is a guy who is who wants to sort of pontificate he got he wants to be some sort of moral authority about marriage and how guys ought to be living and you guys ain't living upright and, you know later on he, he gets all into that the, so we're supposed to take you f- at face value and how much are you paying out in alimony? Did you marry the wrong chick the first time or the second time or the third time? I, I, let me tell you something. I, I, if I was, if I, if, if Rolo Tomasi was on his third or fourth marriage, and by the way, I think it was, uh, was it Tom, Tom Likas is in like for four marriages before he finally said, you know what? Maybe I'm not the Marian type. At least I got some respect for Tom Likas and that like that. But if I was on my third marriage and I'm still trying to tell you guys, oh, this is what you ought to do. Do you think anybody would take me seriously? Probably not. I picked the right woman, right? Apparently. I mean, by everybody else's standards, I did. I'm not saying like, oh, it's some, you know, oh, I, I, I married well. I, I mean, I, maybe I just got fucking lucky. That's a possibility too. Maybe, maybe it was God. Maybe it was luck. Maybe it was the, you know, the, maybe it was numerology. <laughs> Who knows? I don't care. We were a great match together. There are some good ones. There are some bad ones, but there is no one. There is no soulmate. There is, I, will bet, I will bet you money if you would ask Stephen Crowder, Steve, do you think Hillary is your soulmate? Oh, yes. Let me write some bad poetry about it. I'm sure that that would probably come, come forth. It would come flowing out of him. But yet here I am. 27 years I'll be in July to be 27 years with a woman who like can't get enough of me. And I love, I can't get enough of her too, by the way, just saying we have, we're a very good match. She has genuine desire for me. And I didn't say this on access Vegas. And I really meant to say this on access Vegas, because when, when the girls asked me like, what's your, I what describe your ideal woman, my ideal woman and what every woman should bring to the table, by the way, there is a table. And women do need to bring something to it. They have to have some that you, a pussy is not enough, not for a long-term relationship. It's certainly enough for like getting after it. And that should be like definitely on the table. <laughs> the pussy that should be on the table. We, okay. Once we get past the pussy, we should move on to other things. But you know what? The number one thing that ought to be on the table. We can throw this up. We've asked women this before. I've always said, you know, oh, uh, loyalty, honor compassion i have my own money i make my own money i bring money to the table i got my business together like women think that that's some sort of like side benefit for guys i have an education i'm intelligent i go to the gym well that should be good too. go to the gym for sure stay in shape but because you want to not because you have to the number one thing that women need to bring to the table genuine desire that's what women need to bring to the table if you don't have that, I don't care how good the pussy is. It's just obligated. You, you can pay for a prostitute. You could pay for a girl who's a good performer. She's an actress. She's a porn actress for you. Hey, give her, I don't know how much. <laughs> what's a high, a thousand bucks. What's, what's a good escort go for these days? 800 bucks for a night? A thousand? I guess, I guess it kind of depends on where you're at. Um, she can be a good performer. She can be convincing. I really love you. I really want you. Because there are strippers that are very, you know, the, the higher earning strippers are the ones that actually make it personal. They're the ones that can convince you that they're really into you. Like convincing a guy of genuine desire, 
You want to know why OnlyFans is such a thing and like guys aren't jerking off to porn? They like because it simulates natural desire in what they would believe would be innate, like sort of organic, genuine desire. The number one thing women need to bring to the table is genuine desire. And ladies, if you don't, don't even consider it. Don't if you can't say, I want his fucking babies. If you're not Eva Mendez, if you can't say, I want this guy's babies, don't, don't, don't waste his fucking time. Don't waste your time because you're the one that has it. Cause guys will like, as, as Tori will say, Torsha will say, right. Guys will fuck anything. Guys just want to get laid. Guys will marry when they're ready. When men are ready to get married, they're like, okay, well, she's just like a good chick. Right. Very, very few men have the luxury to vet any woman. That's why I, I, whenever I get this, how did you vet Mrs. Tomasi? Right. At that time, looks good. She has a nice ass. I really want to get after that. And then, you know, she genuinely loved me. She genuinely wanted to be with me. And I, 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 I beat out some other guys for that too. And then, you know, I saw her, how she was with her, with her niece and her nephew uh, who were very young children at that time. And I thought, <laughs> like my dad said, seems like a good idea at the time. And it turned out to be a good idea. But uh, I'll tell you, this is most guys, don't vet because they don't have the luxury to vet. They're necessitous and necessitous men are never free. So they will make a, a decision based on what is the most expedient solution to the problem. Most guys, if you, you remember, most guys are at, um, most guys are averaging what four to somewhere between four and seven partners in their lifetime. Most men are sexually necessitous and women know that most men are sexually necessitous and they serve a purpose at the right time. The guys that she wants to get with and marry at 28, 29 are not the guys she wants to fuck in the club at 21. There's a reason for that. God, they know that women know that it's apparently guys don't know that. Apparently guys will go for three, three separate marriages to learn that. Day after my divorce, I went to Vegas. Okay. Nice. I'm gambling. My bodyguard Boomerang on the phone hey, talking to this man. girl named Sharon in Memphis. He asked about Marjorie. He said, Marjorie doing pretty good now? And I hadn't talked to her in years. Right. Boom tapped me on my shoulder and said, hey, man, I got a phone call. I said, dog, I'm gambling. You know, I don't talk to nobody. He said, no, dog, you need to take this phone call. So I, ain't, I thought something was wrong. So I got her from the roulette table. I said, hello. She said, boy, what you want? I said, Marjorie? She said, yeah. So I just said, so how your punk ass husband doing? <laughs> That's the first thing. Sharp, first thing I said. Because you punk ass dude to me. I still hold strong to that one. I've never retracted that statement. Okay. I said, how your punk ass husband doing? Because I had heard she had got married. Right. She said, boy, I've been divorced three years. Uh oh. Light bulb go off? You start smiling? I'm talking about man like a head, like, like a halogen light bulb, and they hadn't even been invented then. <laughs> Ding! I ended up going to uh, Memphis, met her for lunch. She told me about a divorce. I said, I'm divorced too. She said, boy, shut up, lying. Because it hadn't went public. Right. And it just, she said, shut up, I know you got married again. And I said, no. Again. She didn't really believe it. It took right. me two weeks to convince her. We talked on the phone that New Year's <laughs> Eve. She was in Hawaii with her kids. I'm on the phone with her all night, man. Just remembering stuff. Hadn't seen her. In Valentine's Day 2006, she came to New York. That was it, dog. She I ain't left your side since. No. I, and God said, you, that arrival and departure sign, you're going to take that down off the wall. Wow. I showed it to you one time. You didn't get it then. But you, And after her, man, I mean, really, you look at my career and my life after her. It's just been a rocket shot. You crazy. Like that? You're going to take advice from this guy? This guy is going to tell men. What does she bring to the table? She brings her uterus to the table. That That's, that's uh, okay. It might be the liquor talking, but that's what comes out. Like, what do they say? You know, alcohol's truth serum, right? That's what's coming out. He's proud of that shit too. Proud of that. I had to convince her. He's proud of, of, of the fact that a former lover, somebody he knew from the past who was married, who didn't want him, who married another dude, had no desire, no genuine desire for him. Do you, you, you think for one second that she didn't know he was divorced at that time? Get the fuck out of here. 
She's calling his, his, what, his bodyguard, his, bus, his friend. He's, he's playing the tables or whatever. Says, hey, you got to take this call. Do you think that there, there wasn't something else going on behind the scenes? Dude, you got rolled, man. You got rolled three times. You're a mark. After this, you're a mark. People know you're a sucker. You're a chump. So much of a chump that you'll wait for a single mom. You try to convince a single mom that you're worth marrying. You're Steve fucking Harvey, man. Really? Really? See, these are this is, these are tough truths that like a lot of people don't want to don't want to talk about, right? Yep. And she's 40 plus years old. I don't think she'll probably ever give him a kid. She I don't think they have children together. She never left my side. And I'm I give all my all my success and my glory to her. Oh, and God. Really? It her. For everything that we see Steve Harvey sitting here today, you credit her for that. The man that you became. Jesus Christ. Is there a pedestal high enough? And the way you dress, the way you talk, the things that you have going on good, great in your life. You said that woman over there. Because I know what it is. I wonder how she felt about the alimony and the child support and the divorce pay and whatever the settlements were that you were paying the other two at that time. She knows you're Steve Harvey. She comes out of, oh, so surprised. Hey, hey, I'm I'm divorced too. Oh, really? So am I. Wow, what a coincidence. Now, a lot of dudes won't do that. And I understand that. You want to get your shine on you this and you that. Yeah, but I was that before. And I wasn't this or that. Right. Apparently not. And you didn't get this or that too. <laughs> you, there wasn't much this or that going on. I was a comedian before. Right. I was a TV star TV. before. So you tell me what the difference is. It got to be her. Right. Because for the first time, man, I had peace wow. at my house. Oh. When you got peace at the crib, dog, you can plug in your battery pack and get rejuvenated to go out here and deal with the rest of the Yeah, at least this is a talk show. I don't know if you're familiar with the format talk show. I do it once a week. So, yeah, trust me. I go out for a hike. I take my quad out and fuck up my arm quite a bit. Thank you very much. And uh, I do take my sled out and touch snow. How's that? Thought mommy's in the club. Yes. This shit you got to go deal with. Right? Right. Cause he, he, hey man, you know, them folks out there, they ain't not finna change. Mm -mm. Racism out there. Right. It's on TV. It's on the internet. It's alive and well. She would give me the juice and the charge I needed to go back out there. She encouraged me. She told me I was something when I felt bad. It was 2006. You were a well-known celebrity. You still are to this day, really. I mean, you were... Pretty, you were Steve Harvey in 2006. I, of that, I am 100% sure. She gave me the cut, but we was at the house laughing, having a good time, man. Mm -hmm. If you look at since 2000, we got married in 2007. If you look at from 2007, I got Family Feud in 2009. Mm -hmm. The book came out 2009. You got Family Feud. You got the book. Miss Universe after that, the talk show after that, little big shots after that, the judge show, the, 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 the radio show got big after that. Four books later. The, the Did she write the books for you? Movie came out, Think Like a Man, all this after that. What, what else is it? I just like. Um, you, hard work. Natural talent? I don't know. <laughs> I walked in with this chick, man, and she gave me a lot of good advice, man. She made me see things in a different way. And it was her, man, and it's okay, man. It's people, people don't want to do that. Now, I know they're tired of hearing me saying, but what you want me to say? Shit, I ain't got nothing else for you. All right, that's enough of that. <sighs> okay, why am, I, why am I ending with this? Well... This is the mentality that gets you into the situation that Steven Crowder is in right now. This is the, this is the, Hey, it's going to work for you. Sure thing this time. And again, I am not against marriage. Clearly I'm not against marriage. I'm against the way we do it. Now I am against the, I didn't see it coming. I didn't know what I was getting into Rolo that marriage that I am, that I am against. That I am definitely against. You know what I'm also against? I'm against the, oh, I got to lift. There is not a pedestal high enough for this bitch for me to place. I've got to build an even higher one than anybody else. <laughs> Listen to what he said. And then think about that. Uh, the um, 
the waiting for marriage article that I re- that I read to you uh, with uh, that Stephen Crowder wrote in 2015. Yeah, I mean, sorry, Steve. I mean, you probably don't like to be reminded of that, but God damn. I tell you this, I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to end with this is that there is this concept that's been around for quite some time. And I've been I've been kind of uh, I've, I've locked horns with a lot of people who are like are just simply stupid asses. And then other people who are just like think, uh, well-meaning red pill guys. There's no such thing as a quality woman. No such thing as a quality woman. What do you mean? Aren't there good girls? about there? There's these thoughts and there's these these ratchet ass hoes. And then there's these girls, good girls who live in the Amish. Pennsylvania and Dutch country. No, they're all have the potential to be a raging bitch and they have all the potential to be what's going on with Steven and all this shit. And you, they might be a third or fourth wife. Every guy who got into a relationship to the point where he's like, yeah, I think I'm going to propose to her and we're going to get married thinks that that girl's a quality woman. And then eight years, 10 years, 12 years. Remember the average of the average marriage before divorce. If, if you get divorced, the average duration of uh, of a marriage is but anywhere between five and nine years, which is the average of seven years. That's the average. That's how long the average marriage lasts. If it gets divorced, that's how long it lasts. Do you think that that guy did not think that she was the best thing in the world? That he did not like write bad poetry? <laughs> Do you think that that, because that's the thing is uh, I think that the, the quality woman narrative is, is just as damning as like the soulmate myth. Like people go, okay, well, I don't believe in soulmates. Roll is right about that. There is no one, but I found a quality woman. It's an idealization. And sometimes that's necessary. Sometimes we kind of need that to fall in love and to actually have like emotions for a woman. I get it. I'm very in love and I'm emotional about my wife. I love her to death. I would be devastated if I didn't have my wife. I understand that. Still to this day. In fact, I, when I was asked about the, uh, my ideal woman on, on uh, Access Vegas, I started describing Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. T. <laughs> Nobody knew I was, but she and I both, like what I'm saying, she's like, <laughs> but uh, it's it's desire first and foremost, but also the idea of the quality woman is I think if you're uh, if you're looking for that particular thing, you don't make a good relate or you don't find a good relationship. There's no such thing as a good turnkey relationship. And ladies, you need to hear this just as much as guys do. If you are going to get into a long term relationship, if you decide that you want to get married, understand this: there is no such thing as a turnkey relationship. When Rich Cooper's like, oh, yeah, uh, women don't care about men's struggles. They wait at the finish line. They bang the winners. Yeah, some of them do. The girls who can wait around, who can wait around, the girls who find the winners, who happen to be able to wait at the checkered flag. But most women can't do that. They have to take a bet. They have to take a bet on a man's potential. And part of that betting is betting her sexual agency and her sexual capital on a guy who she hopes is going to be a winner. He's going to be that guy that goes across the, the finish line. And instead of picking those bitches, when he goes across the checkered flag, she's already in the car going with him across the, the checkered flag. And they're going, they're building a relationship. You build a relationship. You don't find a relationship. Women today. That's the, that's, that's the biggest problem. You want to know well, bro, what's the biggest problem in the manosphere that women don't understand that there's no such thing as a turnkey relationship. Cause if you go and you watch, watch any show, Watch hell. Watch Access Vegas. Watch uh, watch um, uh, whatever podcast. Watch Fresh and Fit. Watch I don't know, whoever your favorite podcast is with with chicks on it, right? When or or even women on the street kind of interview kind of stuff. Watch those, and when they ask, "What are you looking for in a guy?" He's got to be tall. He's got to be sexy. He's got to have this. He's got to have that. It's this long what Royce calls a four hundred and thirty six bullet point checklist. And there's I don't know how many there actually are, but and if he's not, then he's not marriageable. Well, most women's criteria like sort of falls apart. If he meets like four of those criteria, then he's marriageable. But when women are put on the spot, they have to seem like they're super, super picky. Most women who are getting married, the guy that they're marrying (laughs) of the 15 or 20, you know, checks on the checklist, he might cover four of those. And with the hope that he's going to cover maybe 10 of the 20 <laughs> in the future, he'll be okay. He'll, he'll check those off as we go along kind of thing. She's betting on his potential. She's betting on his future. Guys don't do that. Guys don't think, Oh, I wonder what she's going to be in the future. I wonder if she's got some potential. 
you know, I'm the old joke, right? Like women marry men for what they'll be and women, men marry women for what they are at the point that they'll never change, right? Which is kind of pointless today. Um, but I think the other problem is with this is that women are spoiled for choice and it's the choice paradox. And so there's always, even if they are with a guy that they really, really like, there's always the chance that he's not going to work out. Even if they're married, even if they're with kids, man, it's like, I don't want to give up my Instagram. I don't want to stop advertising because if I do, then he starts fucking the, the secretary when he makes partner in the law firm. And then I'm ass out and I'm old. I need to have my, I need to hit the ground running. That right there will ruin your relationship faster than anything else. Nobody's talking about that. You will not hear that come out of Steve Harvey. You will not hear that come out of Dr. Phil. Women need to not, I'm saying lower your standards. I'm just saying, be realistic about yourself. Like we always say, well, women have these huge egos because of social media. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They need to sort of like bring themselves back down to reality. But what does it say? Uh, Steve's third wife will use his clip during the divorce proceedings to take more of his stuff. He did credit it all to her after all. Such a giant simp. Has Robert K vibes. Thanks. Um, someone needs to explain to this chase on whatever podcast. Oh, would you like me to? I'll be happy to. Uh, this uh, thinks getting thinks vetting is the best solution. No one vets, dude. And even if you could vet accurately at that particular time, you're, the girl's 25 years old. What you vet for at 25 and she's 35 will be completely different. She might be, she might even be better. Oh, I should have got with her. She, she was actually so much better with my kids. I don't know. She, the, she, the, the, the case might be, she was better. You vetted it. So, you know what? She's not really that good. She's really, she's kind of a drug addict, whatever. She gets sober, like at 30, she gets into shape. She's a fitness America pageant winner. She loves her kids and she's with another guy. You vetted, you vetted the wrong way. <laughs> Remember vetting goes both ways. It's like vetting. Oh, we'll gotta find the right girl. Vetting goes the wrong way too, quite often. <laughs> so keep that in mind. I'll be happy to talk about that. And, and by the way, I, I know. It, it, we, I would definitely get into sort of like this religious, you know, back and forth, but that's the problem is one women will have this, this unrealistic criteria and think that guys are unmarriageable because well, marriage is only for elite guys or only for elite men. The problem is, is there's too, there's too few elite men and there's and the, the elite men that women want are actually the kind that other women want too. Well, like Steve Harvey was an easy mark. For this chick who, because that chick is the, the, his third wife is is the sure thing. She knew she was like right there, man. She's the Lord. She's your Lauren Sanchez, of course. That's the church nowadays. Shut up and marry that mom. <laughs> Shut up and marry those sluts. That's what Dar Dal Rock used to say back in the day. What Sunday morning nightclub? Rolo, my girlfriend is good looking, twenty years old, whose sister and her friends are three of fours who want her to participate in her whole culture. Ho culture. Got it. As a trad con, I feel my efforts ultimately will be in vain. How do I win here? You watch what she does, my friend. That's how you win. You win. You watch what she does. The medium is the message. Does she? Here's the thing. Here's how you win, Aiden. You wait. You watch. You let her make those decisions. What is more desirable to her? You or her Ho culture, which is like whenever you put the word culture behind any word, it makes it endemic. Ho culture. Is there ho culture in, in trad con girls like fem tra trad fems? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Destiny knows. And I do too. What's he alluding to? What's Rolla talking about? I'm not going to tell you. Uh, appreciate the value as always. You are welcome, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they are. And quite honestly, I think probably Brian is a little bit blue pilled too. I think he's probably like wondering he's good at Brian is good at if then logic. Like if she says this, then I say this, if then it's, it's, it's defending a point. Nobody's, I mean, to my knowledge, nobody's like inviting Brian to come out on do debates on vice. 
you know, they'll invite the girl. They'll invite like Pearl and Torsha and Janelle and God knows who else are Sydney Watson, right? Hey, let's see if we can get them out. They don't want real discourse, by the way. They just want entertainment. Nobody's looking to educate these days. I, maybe I am, but like other than that, it's like nobody's looking to educate. It's always entertainment. Sick to death of that. Especially, I mean, stay out of my manosphere if that's the case. Like, I mean, go go be entertaining. Spread the word, whatever. Fine, you know, that's, that's fine. But like, leave the heavy lifting to other guys. <laughs> Leave the uh, defending of a point to the to to the guys for whom you are reading the script from, from whom you are reading the script from. Uh, I uh, it's a possibility. I I'm I'm supposed. In fact, Brian just texted me not too long ago while I was doing the show. Uh, I think so. Um, and Justin Waller, by the way, is coming in that same weekend. So there's a possibility I might be able to do something with Jay as well um, to Santa Barbara, I should say, which is where uh, whatever podcast is. Again, the the whole religious side of things. I'm not. I'm not shitting on anybody's religion. I didn't want to do that in my book. I, I specifically tried to, you know, hedge against that. I guess. But I also have to be honest. I've got to say, hey, this is what's going on. So when you play the God card, like Steve Harvey does, or well, Crowder does, and then you find yourself in a tough spot, you want to know why Crowder is having a real tough time with this? Is because he wrote shit like that back in the day, in 2015. It's still up, man. I didn't have any trouble finding that. I had no trouble finding the, uh, what is it? Waiting till married, waiting till the wedding night, getting married at the right way. 2015, May 7th, 2015. Stephen Crowder. Do you think he still is on board with that now? That's hard, dude. That's really tough. Because when you wrap up blue pill conditioning with your religious convictions, man. And then when shit goes sideways, like it is for Steven Crowder right now. I'm going to tell you what my, my, my main concern with Steven Crowder is, is he's going to get zeroed out in a bad way. That's why I want to be here for him. If, I mean, maybe I'm stupid in even thinking this, but like if, if Steve was to call me up or to hit me up or whatever, I don't even, I don't, I wouldn't even do it online. I would just say, Hey, let's just talk. That's what I do with Kiyosaki. I don't bring him online. I could, but <laughs> I might bring him on with the girls on <laughs> Access Vegas. But like when we're talking real shit, I don't bring him on. I don't make it public. I wouldn't do that. Unless he wanted me to, but like I, I, even then I'd probably feel a little weird about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, you got to be there. That's, this is a, this is like sort of one of them testable moments. Like I, I think I've, I've had guys like hit me up and apologize to me who like have been really big haters of mine and, and they go through a divorce or they go through a bad breakup or something like that. I'm like, it's all good. Just lay it on me. I just go with it because at the end of the day, you know, yeah, when you're in your deathbed, it's like, it's not going to be who you hated. It's going to be who you helped. So anyways, all right, that's it for today. I'm going to move on. I got to go talk to Brian and go get some food because Ned is, I can hear Ned outside the door right now. I so. <laughs> uh, hope you guys like this today. I am going to do, I will. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm doing a, a show with fresh. Um, I think it's, I think it's on his channel. I'm not, I don't think it's a, an officially a, a fresh and fit thing. I think it's like his community or something like that. He wants me to come talk and, and I'm already a part of the, the fresh and fit discord. So I'm, a, I'm a part of a lot of things. Uh, so I'm going to go do something with, with fresh tomorrow. Um, I'm not sure what that's going to look like. I will be in Miami on the 15th of May through the 21st. I got to go schedule my deep sea fishing trip too. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that, but I've got other things I got, as, as I was saying, uh, the Bitcoin conference, uh, please go and if you want to get into the cultivate crypto, uh, quarter two, the, uh, the class schedule and everything you can find in the very first link in the description right there. If that's, if that's, uh, if that's something you want to do, um, I highly suggest there are very few things that I really put my name on. I'll put my name on anything Miguel does anything Aaron Clary does. Um, I, John MLD, yeah, I, I, I like, I still have, you know, I still have love for John. <laughs> um, if you have a, a course or something like that, I, I like to audit the class, make sure I know, I know what I'm getting behind. But um, speaking of classes, I have started already, and I know I've got questions on this on my Patreon already, so I'll answer those questions. I'm doing the principal videography for module one of the player's workshop, which uh, I'm doing at Sticky Paws. And uh, the introduction is done, and the first the first 
part of module one is done. I've got some other things I need to get going on it, but uh, it should be soon. Um, I will start my very first class. I've never done a class before. My first, I, I'm, I don't know what I'm getting into, quite honestly. My red pill journey, I went from understanding to internal, uh, understanding to internal rage. Now I'm more careless bit, but I feel like seven, I'm still not there. What should I do? Keep going. You're, if you're a blue belt and you want to be a black belt, keep training, keep learning, be patient, understand it's about, it's a process and it's not something you get instantly. Girlfriend broke up with me nine months ago. Later, she reached out asking how I've been. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I suggested she wants to be friends. What should I do? That's what you should do. <laughs> Tell these bitches to go to hell. <laughs> That's what you should do. Remember, rule sub, or rule iron rule of Tomasi number seven. It is always time better spent developing new relationships than it is trying to rekindle old failed ones. That's a, it's just a pragmatic response, by the way. It's not like some religious thing or conviction thing or ideological thing. It's just pragmatism. You do better with a new chick. The end. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's see what else do I have going on. Uh, I will. I might do a midweek. I'm not. We're uh, Access Vegas is not this week. It'll be uh, uh, May 11th is the next Access Vegas. So I'll be back in Vegas, and then I'm back in Miami. I'm all over the place. I promised myself I wasn't going to travel quite as much as I did in 2022, and here I am. I will. Can't do much else. All right, fellas. Thank you for watching. I hope this was educational. Um, maybe. Oh, and then by the way, let me let me throw one last thing at you. As I said in the beginning of this show, I reserve the right to be wrong. Watch Stephen. Here's your homework class. Watch Stephen Crowder when he brings all the facts to the table. Do yourself the solid because don't be a victim of this. TLDR generation bullshit. Oh, I just saw what I needed to from Candace. He's really a monster. <laughs> Watch what he has to say. If you respect the red pill, if you respect masculinity, it, you owe it to Crowder. You owe it to me. You owe it to yourself to watch what he has to say about this. I could be completely wrong. I could be, I could be more right than I think I am. But we have to find out what from the guy. We have to hear from the horse's mouth. We have to figure out what this is really all about. So make sure you make sure you watch that. Like I remember when, uh, what was it? Brittany ran like DJ academics dropped the, uh, that little minute 30, like sort of hack piece. He wanted to give you the spiciest parts of, of the uh, Brittany Renner interview. And then of course, you know, four days later, he drops the whole thing. Don't be a victim of that. Don't be a victim of the, of the bullshit, like 30 second buzz clips. And then it's like, Oh, but watch the whole thing. And you'll understand like nobody watches the whole thing. I just showed you the video a minute ago about uh, Crowder. Like the shorter the video, the more like quick hit it is. Just throw it in my mouth so I can move on to the next freaking fast food. The faster, quicker, shorter the video is, the more people want to consume it and move on to the next thing. You will always see much higher engagement on a 30 second, 45 second clip than you will on a two hour interview. But watch it. Watch what Crowder has to say about all of this. Because you will not be able to speak intelligently on this. You will not be able to defend points if you don't do that. So you owe it to me and you owe it to him. Please go and that's your homework. Watch Crowder when he when he clears the air. Okay. All right. That's it. Um, I love you all like brothers and sisters. I love my brothers and sisters. I know who my God is. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back again next Sunday.
Sleeping in the bathroom, tearing up every wall. Why don't got your hair? Why you screaming my name? She was swinging in the bedroom, whole top stopping and stopping with her. She's like she's calling your yeah. mm -hmm. So baby, come me. Registered trademark 2023. Don't steal my stuff. Be cool. Be cool. Say this, be cool. Be cool. Tell that fucking bitch to chill.